Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My mouth is fantastically working today. There are definitely no issues at all. Nothing, nothing going on. How are we all doing today on this lovely and, might I say, gloriously sunny day? It's a lovely Sunday. Name worthy of the day, actually. Um, we are now today going to be watching, I'm going to be hosting, along with a very special guest, the IRL... Uh, game today, which is a live game, PvP. IRL doesn't stand for In Real Life, it stands for Interstellar Ranked League. If, you'd be in li if you'd like to be involved in games like this, jump down and join the ISS Discord server, which has a link in the description below. Um, yeah, everyone can hear me, right? Yeah, we're all good. Cool. Good, good, good. Let's say hello to Chad as well. Live Monty for a change. Got to be a good day. CML, I, I think it's been a great day so far. You know, I'm actually devoid of drink here. I've just come in from the heat. I've been outside all day in the sunshine um, trying to get my my vitamin levels up because, uh, you know, as a YouTuber, I spend too much time in a dark room hiding and staring at a screen. But I've been having a nice time in the sunshine. I may have had a beverage or two, but I'm now terribly thirsty. I've come all the way upstairs to sit down at my desk and stream this, and I've realized I've come up with absolutely nothing to drink, so I might have to disappear off and get something. But Anyway, first I want to say a massive thank you to uh, Comrade and also Cyrax for organizing and inviting me to host this tournament today, to co-host. Now, I'll also be joined today by a lovely, lovely individual who joined me last time for my for my co-host, and that is Jan Saxer, or Jern Sax, or Jern Sax, depending on exactly how you want to mispronounce it. Uh, so I'm actually going to bring him in and we're going to say hello and uh, see what he feels about what we're going to see today. Hello there. Hey, hey. So, how are you feeling? I mean, I was I was thinking we might get a lot of Void Dwellers, but I'm hearing in the, the pre-game chatter that we've got no Void Dwellers. And in fact, Progenitor Hive looks set to completely dominate today's game. Yeah, I've been hearing a little bit about it as well from R with the, the strategies, apparently. So, I don't know if they're banning uh, Devouring Swarm here, but I think that is the difference maker that with a Progenitor Hive and Devouring Swarm, you get high enough discounts that... My, um, and the bonuses you don't want to, to ship push reduction, the right? Because for them, yeah, it's I all about the, that ship the thing reduction. Is, yeah, robots and Hive has an easier time getting um, uh, upkeep reduction, whereas a Void Dweller has an easier time getting ship build reduction. But because the Progenitor Hive can get enough ship build reduction, it doesn't really matter that they don't get the full 90% that a, high, that a uh, Void Dweller would get, because they just have the upkeep instead. They've, and they've also got the economy to sustain that extra build cost. They're going to have more alloys than a Void Dweller, and so they can just take that extra cost in ship build, and then they will have no economic issues when they go into the fight at year 30, year 35, etc. So I think... in. in if usually at least for a hive build, the build would be you had your capital where you built your minerals, your energy on, and you had some tech, I think 12 or 14 researchers. Then you had a, uh, your second world was a research world with another 10 to 14 researchers, and then you had your alloy world. Now you don't need as many pops in your alloy world as you used to do. And I think that's what's making the difference for Progenitor Hive, that so they can pop out either more science. More science, yeah. Or more, later on, more move things into more energy, more resource produ uh, resource upkeep for those bigger fleets. I was hearing that 300 naval capacity is, it's all right now, but that's kind of an average size fleet at this level of play for year 30, which is, that's kind of mind blowing. I mean, I remember when 150 naval capacity at year 30 was a, was a good going. Uh, just the levels are just yes. getting up and up. It seems like the, they've boosted about 50% of this patch for uh, for the level that these players are playing it at. Like, for, for, for a player like me, I would go up more than that this patch because everything is so efficient now that you don't have to be as good. But when you are already at the top of your game, this is just pushing it a step further. I think one of the big differences is that you can reliably do it with cruisers as well. Whereas before you had yes. to choose between cruisers or destroyers sometimes. Now you can push the extra research and always get the cruisers. Uh, there's also something we should briefly talk about. Um, the next Montu's Multiplayer Madness. Uh, not, to, not to blow our own trumpet, but we are doing a different tournament today. But next weekend, uh, Montu's Multiplayer Madness returns for its fifth installment, or fifth MMM, it's not quite fifth installment. But uh, So we're having a tournament. If you'd like to join then you'll need to jump on into my Discord. Everything's down there in the tournament. There's a tournament category with everything involved. I've just posted the link in the chat right now if you're not there already. But if you'd like to be in with a chance of winning cash prizes, because we do have some 
nice cash prizes. Thank you very much to our members of the community that are supporting and funding these tournaments. But we have a cash prize. It's going to be a lot of fun. And that'll be next you know weekend. what the prize is up to now? Uh, I actually haven't I haven't added it up, but it's it's over it's it's larger than the previous one. It's over eight hundred and thirty dollars. I don't know exactly where we're up to now. I need to do some accounting and check exactly what the number is. But it I think we might have hit a thousand dollars total, which is which is excellent. I mean, for a for a community run tournament like this, bringing a thousand dollars worth of prizes in, you know, roughly once a month is I think that's a lot to be honest. I think that's a pretty solid contribution. <laughs> We haven't heard any complaints from the, from the winners yet, at least. Well, no, except 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 one winner who complained and demanded his prize pool go back into the next tournament. So you know, there's there's but always that's that Acon, one. You know, Acon <laughs> yeah. Acon is a little crazy. <laughs> I don't know yeah. if Acon's in chat, but if you are, hey, you're a little crazy, and we love you for it. But today we. Yeah, oh, sorry, no, go on. Yeah, just a small thing. Because we're a little pressed for time this time, the qualifiers and the finals will be in the same weekend, meaning we'll only run four qualifiers instead of the normal five. So if you want to sign up, uh, if you're a finalist from a previous tournament, you can sign up tomorrow. Otherwise, you can sign up Tuesday, and the slots might fill up faster than normal. Yeah, I'm going to be putting an announcement out on Tuesday, posts on you know my community posts and also on Twitter, just to announce that the tournament signups are open and to announce what the, the prize pool currently stands at that point. If you still want to donate to that prize pool as well, make it go even higher, send me an email at montuplays at gmail.com. You know, we can chat about how you want to support the tournament. Um, otherwise, let's dive back in. Oh, one thing I should say is Comrade Truck, who's a fantastic player, he's playing in this IRL tournament game today in this league game, but he'll be joining me to co-host the final on Sunday. And we're hoping to see crazy builds there as well. A lot of crazy stuff. There's there's a very little balance in this current patch. A lot of wild things are going to be afoot. Uh, so, right, let's... Say, yep. I got a lot of DMs about, are you going to ban X? And then we said, no, we're not going to ban X because we want to see X. Yeah, we want to see crazy, see crazy, crazy broken stuff. stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, in today's game, though... Yes, yeah, so there's rules. If you want to see the rules, they're in the description for this video. Go check it out there. Otherwise, I think we're going to have Cyrax reading through all the rules in about two minutes. We will jump into the main channel and join them to have a listen to, uh, to, to what exactly the rules are. He's going to go through them all, and there'll be a few questions there. So that should put to rest any questions anyone here has about rules-related stuff. Yeah, Michael Alexander says, Madness is in the name. Rules, bans, bah. Um, and also, I want to say as well, thank you, everyone in chat, um, for your ongoing support. Memberships, you lovely people joining and becoming members, super chats, that sort of thing. They, they, you know, they really help. That's why we're able to do these. Oh, David shoots off with five gifts. Speaking of memberships, um, baby thank you was very just much, waiting. David. It's hiding, getting ready. Um, welcome, new members. Don't forget to join the Discord. Not even green in chat. Yeah, fair enough. Um, <laughs> but um, also next weekend as well in the MMM. We're going to be, again, having a community prize. So any members that join during that live stream, for every member that joins, $1 will go towards the community prize pool. And the the chat and the membership members will get to propose people that were player, man of the match kind of thing. And then chat will get to vote on who the man of the match was, or woman, a person of the match. And then we will give that prize pool over to... Uh, to whoever wins that last time who was it the one last time it was the whoever had the dragon strat i've suddenly forgotten the player's name but he, he yeah i can't remember the name the either dragon. but the dragon the dragon came through yeah the dragon came through exactly with like three months a month to go and smack in the face right yeah i think the, i think the mules fleet was flying into the system yeah. when that happened let's Are we going jump to down. listen to the yeah, rules, let's jump down listen to the rules hello are we about to do the rules read yes uh Fantastic. just about time i just want to send an Another last one invite because person is waiting. Um, Thank you. Also, to know if everybody is in here. How many people we got? Twenty. We should have twenty-seven. I see one, two, three. Oh, four who is Muravyov? Yes. Uh, who shouldn't be more than three observes, but who are those pussy guys? That was an oh, no, we had name to... who just joined. 
69 xxx underscore pu 55 y underscore 3 str 0 y 3 r underscore x large x small x 420 slash ttv i'm not sure they were meant to be here yeah no i think that was a good call yes why why aren't you reading that name out on youtube aren't you i am reading it out the the chat can hear me I'm not showing it. Uh, I, I, I meant, I meant uh, saying it instead of spelling it. <laughs> oh, I, I, yeah, guys. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, go on. Read the There's a bit of silence because, like, uh, oh, shit. There is... Damn. Uh, all right. So, uh, there was a little bit of confusion. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, so, yeah. Welcome, everybody. Why we have 28 people? Oh, God. I hate, like, when people ask me for the password and not joining instantly, I just cannot track them all. And now we have more players. Just kick them all. Uh, Fireblown. Kick, kick, you kick. never asked me for a password. Sorry, guy. Next time. Uh, I can uh, say that more of you did ask me, but uh, please uh, change your nickname to Blackmaster or whatever. Because uh, he's not even in the voice channel. Uh, wait a second, I need to fix that thing. Kick, 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 kick. Yes, yes, yes. Kick, kick, kick. Yeah, he's been kicked. All right. Uh, so, welcome, welcome, everybody. Please, if you get the password, just join immediately, because otherwise I just cannot calculate how many people, people are going to join us. Uh, so, yeah, welcome. This is our IRL. Uh, ISS Rank Ladder game number eight. Today we have uh, like uh, another one. <laughs> like set for the second time, we are having a big time, uh, big streamer Monto. Uh, thank you for joining us today and providing some, you know, viewership to our games. Well, thanks for inviting me. Uh, yes. Uh, also, big thanks to Comrade Track uh, for helping organize this stuff, and also Yerns for joining us as uh, another co-caster. Uh, this is game number eight. Most, most of the people already played with us, but for the rest and for the viewers, uh, this is like our version of uh, how ranked ladder games should look like for Stellaris. Uh, basically, uh, you play those games, you get points for placements and for stuff like killing other people, and those translate to your overall rating. Currently, there are uh, at number one, two, and three, uh, three people going like basically tied with each other. It's list fire, potato shag and Pax. Um, and the uh, rest are like way behind them. So it would be interesting to see who will be number one this time. Most likely he will also get uh, number one in our ladder. So uh, to talk about the game, we are granting score in the game based on how many uh, former home vaults you control. So if you kill a guy, I mean, like, uh, if you are at war with somebody and you uh, get the capital, uh, so you'll get uh, scores for controlling those capitals. Score is calculated each 20, each 20 years, uh, and each capital gives you five points. Uh, so, for example, at year 20, you possess only your own, and you'll be rewarded with uh, five points. At year 40, if you conquered somebody else's capital, you get 10 points. But if somebody got your capital and you are still alive, you will be rewarded with zero for that. So the more capitals you have, the more points you generate. Also, we give points for uh, victories in wars, five per victory, and 10 points if you eliminated a player. So let's say at year 35, because this timer is still year 30. Let's say you kill the player, so you'll be rewarded with 10 points. But if you didn't kill him, uh, just uh, achieve the victory, uh, you'll be rewarded only five, player, uh, five points. Status quo is not uh, counted as a victory, so it will not give you any points. Uh, and those are basically it. So the more points you generate, the higher placement you will get, the, the more other points you will uh, have in result. There are also other ways to get ladder points, in-game points, but ladder points. We want to reward those players who stay in the game till the very last end. So uh, if you don't leave, 
uh, you will be rewarded. If you will be eliminated while staying in the game, you will be rewarded with flat 10 ladder points. And if you will survive till year uh, 100, basically the end of the game, uh, you will be rewarded with at least 30 ladder points. That depends on how many you already generated, but you are guaranteed to get back your points uh, you spent to enter the game. Also, we have a bounty system, which has been changed this week a bit. Uh, so, uh, players who are higher in the ranks have a bounty. Uh, the bounty is uh, calculated as five points per each 100 you have over 1000. Yeah, it sounds complicated, but if you like, uh, if uh, the example would be if you have 100, uh, 1000 and 100 points, other points, your bounty will be five points. And if you get like 100, uh, 1200 goddamn points, it will be 10. And it increases uh, uh, five points per, per each 100. So it's a bit complicated, but you can see the explanation in the Discord if you're confused. And if you collect this bounty point for somebody else's, they got to your account. And this also will reduce the, uh, they will be basically taken from the killed player. So let's say there is a list fire and you killed him, you will be rewarded with 20 ladder points for that. And also he will have minus 20 ladder points uh, because you have collected bounty. And that's about it. So uh, participate in wars, get capitals, kill people, achieve victories and you will get higher placement. Also, after year 80, there is a special rule. If you achieve a war goal against anyone, uh, like any kind of war goal, even humiliation, uh, the uh, losing side will be counted as eliminated. So this is like um, uh, our view on sudden death rule. So just don't surrender after year 80. That's the rule. And um, about rules. Uh, we are playing a new balance quote-unquote patch, uh, so it, it messed up a little bit with balance, so we decided to uh, fix minor things, like, uh, first of all, we are playing this platform fix mode. It not only fixes platforms, but it also gives one additional counselor slot for biological empires to help them in the early game a little bit, and also it removes uh, leader. It's uh, we call it box trade, but it's basically the trade which gives you discount on ship upkeep. So uh, Gestalts are more likely to get those trades, and we decided to just remove that to help biological empires and, and to, to reduce the random factor a little bit. Uh, also, there are like uh, empire design rules. Uh, the most recent change is we do not allow uh, progenitor Hiveman to take aquatic trade. Also, if you uh, if you are playing Rogue Servitor, you are not allowed to take Prosperous Signification Origin. Clones must be sent uh, uh, before year 30. That's old one. Uh, hostile takeover policy is banned. So please, if you are playing as a Megacorp, make sure in the beginning of the game to change your policy to uh, uh, like any other fro uh, any other than hostile takeover. This is uh, for other empires. This is, stays the same. Like you shouldn't ta uh, you shouldn't change uh, vassalization policy. Only for mega corps. Nihilistic bombardment is banned because it's too strong. And also, Gestalt empires cannot use military backup uh, agenda. This is agenda you get from supremacy tree and. Uh, uh, which gives you discount uh, for ship builds and ship upkeep. Uh, biological empires are still allowed to use that. Uh, diplomacy restrictions. We have a team limit three, but if you are Gestalt, <laughs> there is a team limit two. So you can have only, like if you are Gestalt, you, are, you can have only up to one teammate. Team, uh, team limit means uh, like any kind of military agreements, defensive pacts, guarantee of uh, independence, federations, and also coordination of your fleet. So, for instance, if you have two separate wars against the same person, uh, 
uh, you cannot coordinate your fleets with the other party uh, if you are like violating the team limit rule. Okay. Uh, also, crisis and total war civics are allowed, uh, but you cannot attack until year fifty. So if you take crisis perk before year fifty, that's it. You cannot attack anyone until year until that. Uh, subjugation and tributaries are only basic rules. Uh, so you can, uh, on the basic terms, you cannot change uh, terms. You can only wait a sec. Do we have that? <laughs> uh, no, yeah, on the basic terms. Uh, so this is actually the reason why hostile takeover is banned because hostile takeover uh, uh, is um, what's called. Uh, you're basically draining uh, much more resources than uh, than regular uh, tribute. Uh, and if you are getting uh, conquered by somebody else, there is a way like to uh, <laughs> sorry for pardon my French to fuck up your uh, conquer. Uh, so there is a way to surrender as a tribute to a third party which will remove you from the war but this is banned if you do that we will permaban you on this server please don't do that not permaban but this is will ban you from this game uh so awaiting a war by this trick is not allowed and that would be it i guess uh gameplay game is played till year 100 peace timer till uh, th uh year 30 I know so. We have uh, a guarantee of guaranteed systems until year 10. So if uh, like uh, you are not allowed to settle outposts on uh, in systems of other players, uh, if they have a guaranteed habitable planet there, we will try to resolve those situations uh, as observers to check if there will be any uh, disputed systems and tell people in advance if the system is guaranteed for uh, any player or not. Also, no color nicknames, planets, species, systems, uh, no cheating, of course, no abusing, uh, rounding errors is uh, considered to be an abuse. Uh, also, the zero, uh, zero mineral uh, situation is also an abuse. Please don't do that. Uh, if you if you violate those rules, we will impose penalty for points. Also, destroying building while getting concrete uh, is a like it's a bad manner basically, and not uh, it, it will also be counted as violation of rules. And I guess that's it. Basically, we are playing with a regular multiplayer rules. It's just we have a little bit more empowered design restrictions due to balance being out of the window. And yeah, hope <laughs> hope we will have a good game. Time to time for your questions. Mm, no questions so far. Uh, <laughs> if you are in doubt, you can just DM me or. I have, <clears throat> I have uh, one more question. Um, are yep. things like the science agreements counted uh, in the team limits no. or just no. the like, defensive ones? No, uh, only defensive and offensive one. Uh, uh, long story short, like you just shouldn't have more than uh, uh, your team limit on the on one side in the same word. So for instance, like if you want to declare a war and you see that you have more people than you should on your side, that will be counted as a uh, violation. So, and that's why we are not changing, uh, we are not, uh, how it's called. Yeah, uh, the, 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 there is one uh, special moment about tributes. So if you attack a tribute, it will be counted uh, as a player on uh, side of attacked uh, or, or on the defending side, but it's not counted towards team limit. But subsidiary is because subsidiary is also, uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, subsidiary, yeah, it. It, yes, it is a part in offensive and defensive wars. So if you're a megacorp, uh, your subsidiaries will be counted 
as a team limit. All right, uh, thank you for answering. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, we are starting, please read up. Okay, actually everybody already read it up. Uh, just checking if every player selected. All right, I'll jump into the yeah, host channel good. and we'll, uh, we'll see you all in game. Yep. Good luck, everybody. Yeah, good luck. Also. The exciting stuff. Here we go. So if I understood them correctly, they removed much of the ship discount that were making Gestalt stronger, but they still think Gestalt is the strongest build, right? Yes. Yes. As far as I can tell, yes. Uh, remember to share your screen on Discord, by the way. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I will do that immediately. I'm just checking some of the spawns as, as was requested. Hey. Uh, so, yeah, we are checking spawns. Yeah. Uh, I guess we should split the galaxy. <laughs> I'll I'm check about the, halfway uh... through. Ah, halfway through. All right. Wait, what is uh, right. his ring world? That's fine. Fine. I mean, so far, ring world. Fine. Fine. Yeah, I think I don't think I don't see any issues. Let me check. Potato Shaggy is playing on. Oh, arc sequels wow interesting ah because uh because hives are not allowed to settle on uh to take aquatics so that that's the thing so mr Kessler playing an arc six uh there might be an issue between wow. potato shaga ah no he has uh, his system either you see, this probably belongs to Potato Shaga. And yes, it's the case that you yeah, no, accidentally exactly. take this. Uh, but but ah, he, no, he no actually issue there, sees we... his guarantee. Yes, yeah, yes because he already see... sees his guarantee. Yeah, yeah. Shouldn't be a yep. problem. True, true. Oh, wow. And actually, they, they like are... Arctic Worlds. The Delcor system, like a few jumps away in between R and Lord, and uh, who's that? Lord Zaro has got three Arctic Worlds on. That's kind of mm? that's kind of tasty. Wow. I've seen that before. Seriously, no, I've not seen three like that, yeah. Yes, same, same. Uh, I wonder if there will be an AI Empire spawn this time. We had a couple of games with the new AI Empire spawned, like outside the galaxy, basically the in the place where you usually see L clusters. Mm. And those systems are filled with juicy, juicy Gaia worlds, size 30, a couple, a couple of size. No, oh, we lost you. Five for a size eighteen. Uh, uh, just saying that there is yeah. like um, the big, big juicy uh, worlds. It, yes, I actually played. Uh, I concurred. Oh, we do have a void dweller. Those technocracy oh, heroic past. Oh, to be honest, That's the one I would go for as well. Would you? Yeah, wouldn't you go for it. the factions though? Wouldn't you go for parliamentary system heroic past? Yeah, actually, and then probably. swap into. Then get rid of parliamentary system at year twenty and take something like um, distinguished admiralty. So I have uh, enough testing to know if heroic pass is required to hit the ninety percent discount, but I think it is. I think it is. It yeah, is no, I think it, it, it just it, it makes it it makes it a, like heroic pass doubles your chances of getting the right leaders. And it's also important to have militaries as one of your um, ethics because they have I think it's one and a half chance to roll. Yes, yeah, so the look, one of his governors already has shipwright. He can almost yeah. immediately grab a shipwright governor. Who? Which player is this? Sorry, this is Aiden. So Aiden he's here spawned can... with a with an army discount one. Yeah, oh. that's such a pain. I mean, I would but fire trade that. Value yeah, nice. look, trade value is nice. He's bought the shipwright. Yeah. Uh, well, oh yes, because of course he's going to go down. He's going to go down the mercantile route almost immediately, isn't he? I see a couple of interesting designs. Uh, in prosperous unification. I'm seeing a second void dweller. We've got at least two. Kerner is a void dweller. OPA is. Oh yeah. Parliamentary sorry, system Kerner. functional architecture. And now this, I think functional architecture may actually be a mistake if he's trying to stack those bonuses, but he could just be lucky. I suppose. Let's look at his leaders. So he mm. has. He's oh he's, he's already, already rolled, rolled a shipwright. To be fair, okay. So that's actually maybe quite lucky. Maybe not. And, and you really need to roll them around like year 15 at the latest if you want yes. to get the level up so you get the 15%. Yes. 
And he's got an admiral in here. His leader is an admiral, so that is going to mean that he can level both his uh, Minister of Defense and the Admiral up to get the tier four veteran trait for the 10% discount between them and 20% ship build speed, which is nice, but it's all these bonuses. Do you just ban Rogue Service as Prosperous Unification, by the way? Uh, Cyrix, if you're still here. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you say? Uh, are Rogue Services banned from taking Prosperous Unification? Yes, they are. Okay, yeah, because I noticed R and Singularity both went here with Dragons, dragons yeah. which is usually the be second best. Uh, Alpha Hydra, my monk guaranteed. What is Alpha Hydra? Ah, yeah, I, I see, I see that. Uh, no, I, it's just like uh, Singularity just asked me if the system belongs to another player. Pax is running because it's of right man. next to Capital. So he's going. Uh, there are yeah. both interesting designs. Yeah, Fanatic Xenophobe, Check Faction Pop Growth, design. Parliamentary System, and then I want to look at his leaders. So he's gone for a Governor Ruler. Interesting. That's very interesting. Huh. Okay. Uh, guys, check Iga Higgins' design because I didn't see it for quite a while. So he's Prosperous Unification, Devouring Swarm, Aesthetic. Yes. Yes. It's a, yes. That's an interesting it's one. A devouring Swarm. I would love to see how he performs with Prosperous Unification. Okay, somebody's slugging. It's Bear Trap. I mean, well, let's try uh, check out Zero, Manchu. Zero. Uh, he's doing the Ring World robot. So I think the the plan with the Ring World robot is similar to what you want to do with a Void. Exactly. Roller. Yeah. You exactly. Just, like, you have three plans in one system to stack the discounts. Zero. I don't see him on the list. Uh, Lord. Oh, Zaro. Zaro. Sorry, Lord Zaro. It because his empire is called Zero. Uh, I've, That's sorry. So I've actually turned on the, the Empire player <laughs> names. So yeah, that we don't have to. Lord I'm not Sarah. going to look at. I'm not going to look at the Empire names at all. This game is my plan. I'll do the same then. Rogue Servitor, Rapid yeah. Replicator, Shattered mm. Ring. Okay, yeah. Let's have a look at what he's going for then. So the way I I played it, uh, I tested it once with a uh, Devourer uh, Determined Exterminator, is because it's so expensive in alloys to expand. You uh, you take the two ring world seconds before even taking a second system because you just want those yeah. alloys for your ships and then you start making a robot assembly and start sending the pops back to the the main planet yeah you okay. just need the pop growth and you yeah, need exactly. the slot for the government yeah 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 and, and then, then you don't bother you, you don't bother using planets. and then if you get if you get some reductions to clearing some of this clearing some of these blockers i'm pretty yeah on clearing you get alloys back so if you can reduce this enough, you can trade a few hundred energy credits for like a hundred alloys and two hundred uh, minerals, which is just nice to be able to do in the background. Yeah, and also like if you find the Delcor system, first that was the th system with the three Arctic worlds you mentioned. Yeah, that's a pretty good system. Like that's another three planet system he could set up with Governors, at least later in the game. Yes, well, or any any player could set that up though. So even a regular yeah. bio could, or any machine could grab that and turn turn it into a discount hellhole. Twins Ooh. promise as well Comrade down has, south. Comrade has Pappas two gems from his capital. No way. That's Are another interesting me? one. Oh jeez, what's Comrade playing today? He's probably playing bio uh, high, isn't he? Lithoid or no regular bio high progenitor? Okay. Has he seen Trappist? No, but he will see Trappist. And then he'll just colonize the worlds, use it for the pop growth. And, um, and one of them is an Arctic world. So exactly. he actually has three. Uh, he has four. No, oh, sorry, three. Three Arctic worlds within uh, three jumps of his capital. That is very. And short. there's a Gaia, the world, Gaia world two world. jumps away. Oh my lord! And he's honestly pretty isolated. He's relatively far away from his closest players are Tango Yankee. And or, Ditlev. Yeah, and Ditlev. Or depending on who gets down there, because maybe Tango doesn't. Maybe Tango doesn't go to the Jolon system. Maybe he just takes Nifra, Hawaz, and kind of goes south a bit. And possibly, you know, Kelsia, or possibly Miss Nebulosity, or Ker I don't see Kerner doing it. No, he's a, he's a Void Dweller. But maybe one of the other players snakes up and meets Comrade that way. Maybe. But Tango is also a Hive player, which is always interesting. When you have yeah. two of the same sort of faction close to each other, you want to fight and meet the other one. You do. So the question is, when Munchu, uh, sorry, when, when Comrade finds Trappist, is he going to get greedy? Like, is he going to go for something will. four or five planets? Someone in chat asking me if Halito has spawned. Yes, it has. 
Oregano is probably the closest player here. One, two, three, four jumps away. Pax is one, two, three, four, five jumps away from Halito. But Trin's promise, honestly, from Pax's point of view, Trin's promise probably looks nicer. There's one continental world, a tropical world, and a tomb world, but you'd colonize all three of them and stack those governor bonuses for reductions. Uh, where's Halito? I don't know. If you maybe search I'm spelling it, the name wrong. H E L I T O. It's down the south. You'll see it in the south of south of Pax, southeast of Oregano. Not the very south of the galaxy, but like almost the edge. Ah, I was writing H A, not H E. Oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, not the Danish A. I don't see it being full of um, Gaia worlds, though. No, Helito's not. No. Helito spawns an anomaly. You complete the anomaly, then a new system spawns in with the Gaia worlds, and you just okay. throw down your observation post, get a free Gaia world. And later on... So actually, I, we ran into an interesting kind of bug la last night when I was playing in the Admiral's game. Um, I uh, we, we had the Galactic Empire, and we had Pax Imperium up, which meant nobody can declare war against anyone else. So Helito spawned, I decided that's it, I'm going to go kill the guys, but I waited a bit long. I waited a little bit of a long time, and I flew in. They immediately, uh, I flew in and tried to land with some troops. That, they kicked me out and cut themselves off and spawned their armies. I then attempted to jump into the system. When I jumped, that meant that they respawned the high planes, and the first thing they did was join the galactic community, meaning they joined the Empire, meaning we couldn't declare war on each other. And so they were just That's stuck cute. there, like with four, five hundred k worth of fleet going. Ooh, we, we're angry. So I haven't actually found the system myself in one of my single player games, but my last single player game, they attacked my vassal, which was quite a war. Oof! Did your vassal decide to have a go at them? Did they? No, I, I think my vassal was just, you know, offensive to them at some point. Then they thought they'd smack them around. So this is something we should probably all mention. The um, so looking at the yeah. balance between hives and bios. So a bio empire, something they've done in this model is they've given a councillor slot to bio empires from the start, so they have four councillors. Hive, on the other hand, hive effectively start with five councillors because they've got their ruler and four nodes. And because of the way that agenda speed works, the more councillors you have, the faster you complete your agenda progress. Meaning that in the first 30 years, a bio empire, if they didn't have this slot, would basically have to do um, increased plus one councillor size first and then take the um oh that's the wrong button yeah and, the ship build one and then take the ship build one second whereas hive mind empires could complete two ascensions uh, sorry two agendas and then do the ship build agenda and the agendas for some of the agendas for hive are just straight up better like finding the voice here gives monthly unity and a flat unity bonus as well whereas regular empires they i mean first obviously regular empires haven't even finished their opportunities yet Oh, he's expand We're also getting a player going for expand the council anyway. That's quite interesting. So I guess what they're going for here is they're going to maximize sense. the number of admirals because they're a high uh, uh, void dweller, so they can try and stack more councillor bonuses, maybe. But void dweller doesn't need as many admirals to hit the ninety percent. Though they need governors as no, much. No, but this void dweller is not. This void dweller is not playing heroic past, so they actually have less chance of getting the, the governors. So possibly they're going for it from a slightly different approach. So I think, l looking at their policies right now, I'm not sure how experienced they are with this build. I don't know if I'd go mixed economy. Um, and have yeah. they finished? They uh, haven't finished first... Mercantile, but they've started Mercantile. Okay, so that's why they're on wealth creation. So maybe they're just waiting for yes. consumer benefits. And then as soon as they get over. that, they're going to switch over to militarize, get rid of all of their uh, consumer goods production. I wonder where they've gone for species rights. So their rights are currently at decent conditions. They could go academic privilege. They're probably waiting yeah. until they complete the tradition and then they get all, lots more consumer goods because academic privilege compared to decent conditions gives you so much more political power from your specialists and rulers. Why is that important, chat? And thanks for pointing this out to me, Jörn Zach. This is important because the amount of unity you produce is based on the support of the faction. Support is political power multiplied by pops. So the, you can artificially inflate the unity that your factions produce by giving them more political power. And the easiest ways especially, to do that... Especially... Yes, yeah? 
Especially if you're playing a Void Dweller that'll ha uh, and a Trade Void Dweller yes. that'll have a lot of Merchant Jobs. So all of your rulers are at 900%, meaning they're getting 10 political power per pop because it's plus 900%. So base of 1, plus 9, so it's 10. Your Specialists are at 5 political power, whereas Decent Conditions, your Specialists are at 2, and your rulers are at 8. Stratified Economy also works for Trade as well if, you're going, if you don't go for the um, Materialist. I think you should go Materialist, but if you don't... It just stratified swapped your Academic. Well, oh, he, yeah, he, there we go. He just swapped to Academic. Let's take a look at his factions. And his factions just over doubled their unity output. He just gained an extra 20 unity per month. He hasn't changed his other yeah, policy, it, though. I think it actually almost tripled. He's just gone consuming benefits. Here we go. Yeah. Um, this is the this is the build I've been doing as well. Yes. Militarized economy, consumer benefits, and then um, you use trade for everything. I actually everything think technocracy is probably not from. worth it. You know, I think that... Heroic Pass instead of Technocracy is probably going to be better if you're trying to stack those traits. I I don't know exactly, but I think Parliamentary System is a go-to because you just get so much unity. Like, he's making 77 unity. Try and find the other Void Dweller for a second, see what they're making. Yeah. Uh, if you can remember who they uh, were. I think it was... Oh, I'm just going to... Oh, here we go. The other Void Dweller is making 15. So this Void Dweller doesn't have factions. 15 unity. Um, they, yeah. you know, they're struck. Oh, this Void Dweller doesn't know what they're doing. They've got aptitude first. Very first. But one, of, one of the things I often hear from people doing a trade build is that they don't go consumer benefits. They go um, uh, unity. what marketplace of ideas because they need the unity. Parliamentary system fixes that for exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Parliamentary system I actually does. Parliamentary system is very underrated, especially for Void Dwellers because they get so many leaders and you get so much political power very fast. I feel like this Void Dweller player is going to be struggling economically very, very soon. Um, they haven't got... They, I mean, next I assume they're going to go Mercantile, but they just aren't producing much unity. And they've got their... Their bureaucrats are fully employed. They're going to get a bit more in a moment when they upgrade their rulers. So, you know, they're going to get um, three unity from the science director, eight from the politicians. So that's an extra 20 unity. So, okay, so they'll be at 50 unity in a moment, but they're not there yet. Whereas... Uh, where is it? Void Kerner... Also doing an yeah. Uh, the other Void Dweller is doing an interesting thing. I don't know how many people have worked, uh, played around with yet, but you can change your uh, your capital designation now. Yes, Where, to Because alloy. he has consumer benefits, he'd usually have two jobs he couldn't use because they were making consumer goods he didn't need. Now he can change them to metallurgist jobs instead. You can really focus your economy early game with this uh, capital change. So actually, I'm looking at the, the other Void Dweller. The Void Dweller player is just slightly behind economically. Um, they're just now converting their cap their capitals on their first two colonies. Um, I, basically, my thoughts here are that they're slightly less experienced with the build, is, is what I'm thinking, um, compared to the other players. Miss, the first Void Dweller made both of his habitats into trade habitats, where normally I would make one trade, one alloy habitat, but that might not be the most efficient anymore with well, the now capital the, Now with the capital, and you don't need that many alloys. You want some to build a second habitat. Like he's pushing up 30 yeah. alloys a month now, so he's buying 11, which is over cap. He's that's, buying yeah, too many alloys. That's should. a mistake. Yeah, I think you can get away with 10. I go with nine because I know it's safe. I've not tested 10 out. I can't remember. I think 10 is too uh, much. I've tested 10. It 10 is, no, 10 is uh, perfect. Okay. Uh, 42 and 10 are the two. My I have all the numbers if you want them, by the way. Oh, just send, send them. Send them in the. Uh, yeah, send them. Send, yeah. Send, DM me on Discord. Let's take a look at these leaders. Right. So governors. We've got one ship right. Well, we're not. We'll see in six months. Let's look at some of the other builds for now. So our down south, this very strong player, is playing here. Be dragons, rapid replicator, rogue servitor. Government wise, they've got their nodes. They're getting extra unity, so they're making fifty unity. Let's take a look at their planets. They probably built yes, yeah, simulation site, and their rogue servitor. And because of the agenda, they're now getting fifty. They're getting five point five unity from that agenda. Actually, why is that? It's giving a base of five. Uh, Why is it modified? The the They're getting 5.5. Ah, uh, because um, uh, those percentages also affect the base, which gives ah, you. So they're getting. The so actually, it's plus 5, plus 10% on the 5, and 10% on everything yes. else. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah that's so stupid. Um, and it's much more when they finish this agenda. And yeah. just in case, regular empires don't, the, don't have this flat no. bonus. No, regular no. empires I, don't. I, not at all. I do think robots that's, uh, that are not rogue services do need the flat bonus because r normal robots yeah. do struggle with Unity a lot, but rogue yep. services do not. Rogue services are very strong. So Pax here, interestingly, has pushed his capital over immediately into a, a consumer goods capital. 
filled up on research labs. He's getting rid of his administrative offices. Let me check. Is he parliamentary system? Yes, he is. Let's yeah, check if he's he got consumer benefits. Oh, not consumer benefits. I mean, uh, he's, yeah. So he's got an academic privilege. Exactly. He's got his factions producing 46 unity. Holy. Imagine being a, being a machine and just getting 46 unity for the virtue of being alive. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my goodness me. What a slap in the face. I don't, I don't know if Chet knows this, but I'm ma mainly a robot player, and I've been trying to learn bio lately, and stuff like this makes me so angry. <laughs> it's it's so interesting to see how much approval you can get nowadays. So he is at max it's approval so pretty much on hit. both factions. Plus plus ten percent because he's democratic, which gives ten percent faction approval. He also gets a unity bonus from his leader, which is currently now plus four percent um, faction unity. It's just some of these things are just pretty wild. Oh, Isengard, like that's a cool plan. The egalitarian faction is almost impossible to not have 100% unless you really want to abuse your people. So Whereas aquatic, some of the other ones, like militaries, can be hard. Aquatic, incubators, and natural engineers, weak and unruly. Interesting to see weak in there. I would normally put solitary over weak. I wouldn't want that. Even if it's a minor reduction to army damage and... Um, and uh, worker output, I wouldn't want to lose two and a half percent. I mean, it is very minor. When you get the other bonuses in, so like when you start get rank, stacking up your bonuses from stability, aquatic, unification, governor skill, etc., that minus two and a half percent is is much less effectively. It's like yeah, minus it, one it and a half. Up really fast. Mm. I still just, I, I mean, I guess it does make sense taking a taking it so that you can have aquatic and get the extra bonuses. It then becomes a kind of it's a free pick almost, I guess. I'm surprised yeah, I'm, not so I'm many sure people play that. in Merchant Guilds. Uh, we just discovered that Merchant Guilds is the strongest way to play uh, Void Biological Lord. Empires. Oh, right Bio now. Empires. No, yeah, I Bio Empires. Clerks, right? You can get so many boosts to Clerks. Yes. I'm guessing because you have a free yes. counter slot here, the Clerks get boosted a lot more early game. Yes, and uh, as soon as you get the Trade Federation, your consumer goods and units oh, of production will be through yeah. the roof. Yes. You, uh, as a bio empire, you would be able to just make allies. Kerner, the ten. Void Dweller, is now making 108 unity per month. After leaders, it's 94, yeah. but, you know, it's just a massive number for year five. Yeah, in my, in my test game, I think I hit 250 unity per month from factions around year 30. Okay, so the first Void Dweller who hasn't gone heroic, 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 the first Void Dweller has not rolled another shipwright or distinguished admiral for his... Uh, not distinguished admiral, um, retired fleet admiral for his second governors. So he's only got two more chances really to be in with a good chance of it. Uh, let's take a look at the other one. The other one, the other one has, however, rolled another retired fleet officer and taken them. So they're already rocking 25%. Um, let's take a look at that. They do have a food shortage that they're not paying attention to. Interesting. They could just buy 10 food a month. There we go. They bought 100 and now they're buying 10. Yeah, there we go. Somebody is listening to the stream. No, probably not. <laughs> I quite often chat on my stream with the same players who are participating nope. in the game. Oh, so, Sarah have done something different, I think. I think he's wouldn't be a surprise. extra governors, um, even though he didn't have the right traits. I'm uh, just waiting for them to level up. I Maybe he's one hopeful. Extra Maybe he's just being... Oh, no, he's, he's yeah. taking the alloy governor for the extra alloys. He's grabbed that because he's gone, I want oh, the alloys. He's not employing yeah. him because it's costing two unity for three alloys. That's three a good alloys. deal. Yeah. Yeah. And he, when that guy levels up, which actually he won't because he's not employed. So he does need to employ that governor. Yeah, but it's one thing I've been doing on my Void Dweller build is if I don't roll the right governors, I still try to recruit them, especially if they have the trade value. Yes. Which is very nice. And then if they level up, maybe they get the right When they level right up, thing. they have a chance. And yeah, exactly. So I'd, I'd rather have my planets filled up with governors that has a chance to level up, and then I'll just disband them if I roll what I really want. But it's so important to get those leaders now. Leaders are so strong. And uh, and Pax over here has rolled a shipwright. And oh, sorry, I think Pax might have started with those. No, Pax started with his governor being a shipwright, who's now at level two. You know, so. <laughs> Champion of the people, charismatic. Let's talk about policies. Oh, so policies and edicts. I wonder. So Cap Pax still got executive vigor, but is way over. He doesn't. I'm not even sure he needs it. He's running fortify the border, capacity, and map the stars. He could easily afford yeah. capacity subsidies without that plus 100. I barely. It gives plus 100 after all, but. No, so I, he I could, he'd, he'd be at minus 10. Executive vigor is a bit overrated. 
these days. Yeah. I mean, to be I honest, I, okay. I would actually, I would actually argue, to be quite frank, that transcendent learning early on is better. More the the leader cap yes. is nice, and that leader experience gain of fifty percent is massive to get your leaders to level four before by like year twenty twenty five. I'm assuming if you try to find one of the progenitors, if they have finished their first tree yet, they probably Comrade went for it. I believe Com Comrade Zaid. went for it. Let's have a look. Yes. He so Comrade's finished learning. prosperity and gone transcendent learning, of course. And he already has nodes at level three. Uh, this, like, it's just wild. He's got double charismatic, le information gathering, and skirmisher for extra sublight speed. Even more sublight speed. Jesus. Uh, but doesn't hasn't actually rolled any of the policies in the tech tree. Interesting. Our comrades found Trappist, and I think Comrade's going to be attempting to take it. Let's look at the governor. So Comrade has, Comrade's got two ship construction focused governors. He's going to be he's going to be colonizing the Trappist system and building it into his shipyard. Yeah. No way he won't do that. I, I can't see any other option really for him. It makes a lot of sense. Who's closest to Wenkwert? Oh my goodness me! Least fire is in Wenkwert right now. What's Lease Fire running today? Clones, I assume. I yeah, see clone plane. merchants. Yes. Always clone Criminal merchants. heritage. Ooh, criminal, that's annoying. Yeah, that's what, not annoying the... because we have a ban on opening branches without other players allowing that. So it's basically people pick it for pre -team. Void dweller combo. No. Okay. He's yes. also not setting uh, an blood. agenda. He's not set an agenda it, at you know all. What? Since the start of the game, ah. I don't understand that. There is a new way to uh, to team up with Criminal Heritage. Uh, we've been recently playing with Momonga, him playing on Criminal Heritage, and me playing on Clones, but uh, specifically Merchant Clone because Merchant Clones can produce the same amount of trade as Void Dwellers. Yeah, it's hard to believe, but they do. I can, uh, I can imagine. That. Quite a question. Yields. So, Least Fire has not picked an agenda since the start of the game. Why? Is he waiting for his tradition mm. tree to open up? Mate or something? I'm just kind of confused by this. He actually, you know, he, he might be playing for the first time this uh, patch. Oh, he's making because seven I, I haven't seen him month. playing for quite a while. Oh, he is only making seven unity per month. What is going on here? His leaders are just eating everything. He's got six leaders. He's oh, yeah, he's over recruited leaders, I think. Yeah, I'm quite worried about him because he is also rank one player, no ladder. He's got three scientists, uh, that's the problem. He's taken three scientists, which is a big investment this early on nowadays. Two is probably, I would say, the average for most players. Yeah. Like, if we look around, most yeah. players here have two scientists. One to He has to switch someone. his trade policy, otherwise he's not going to Yeah. Uh, have a good time. I'm going to go through and look at the governors, right? So Pax has the good governor, Ard doesn't. Kerner has a good governor and has just leveled them up. Lord Zorro, uh, Lord Zara even doesn't have a good governor. Giltanus has yes. the shipwright. Singularity has a shipwright. Uh, Aiden Cyrex, has... What are the yep. about attacking the AI? So Bear Trap had to leave the game, right? And I noticed Stardust uh, enveloped them already. Is Stardust uh, allowed to eat them? Not really. Uh, like, there are cases when you are cut off by AI, so maybe we will allow by general rule is you cannot attack anyone until year 30. Okay. Currently, the Miss Nebulosity in special cases. Yes, Currently, Miss uh, Nebulosity AI is wrong, attack, double ship right. Uh, I, I will most likely allow other player to help if the situation will be difficult. So does Singularity have a system where he can use both the generals? Or is it enough to just have them in the same sector? I'm no, they have to be in the same sure system. How... Yeah, that's what I thought. Same system, yes. Somebody's, oh my goodness me, uh, Ditlev1323 has rolled a level 2 governor with already got ship construction focus, level 2, just <laughs> ready to go. But he's not he bought them. He hasn't recruited them. No, he hasn't. And there's only a year left. I don't think he's noticed. You do have to keep, keep an eye is, on these uh, things. That is a big thing. The fact that they only re-roll every five years instead of every year is a big change. Yes. I know yes. it used to be every 10 years, but every five years feels slow when you're used to every year. Yes, it also makes it more random. Because yeah. uh, last game, I've got the Cape Gov uh, with ship rides. So I had like on the same governor, minus 30% discount. The, the first and... time I tested Void Dweller build, I rolled seven uh, of the governors that gave army discount and one of the ones that get ship discounts. 
I felt so very far. Sad. I'm looking through yep. ours, ours uh, nodes, ours council. R has rolled war algorithms on three of his council members. So he's going to level that up. They're going to be at 21% additional weapons damage by year 30, as a minimum, just from his council. Giltanas is uh, forming a federation with Momonga right now. Well, that's, They're that's just about expected. to finish their contact. Yes. Uh, but what is unexpected is that nobody plays as a Megacorp in their duo. All oh. of them are, merchant, are merchants. Oh, yeah, they are. Yes. Let's take a look at his planets then. So he's got one merchant. He's not completed mercantile. He's not taken commercial enterprises. He's gone straight for the extra trade value. He's not gone for more merchants. Is that because he's but running director of trade? He wants the clerks. clerks. Yes, look at his uh, capital. The, Eight trade value per The reason clerk. is, I can tell you what the reason is. Basically, he wants to replace commercial zones with the uh, laboratory. Uh, research lab, yes. and if he does that while having a merchant, they will be unemployed. Absolutely, no, absolutely. I, is, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you there. It makes sense. What's but also, the clerks are a lot stronger. Yes. Well, they're, they're, they're making eight and a half trade value base at the moment for him, which is less than the 15 a merchant makes, but their, their consumer good upkeep is a lot less. A merchant takes yeah. one consumer good upkeep from their rule, from their role as a minimum. Uh, he's and gone as social his welfare. Of trade levels up, it's going to get better and better. He's gone social welfare. Interestingly, he probably doesn't have. He does have materialists, so he could have gone. He could have gone with his with his species rights to academic privilege. I actually think that might be a mistake. Having said that, un he wants to get rid of the unemployed pops, having reduced happiness, probably. So. Yeah, that makes sense uh, as a, a clone. Where yeah. You get so many pops. Uh, Ditlov is asking. If he's able to declare war on subterraneans who stolen his capital, <laughs> not capital, but planet. Yeah, he has a subterranean event. Oh, maybe he just asked me in the uh -oh. Discord. That's that's hilarious. Yeah. Did he not? Did he yeah, not, did he not notice and do it in oh, his situation shit, yeah. log? That's so silly. Yeah. Oh, and the mini pigs federation is up. Mini pig, <laughs> come on. But let's oh, check out so their, their, their economy should be booming because of that then. Yeah, because that's uh, making uh, 75 consumer goods. Consumer month. goods, yes, and unity. And the same, Holy same form among them. crap. That. He's got jobs though, but now he can just switch over all of his jobs out of consumer goods into... Because uh, he's got a consumer goods world, he should change that yeah. immediately to an alloy world, I would assume. I still would well, prefer to like have a Megacorp in, uh, uh, in this federation because Megacorp boosts your trade even more for free, essentially. So it's just I, on their own, they are stronger. I haven't played that much bio, but my feeling is that a non-Megacorp build gets more trade early on, but yeah. over time, the Megacorp starts winning. So I think for a timing push, I think non-Megacorp is better. Oh. But over time, it's for sure very, very nice to have a Megacorp. Uh, Something the I think the is biggest really difference, bad. I would say... Oh, go on. Uh, okay, so the biggest difference between Megacorp and uh, regular is that Megacorp doesn't produce much trade. Uh, it boosts uh, trade of your ally, but on your own you're making only energy credits, whereas with trade you're able to produce unity and consumer goods from it. So that's probably the reason why they are both playing as regulars. So something I actually think needs yeah. to be talked about is um, authority types. It used to be that people really wanted to have um, uh, oligarchic, right? Oligarchic. But now, oligarchy mm -hmm. seems crap because you have to have a few thousand unity at year 20 to keep your ruler in their spot. Otherwise, your, your ruler could, could get batted out and suddenly someone else in your empire ends up in that position. Whereas, democratic is no longer an RNG chance. We just saw the election come up earlier. It's, it's now based on who has the most support and whoever has the higher number just wins. It's not an RNG role. It's just on the election day, the candidate with the most support is elected. Whereas before it was oh, RNG. I didn't know that, so now you can use the increased support, and it's a small cost of unity to boost up whichever your leader, whichever leader is, it's higher up. But usually your empire ruler will be one of your factions, and usually a main faction. So boosting them up is, is relatively simple. One of the complaints I have heard is that when people get the, the paragons, the new uh, leaders, they will almost of, uh, always have more support, so you can risk up, uh, if, if you take them into your empire, you can risk messing up your election because of it. Yes, I can imagine that, I can imagine that actually. 
Uh, so, I wonder what... Ghana's economy exploded on the Observer's outline after they got that Federation up and running. Yep. We're Look making 84 consumers He's from not trade even making it. and 84 get... unity from trade. And he's, he should be running academical privilege already, right? He won, No, no, he's uh, on... Um, no, he's social, on welfare, social welfare. welfare. He, he can now switch to academic privilege soon. I think once his faction spawn, he will. Oh, they've just come in. They've just come in. Yes. Nico. His faction is spawned now. I imagine he'll switch over. If he doesn't, I'd be a bit... Uh, there he goes. He's just moved to academic privilege. Yep. And that'll have pushed his faction unity up. So he's making 30 from just the one faction. Another faction hasn't come through yet, it seems. Because that's not all of his pops. 39 is only half his pops. It's annoying when you only get one faction spawning at a time, sometimes. Uh, interesting. If you check out Pax's build right now, he has a hundred research more than the person with the second most research per month. I yeah, because second, he's playing. Second highest I saw was three hundred and eighty, so he's hundred and sixty more than second. His capital is is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine research things. He's he's also got a, a, an energy world with two research labs, and he's managed to roll yeah. dimensional portal researcher, uh, which is eating a lot of, eating up a lot of consumer goods, but. He has a consumer goods world. I think he's stockpiling consumer goods, and then at year 15 or so, he'll switch over. 15 yeah. to 18, I'm imagining, to, to alloy production. But it's a lot of science to squeeze out this early. Yeah, and also some 550 year 11? That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, and it's even without technocracy. And he has yeah. a lot of consumer goods. With parliamentary yeah. system, yeah. mathematical practice, do... it's just wild. Yeah. I think one of the reasons mm -hmm. he can afford to do it is the parliamentary system giving him all the unity he could ever use. And then he all, his parliamentary system is doing unity. He actually isn't getting any consumer goods from trade. He's not doing any trade related stuff. He's just building yep. the darn things. But because he's not focusing, he's not focusing on alloys basically at all. He's got no alloy production except his base production. Or he's buying, no, is he buying some? He's getting seven from stations. Wait, what? It's probably some uh, deposits spawning in uh, there. Look at no. uh, guys. Look at Momongas in production. Almost one. Uh, yeah, in one the Trin's promise, he's making seven. Yeah, then. Trin's promise. Oh, I a, see it now. So that's deposits. actually why. That partly that's really helped him out then. Shift out. Shift, shift completely yeah. away from any consumer goods. So he gets his base production, some some from his leaders and the stations, giving him enough to build you know star bases every now and then and that sort of thing. And otherwise, he can ignore it. He's also but using Oregano automation. Oregano has actually caught... Oregano has, has cut him off from Trin's Trim, promise. So oh, once yeah. they meet, he's splitting up his empire. But he can still build Knowing a star Pax. base in Trin's promise. <laughs> and I think Pax, yeah, Pax won't yeah. sit around for that for too long. The, the Igor situation. Just yes. Who? Jonathan Paus. Igor Hugan. Oh, okay. Actually, for the second time on his account. Uh, I will check with him. Yeah, I guess we can look around a bit in the meantime. Mm. So yeah, it looks like we have the the, the two federations clearly skyrocket them in their economy. It's oh, the two players deal. in the federation, right? There isn't the a second yeah. federation, is there? Athanas and, and uh, Mamanga. Yeah, in, in the same when federation. When they got into the federation, their their observer score skyrocketed. Yes. But other than we have Pax, we have the, the Void we looked at earlier, and then we have a couple of clones, I think. And then R is the first robot on the list. Do we know if Dragoons is doing anything crazy today? No comment. <laughs> so you know that he... What is that origin? The sanctified Death Knights. He's going Knights of the Toxic God. <laughs> Interesting. Is that yeah. also to use uh, having a double system for discounts? Or... I think partially. I think partially that. Um, there's also... So Knights of the Toxic God is a really crap start, but it, got, it has some really good scaling. Once you can start getting science and alloys from those knights in the in the mid game, if you can survive year thirty, you're in for a good time. TJ in chat says, "If anyone was, if I was going to trade with anyone in the universe, it would be with a trade federation named Mini Pigs." <laughs> <laughs> so if we just take a look at his leaders and look at Ragoon's leaders from it, oh what? Yeah, I think you had to select him again after oh, the I, Oh, yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah, I, was, I was suddenly like, wait, what? Where's the leaders? So Ragoon has got five admirals. <laughs> what? Ragoon has bought five admirals. Why? 
No we, governors, no su- one scientist, and that's it. Goods, sticks and consumer goods. He's just using them for research. Wait, 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 a, second, wait a second. Is he uh, oligarchic? Uh, no, he's imperial. He's that's imperial. So he's got extra resources in his uh, capital. He has two planets in his capital, uh, so that's quite good. He's got distinguished admiralty, so they start on level three. Um, and they're going to get to I, level four when he finishes leadership conditioning in a moment. And then he can ha- he'll have he'll be able to choose which admirals are the best, the ship is fire coming. the bad ones. Yeah. Uh, well, he'll probably put or them keep, under the ship or design. Keep all of them. Oh, no, so he could yeah, keep all of them all. actually. He could keep some of them, make some of them for his fleet and give them the fleet traits. Make some of them for the council. Um, sorry, he's got four admirals, Double. including his leader. I should say. Uh, isn't the trait on admirals for ship discount? Even if they're not councillors, is it is it only if they're councillors? Only if they're councillors. It's only uh, if they're it's councillors. It's an empire okay. trade, then only if they're councillors. But counselors. he's getting six there alloys. Might be another six reason consumer for that. goods. Twelve consumer goods total. Jesus. He, he's trading thirteen unity for twelve consumer goods and six alloys. That seems That's, like a good deal. I think really okay. Yeah, given that he's making extra unity, because Nax Cadius has knights, and the knights make unity, the Lord Commander makes unity, he's got lots and of his unity arms production. Are giving unity? Is he gone for. He's gone unyielding. He's took, he took resistance, yes. frugal. He, he's taken unyielding, oh, so he's clever. got unity from armies as well. So he's making 67, but his factions haven't that's even the, spawned that's the, yet. That's another new change that the viewers might not know about. All planets with the capital building, the capital building is spawning defense armies. So the yeah. units you get from defense armies, you used to have to build fortresses to get. Now you always get it. Because a, so a, a, a level one capital has four planetary defense armies. Level two has eight. Level three has 12. So, or maybe it's 16. It's 12 or 16. I can't remember, actually. Um, but that basically means he's getting an extra two unity from each capital building on his colonies. I mean, it's sixty. Like, it's it's a point that gives you sixteen and a Plus, half units. That's pretty. Don't pretty forget, the knights produce two planetary defense armies per knight, so he's yeah. getting an extra one unity from each knight as well. Like, this is such a fun build to see. I hope he actually survives. I really do. And that's he has the habitat Tigris technology. Yeah, he, I don't think he has any. Yeah, oh, Ego, Hugen, Spicy, and Pax are close by. But Ego is playing Hive, right? Yeah, Ego's playing Hive. So, yeah, he's playing Tivarian Swarm. Ego gets yeah. no benefit, really, from killing a bio. And, Ego wants and to kill a machine. Before year 50. Yeah, he can't have it before year 50, but he wants to kill a machine because machines will give him a massive alloy boost um, yeah. when he purges those pops. And my guess would be that because of the way Pax and um, Oregano is uh, like uh, intertwined, they'll probably fight each other. Yeah. And then we have R and uh, who else in the area? Lord Sarrow. I'm guessing R and Lord Sarrow are going to fight because they're both robots. Aiden has rolled another leader with the shipwright trait. He hasn't bought that leader yet, but he's available now to have three uh, leaders with either retired fleet officer or shipwright. Easily, that is huge. easily putting him up to the minus 45% from that. Plus, when he completes Supremacy or even takes the pick in Supremacy, he'll then go to um, minus 55. Then he'll get his Admirals up on his Council. His leader is an Admiral. He's got another one. That's another 10% there. That's yeah. 65. Um, he'll also take the War the war one. So that, that puts him up to 75, 85. He just needs 5% more from something. And he's at the, the Magic 90. It's hard to understand how powerful... Re- uh, reductions become the closer well, you get the to the difference maximum. between 80 and 90 is double the ships so yes. at 80 at 90 percent you can build twice as many ships for the same cost as 80 percent you know and, or and, 10 times as many ships as if you had no discount exactly at all. if you're at 90 whereas 80 builds five times as many as no discount so the 20 alloys per month he's making right now could be equivalent to 200 alloys per month before the patch. he must be building another He's building his other, another habitat. It's kind of late. Year 13's a bit late for it, but it's good that he's building it. Uh, Spire and Kearney started their crime things. Void dwellers. Space Turkey Kearney's Trade currently League. Sitting, uh, Kearney is currently sitting on two, casual 236 unity production. Jeez. And, and also, on the other side of things, uh, Least Fire here is sitting on 500 energy credits per month. Yep. So, he's playing. Is Least Fire playing Void Dweller? Wait, wait a minute. No. No, no, no. He's no. playing Crime Corp. Uh, Crime Clone Army. If Least if Fire was playing Void Dweller, he would be able 
through this through this strategy, he would have enough energy to support a, to support the discounted fleet. That actually might be a viable wow. void dweller play. So you go for crime. You have a you have a buddy, your little piggy buddies. You you put your crime officers on your friend. You get that massive energy income, and that is, will allow you to support a fleet of like four hundred nav cap or something stupid. Yeah, and you'll be able to indeed. pay for it with your, with a very minimal alloy income because you'll be paying twenty five alloys for a destroyer, 40, 40 something alloys for a for a uh, for a cruiser. An interesting mistake all the federations are making actually. They haven't made migration treaties with each other, meaning they don't get the extra leader pool. Oh. Uh, one of the reasons is that uh, there is not too many influence, and if you make one. Yeah, they're kind uh, of low on influence. Spend... You should still yeah. make it right before the rerolls, I think. So you make make a migration treaty before year 15, for instance. The pool check rolls, if you get anything to the leader it. pool, and then. Yeah, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. So min also, these players aren't min maxing enough, bit. you know? There's, there's more min maxing that could be done. <laughs> And yeah. casuals. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I also wanted to talk a little bit on Rigona's playstyle. Uh, Mamongi actually tested one strategy. Is uh, he was using oligarchic, oligarchic, or I don't actually remember it. Either oligarchic or dictatorial, uh, because they allow you to have four admirals in the council, and admirals are actually the best leaders to. Yes get XP on them because you can abuse uh, uh, mercs for... And, and also, uh, Distinguished Admiral T gives you bonus to experience gains, etc, etc. You can get yeah, lots of experience gain bonus indeed, easily. Indeed. And that's what Ragoons is so, kind of doing. He's got three Admirals on the Council right now. He's, he's doing leadership conditioning, so he's going to push them over. My main issue I'm seeing here is he won't have finished... He won't actually get to finish the, um, the war... The, the war... What's it called? The, the one that Builder? gives you minus 20% uh, shipbuild cost. I forget what it's called. Uh, let me uh, the military, military agenda, you mean? Yeah, he won't finish yeah. military agenda by okay. year 30. So Ragoon is going to be a little vulnerable at year 30. Indeed. I'm wondering if Ragoon is uh, going for Imperial to save the unity on the ruler. Because you get an heir as well that's free. He, he's been very lucky to roll the heir being an admiral. Because if you roll the heir being a general, you might as well just punch yourself in the face 20 times. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> honestly that the worst sad. thing ever that can happen. Yeah. Generals I'm, I'm, so I'm really sad about generals in this patch. Like, yeah. generals has so much potential to be cool, and then they made a leader cap, so no one's getting generals anyway. Like, yeah. why would you ever take I, up one of your important I would take, I would take the the Montu general. I forget what it, the the, the Montu yeah. female general that with because you get that great destiny trait, giving you lots of bonuses when you invade, and you get to steal the pops without having to take an ascension perk. And I'm, I, well, no it was broken. That. Some people have said it's not broken anymore, but it used to be that it would steal 10, 20, or 30% of the pops of the entire empire, thus depopulating a whole planet. I'm told it's not the case, but maybe it is. Hi, Red I, King. I've, nice seen to a see few, you. I've seen a few people on Reddit saying, why did my empire collapse? I just got 60 slaves yes. out of nowhere. No, no. So I, the first <laughs> thing I did when I, got the, when I got the DLC, which was like Saturday before release, they gave it to me slightly early. Um, I did a playthrough. I did a playthrough, and I didn't take Nihilist Tech Acquisition. An AI Empire did it to me, and I was like, holy crap. And then the next thing was I got the Montu Admiral, and I was like, well, I'll invade a planet. And I just, just there was like 16 pops on the planet. I went, depopulate, depopulate. And suddenly I had 90 slaves that I didn't know what to do with. My food, I had no farmers. I'd gotten rid of all my farming districts, so food was suddenly like a you crisis. Should. Well, as you, as you should, but apparently not in this case. Slaves got to eat, you know. And they can work the farming jobs, thus, you know, it's a circle, they pay for themselves. There's nothing Another counted, reason it's why farmers. hives need paragon leaders. We, we need those biotrophy, we, oh, we need those livestock. Let's have a look at how Pax is doing now. Pax has done favored society, I assume, yeah, military build up. Okay. And Only still one really admiral in the council. Science. Yeah, 600 science a month. He's. What's Comrade's he catching up, but Comrade's always been known for really pushing the science on any build he does. Yeah. Pax is still keeping ahead of him in science, but Comrade is catching up. Pax hasn't switched over to Alloy, but Pax has made a massive consumer goods stockpile. And he's when he switches he over to Alloy... He can already switch to Alloys. He could, but he hasn't but, done yet. Yeah, but if you check with Momonga and Kiltanis, they already produce a lot of Alloys. Yeah, they're making 70 like months. I mean, he probably does need to start switching soon. Because Pax does not have, 
He only has one admiral on his council. His ruler isn't an admiral. His speaker of the parliament doesn't give him an, ad him an admiral. So he's only going to get one admiral type bonus there, which is, you know, kind of not great. Yeah, and he's not getting the free uh, consumer goods from the being in the Federation. No, no. Maybe he should join a Fed. Yeah, that's quite interesting. So uh, he, he is see. actually using all his edicts now, Manchu. He is running capacity mining yeah, and map to start. Okay, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's a lot of discounts. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Aiden has now rolled all four leaders which have either retired fleet officer or shipwright and he's going to have a fourth habitat in a few months 63 percent. so he's going to have it around year 20 or be online year 22 or something so he's going to get easily minus 90 percent ship build cost i don't see him having the economy to support it though you know Jern. like he's not yep. producing very much energy and he's not continuing yeah. to produce and much what, energy is he building up his trade habitat with merchants or what yeah. yes well, seven merchants, not that many. He hasn't put a merchant on his mining habitat, and he doesn't actually have an alloy habitat. He does need to, at also, some point, start making alloys. If you go into his uh, pub view on his planets, because he's running 13 pubs on each of those habitats, his uh, his pub growth is probably crashing. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, basically got no so pub big. growth. Oh, no, his capital's okay. Also, the yeah, What's interesting is that Listvar is nearby, but they do not cooperate. And Listvar could boost him and himself. Yeah, they boost and each other so much they if they would get into an benefit. alliance. But they don't want to. They don't want they to. Since, since we're talking a lot about Void Dwellers today, do you want to tell Chad a few tricks about how to fix pop growth on a Void Dweller? How to manage housing and stuff like that? Um, yeah, I guess we could. I, to be fair, let's get. I just want to look at for a moment. There's a lot of things to view. Sure, sure. Yeah, let's just, uh, well, let's get let's good let's put a pin in that and let's look at it in about a year. I just want to have a look at Comrade and how he's doing because he's grabbed Trappist. I want to look at his leaders now. So Comrade's got Comrade's got three Comrade's got three construction ship focused leaders. Yeah, Comrade's going for it. Comrade is definitely going for it. Trappist. He's built I a star base. Them yet, but he's probably he doesn't going need for to. It. He doesn't need to do it until year twenty five or tw no twenty three or something because yeah. it'll take him two and or three years. Terrible planets for him. Yeah, but it, just for the pop growth, he's going to spend a. Yeah. Bit of, a bit of a bit of food, a bit of alloys on it, you know. He will need to boost his food income, actually. I'm not sure he's got the food income to do it. Uh, usually, like, he, he's going up to nine star bases, so he'll make food that way, I think. But that won't be enough he's to making... boost his income. Because he's spending all of that on pops and jobs. And edicts. Yeah, but he'll just buy, I think. Wait, what edicts is he running? Oh, he must be running learning drone, learning campaign. Yes. Okay, so he could just turn off learning campaign oh, for a few yeah. months. Get that food, get that food income, and then jump back into it. Oh wow! Sorry, yeah. So, so let's, look like at, he, let's look at let's look at Void yeah. Dwellers. Um, do, do, do. Let's look at Kerner. Kerner's probably doing it, I would imagine. Right. This so it's an important thing to to keep in mind. Yeah. So Kerner here has a trade habitat, and has only got ten pops. So he's living one pop below the capacity level where it becomes a problem. And as soon as he gets to eleven which he probably he will do in a few months, he'll resettle he that pop. He on his other planet. You can check T1 where he has one pop too many. Yeah, so he's got one pop too many. So now he's getting a problem. So what he wants to do when he gets it, he's probably, well, no, he's built the extra, he's built the extra merchant job. So he's going to be stuck there. And an alternative to do it is to, instead of going for three trade habitats and one habitation district, you can go for two, two. You get so one merchant job less, but you can sustain up to, I think it's 14 pops on the planet. He's decided that the trade station T1, he's going to screw the pop growth and he's build, he's converting the habitation yeah. into the trade district, which a fair, a reasonable choice. He's, he'll eventually get another pop, probably from M1 to throw over there. He has C, uh, A1 up, which the is the correct way to do it. Yeah, he's got these... Uh, he's you got are, you either up. screw the pop growth completely or you make sure it's not screwed because it's so important to manage your pop growth on, on habitats because that is one of the biggest strengths of uh, Void Dwellers. They, they start with the planets, three they have three growth. times the pop growth. Yeah. They immediately, you do immediately need to upgrade your habitat central because that gives you extra housing. And as soon as you get to 10 pops, you suddenly get the negative from the logistic pop growth. But once you upgrade your habitat central control, you get extra housing. You then get back in the Goldilocks zone. Um, and, and basically, having. Disconnect. 
Oh, okay, having one or two, depending on what you're doing, I would sometimes go for two habitation districts on a trade uh, yeah, trade I, habitat, and that way yeah, you're going to guarantee the growth. Them. Yeah, exactly. Well, you, you don't necessarily want to have 14. You just want to guarantee that no matter what happens, you won't get this minus one and a half. Because having plus, yeah, but, plus I mean, you, one you is can have than... 14 before you get the negative modifier. Yes. I think. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, no, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So you lose one merchant job by doing it, but your pop growth is better. So it yes. can be hard to. Yeah. Sorry, no, go on. Sorry, you're going. Yeah, I was just. I was... It, it can be hard to handle early game. Another thing you can do on your capitals, because it's an upgraded uh, station, you can use some of the empty slots to build um, housing in. Yes, and uh, partly because you're a void one, and that is exactly what Kerner here has done to add nine housing, putting him at 32, even though he's not running a single habitation district. Yeah. I would actually argue, so he's, though... he's running low science for a Void Dweller. I like would most argue... Void Dwellers would be higher. I would argue it's probably better to have a Habitation District and a Research Lab than a, than a Luxury Residence if, amen, if amenities yeah. aren't a problem. Drop down one Researcher job, but overall get better housing, because at the moment he is actually running minus 0 0.66 pop growth. And if he swapped over to have... Uh, two habitation districts and two research labs, he'd still be at four amenities, still be good with amenities, but he would have an extra four housing, putting his planet cap at 36, meaning he would not be at a negative logistic pop growth, I'm pretty sure. I'm um, sorry, Svarath in chat said, looks like the DLC has had a massive impact on the meta as we expected. Yes, it has absolutely had a massive impact on the meta. We would normally not see Void Dwellers at this level of gameplay at all. Yeah, I think what, what's really going to surprise us is, is the fleet numbers we see year 30. Oh, yeah, it's going like, to be bigger than we've seen before. We were used to seeing, before. what, 20 to 30k. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking we're going to hit upwards of 50 to 100k. Yeah, I know so they nerfed some things here, but maybe not quite that high. In the, in, the, in the Void Dweller video I did where I showed off the discounts, that was my first test run. I didn't... I was just trying to see what it would go like, and... I managed to fling out, I think it was like 20k or 25k around year 31 or 32. And that was without optimizing anything. I had more alloys to build ships. I just, my economy wasn't ready. And that was like, like you know, just having a go. If you optimize the build, easy 35, 40k, easy. So Pax is still just pumping out consumer goods. I'm wondering when yeah. he's going to make the alloys swap. I well, maybe he's mistake. waiting. Maybe he's waiting to roll. He does have volatile moats. He doesn't have the upgrade. Oh, he's researching cruisers already. Yeah, Look he's doing this. cruisers year 18, which is year wildly 18, early. yes. And his, his tech level in the score screen is around 50% higher than the second highest, I think. This is even more insane given that cruisers are, have, are having 10 times less uh, weights before year 20. Yes. Yeah. Or maybe it's double less, I don't remember. I think it's, 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 yeah, it's either minus, it's minus 50% or minus like 90%. He swapped out, oh, he just, oh, what was that? He swapped out of cruises for a moment, that was weird. He had to think. Maybe just double checking what his other options mm. were, since he can't roll them in the next roll. Yes. Tango Yankee, how's Tango Yankee doing? Tango Yankee had a bit of a disconnection issue. This is another progenitor hive. Um, where is he over here? So next to Conrad, got two progenitor hives here. Let's look at Tango Yankee's leaders. Tango has one ship, right? Could buy another one, but hasn't. Doesn't have the uh, leader cap for it. Prosperity and is going to finish Supremacy early. Honestly, I, I actually think if you're going to run progenitor hive, you want to take aptitude second for that additional leader cap to get another leader. Because you can still finish Prosperity after taking Aptitude and taking the first the first pick on the left. You get more pool, more leader cap. Um, and also on top of that, why hasn't he gone for Transcendent Learning first? I mean, I, I can see, I see he's gone for Executive Vigor. Edict wise, he is Although running we... both mining and capacity, which I suppose is good, but yeah, I don't know. I just... Yeah. Uh, we talked about robot unity earlier. Try, try and checking out the uh, R's unity production right now. R's at 161. Each of, each of his biotropes are making 6.8 unity. That is probably because they're getting a bonus of 70% from the Empire, of which... And finding it's about the to finish, finding the voices, yeah. plus 40%, plus 20, plus 40% yeah. on the 20, which is 31. Because there's probably some other bonuses so as well. Unity. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he can use that much unity though, like, but he's almost 
Okay, he didn't finish the discovery. Never mind then. I thought he almost finished three trees already. No, but he's about to finish supremacy in a few months. In who about, would have in about thought a robot years. build was? Oh, I was about to say who would have thought robot build was the ultimate unity build, but then Cathanas is making 188. Oh, these pigs! These unity numbers are crazy. factions. 80 from factions. 114 from trade. 100 alloys per yeah. month at year 19. 145 minerals. 83 energy. And just chugging along over here. Chugga, chugga, chugga. I think the fact, like, 97 alloys per month is still a lot of... It's going to be interesting to see how high they push it. Because they used to push it to, like, 200, 250. They don't need to. I don't think they're going to... Yeah. I don't think they're going to go close to that anymore. And that means there's room for other stuff. Governor-wise, he's grabbed a shipwright. He's got his one shipwright that he'll put down on one of his systems. Um, maybe he'll grab a second shipwright just to get the minus 15% on two systems. Possibly. We'll have to see. Anger is casually sitting on five guaranteed habitables planet. Not guaranteed, but of his habitability type. And all of them are quite big, like 22 size, 23 size, 18 size. That's a good spawn. Momonga's doing similar, but slightly ahead on alloys, slightly behind on unity. If you yeah. see Momonga and and Giltanas both are making 650 science now, so they've caught up with Pax. Kerner yeah. with Void it Dwellers like is they're miles doing more behind. Or less the same builds. Yeah, Kerner with Void Dwellers is miles behind on 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 uh, on research with 350. Miss Nebulosity, who's running, uh, let's see, Prosperous Unification uh, Megacorp, is doing okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, quite let's have a look at this build then. So, uh, Death Cult, Masterful Craft. She's making Death 170 Cult. energy from her branch office, by the way. On who? She's got a... On, oh, um, on Momongus. Strong Lord, Momongus Capital, okay. Uh, so this is the problem as well. This election button... Wait, why does it cost zero? Oh, because I'm in, I'm in the... I yeah. think this costs zero because I'm in um, observer mode. It usually costs a few thousand, so Miss Nebulosity has to keep a few thousand unity to not spend on something else at this time. Otherwise, her main ruler could end up doing some other job and then some other screwy ends yeah, up as the main ruler job. Yeah, it can be quite disruptive. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, we've got mortal initiates on some of the worlds. Yeah, Miss Nebulosity must have been sacrificing pops here. Let's see. They don't have it active at the moment, but I think I saw earlier they did have the um, the sacrifice active. Where is it? Sacrifice bounty. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure it's worth it if you're not going clone. Honestly, I'm not sure it is. We'll have to see. Maybe not. Comrade has finished Favored Society, getting 20% resources from jobs on your capital. Favored Society is so broken. Oh. Yeah. You will be able to push more than 1k of he's, science. He's making 10 science of each category per brain drone. That's 30 science per brain drone. So he's making 820 science right now because his capital world is getting 24% and 20% as well. Let's look at these bonuses. This is just stupid. Right. Brain drones, bonuses. 10% from buildings, 10% from capital, 75% from empire, 6% from governor skill, 20% from favored society, 10% from stability, and 27 from research assistance. Because that. What's that, the empire bonus from? Is that the agenda as well? No, no, the agenda is something else. Empire bonus is going to be your your technology. So I'm going to look through techs here. 20%, yeah, so he's got 20% from nanomechanics. He's and probably. Okay. He's got. He's taken applied quantum physics twice, so he's getting 40% from the. Um, from to physics research. There might be a bug in our mod, because Pax just got the box trait on one of his leaders, which was removed from the game by mod. But isn't it only for hives that it's removed? No, it was removed for everyone. Oh no, Pax! Pax is about to get a and general as his chancellor it. because he's accepted a general on the council. Uh oh. Pax has a general as his counselor. It's the renowned Paragon Captain. Oh, he no. it's renowned. He got the renowned Paragon as his... Oh, no. It's giving him minus 20% empire size, but it's also giving him minus 5% happiness. Oof. 
Oh, so the box and trait is on the Bilks, the box trait is on the renowned paragon. That's why it's there. So it probably ha can't remove it from the renowned paragon. Oh, yep. That's all it is. But this is crap. What was his? He previously had a, a, a general, if I recall. Uh, no, a general, a governor, if I recall. I yeah, Sydney Beauclair here, who's giving charismatic and eye for talent. So this is going to hurt his unity. Oh no, he's still actually doing okay. I take it back. His unity's all right. Oh, because this is a level four counselor. Gotcha. Charlie has five leaders in his houses. That's interesting. Chatter asking. And he also why... has access to a mog uh, discount. Chatter asking leaders. about the box trade, what it is and why it was removed. So the box trade is logistic understanding, which gives you minus 5% ship upkeep and minus 10% army upkeep as a counselor. And that's at level one. It goes higher. And, uh, 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 uh Cyrex, that was removed because hives could stack it too much, right? I believe that was the case, yep. right? Yeah. Uh, that's correct. As a progenitor hive mind, well, personally, I was able to quite reliably stack minus 70% upkeep oh, before year 30. So that means that's that... That's including the agenda, right? Uh, that's with the agenda. Yeah. Uh, but you can, it, with the proper RNG on your side, you can get 90% at year 30. And after year 30, like in the mid game, you are pretty much guaranteed to have 90%, especially speaking if you of, have galactic ambitions. Speaking of discounts, uh, the Void Dweller we were looking at earlier, he's currently at 50% discounts and he hasn't finished military buildup yet. So he'll jump to 65% once that finishes. Kerner, or you mean Kerner, right? No, no, Aiden. Um, Aiden. Yeah, Kerner is. Uh, oh, wait a sec. Aiden had uh, a lot of. No, but Aiden has well. governors. Kerner well. doesn't have the governors. Kerner only has two oh, yeah. governors that give ship build discount. Yeah. But he's also had the yeah, issue it... that he's taken on a Paragon, and the Paragon is now running the country again. Oh. But this one is slightly better because it's an Admiral with the Strategist class, so that does give him the minus 5% oh. ship builds cost that he wants, and Navcap plus 5%, so it could have been a lot worse, to be honest. Has him. Um... Comrades settled the extra planets in the Trappist yet, by the way. Yeah, let's check on that. Comrade has not settled them. Has, has enough food. Has not built a colony ship. He has to build those colony ships already. Yeah, he needs to build them immediately. Because if he has he's just one it. shipyard. He has so, but I don't know. Yeah, he has three he's just missing out. Two discount uh, rulers. Maybe he's just waiting to do it later. Maybe he's going to fight the year year 30 fight. No, he just wants to play it fair. <laughs> because oh, really? if he wins, other players Boo. will accuse him for abusing. Boo. Yes. All right, everyone. Go over to Comrade's chat and tell him tell him to, to use the 90% discount. Dude. He's live on Dude. Twitch right now. Go immediately. Go right. Follow that link, ladies and gentlemen. Tell Comrade that he should colonize Trappist. Use 90% discount. We want to see it. We want to slacking. See yeah, tell him to stop slacking. Give us a 90% discount. I'll go tell him as well. <laughs> Everyone in chat's like, use the 90% discount. Stop slacking. Wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at Comrade's stream. Oh, it's so beautiful. Go on, chat, quick, go over there, go over there, it's beautiful. Thank you very much, Canadian very Laughter, Dalek Sack, um, Maniac Rex, uh, Hat Green 29. Go and tell Comrade to colonize Trappist. So we were looking at Ragoons earlier, like, I mean, I, his numbers don't look very good, do they? Let's have a look at Ragoons, let's see his numbers. Wow, so I don't place at all. Look at my Mongus alloys and look at the seven alloys. What else. the heck? Does he have an alloy world? Can yes. he even Mama spend that many alloys? <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, uh, one of the problems seen in recent patches is that you simply cannot spend those that amount of alloys. You're just building ships, and you keep getting more and more alloys than you can possibly spend in the same amount of time. He's currently running in only thirty percent ship build discount as well. He hasn't, yeah. he hasn't even Among taken, it? no, no, oh, no, no, Ragoon. He hasn't oh, even taken 
um, supremacy. Mm, I mean, he's going to do something crazy. I well, assume. nobody has seen him yet. That's a good point. He doesn't have any, he's got uh, no any contacts, which is interesting. Yes. Maybe he's going to try Inga and take Higgins up... He's next to him six... who cannot attack him so, into the R50. 600 research, 150 unity. He actually, if he doesn't get attacked, his economy is doing fantastically from a research and unity point of view. The only thing he's missing right now is, is alloys and, you know, the will to fight, um, which is important. An, an interesting thing about Comrade, like Comrade has the most research per month right now, but he only just finished Destroyers. He hasn't rolled the uh, cruisers yet. Whereas Pax, I think he, you said he finished cruisers, right? But Comrade's time, just yeah, doing alloy, alloy nano separators for level two. Yeah. Like, he's, but and Pax he's got is also 10%. making 140 alloys per month. Oh. The difference is that he's running a larger consumer good deficit because he's not in a trade fed. Yes. If he was in a trade fed, that'd be instantly done. And he's swapped out of parliamentary system and into his lentils. Sorry, I take that back. He's not running oh, trade, oh. though. Even in a trade fed, he'd only make, he'd only make around 10 extra consumer yeah. goods. Guys, look at look at Tenger's signs. Even comrades. Nine fifty eight. No, no, no. Enger, nine fifty eight. Yes. Mm. He's progenitor to hive. That's a lot. Has done favor yeah, society to on hives. the capital. And he's almost finished cruisers. And his he has brain level drones two are making alloy ten. Nano plans. He has. He's got what's this? He's got fourteen, eighteen. He's got thirty two. Uh, 32 different uh, researchers and the dimensional portal researcher across his planets. 32 researchers. That's like more again, pops than the starting planet. Before this patch, 130 alloys would not have been enough, but now it is. It, which is why they can pump out this extra research. He's got modular ship well, schematics. Anger has modular ship schematics on the expansion node. So that's a minus 5% discount there to, to upkeep. He's got a Marta Logistician for minus 7.5% ship upkeep twice. So that's minus 15. Uh, let's see what else. Not Otherwise, not that much in the council. What about the leaders? Does have the ship construction governor leader, but what is their current discount at? Their current discount is only 25%. They don't have the leader down. Where, where is the leader? Uh, that's a rule Zero. break. Uh, where? No, no, no. There is a rule break. Lord Zaro is using. Military backup. Have to ask him. He can't switch oh, from robot, it, though, can he? Oh, robot, you're not allowed to do that. Yeah, uh, he cannot. Can he switch? He can't switch it, though, can you? You can't switch it once you start. Uh, yeah, yeah, he can. Yeah, he, he can, can he, switch he agenda. He just lose the progress. Ah, it's yes, okay, yeah, okay. We'll go tell him. Impenetrable border. Now, that actually, I think could be quite a good one if you're planning on going defensive. Massively reduce your war exhaustion gain combined with the already reduced parts of Hive. You can sit there and let people fight you for a long time. I think one of the things I heard that could be a problem is it's very hard to defend these days because people can just dump enough ground forces with the, the uh, devastation trade on them and you just kill the pups on the planet using ground forces instead of bombardment. Because they they wreck the planet when they're fighting. The longer the fight yeah. takes, the more no, your planet absolutely. gets destroyed. I mean, the thing is, so nihilistic bombardment and the planet invasion stuff means that ground combat now kills people just upright, which I actually think is a good thing. I think killing people. So the, yes, you can kill someone with that, but you can't get their stuff, which is you know the main benefit from invading someone is actually getting their pops. Killing them is yeah. a kind of a secondary concern. Planet is okay, population is everything. So Leafsfire started building up ships already, he has 5.5k, I'm wondering why. Maybe he, maybe he's he's not uh, shift queuing. Oh, it's only year 24, wait a minute, what? Yeah, exactly. But his military build up will be done in 87 months, ooh, 87 months is past year 30 though, so he won't finish military build up in time. He's making 111 alloys. He's running out of minerals. He's about to go zero minerals. Yeah. He's not running the mineral uh, export, right? Well, we're we about to find out. So he's making, like, I th actually think uh, Sarek needs to know this. He he's making 20 base. He has no minerals from jobs. So he's just doing the, the shortest trick. Yeah, and cutting investments. That's an exploit. He doesn't have any mineral production anywhere. 
And I'll just go tell Sarek. Oh, he's buying. Right no, back. he's buying though. I think he's buying from the market. He's now gone down to minus yeah, eighteen. Yeah, but this n without the situation. Oh no! Now he's in mineral shortages. Wait, let me check. I'll just ask Cyrix to keep an eye on him. Yeah, he's doing cut investment. He's doing it. He's doing yeah. it right now. That, ladies and gentlemen, is bloody illegal. Yep. We think what? What's happened? Lease fire is built. He has no mineral production on any planet, and he is currently in a mineral shortage and cutting investment. Wait a sec. Wait a sec. List fire, right? Yeah, right now. Yes. He's I'm, just I'm, started I building mine. I myself, so I don't know if that's the exploit. He, yeah, that's this he is was it. running a negative 160. Uh, active effect. Artisan upkeep. Yes, that's a rule break. I have to talk to him. He needs to go back to maintain current expenditures. Yeah, the problem is list fire never answers in the Discord. Pause the game. Um, I'll be right back. Pause the game. You could uh, you could pause the game. Uh, he's gone hunting now. He's gone hunting. I'm My sure chat saying out. order. My chat saying order. No, why is it not working? Wait. Order! 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 You're a very jocular fellow, but you're a little overexcitable today. Calm. I just want everyone to see order. Order. It, it's important to know, you know, if you're out of order. Exactly. He's also cutting investment on consumer goods shortages, meaning he's reducing his research output by 50%. But actually, that's not going to be that big a deal, I don't, I suspect. Let's see. So that minus 50%. Oh, no, it is. It is actually hurting him quite a lot. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I think the trick is that you can, like, write at a very fine line with it. And it's more efficient than producing your minerals yourself. And and the same with consumer goods, possibly. Like, he's running out of consumer goods here. Yes, yeah, Sarix did mention that this was the first time that um, Lee Fire was running this particular build, so he might just be crashing his economy. It, it isn't necessarily something he did on purpose, but I think He's saying in chat that he doesn't agree with the interpretation because this situation reduces output too, but he will try. I mean, the thing is, he needs to have uh, mineral well, production. It, it, it gives you more than takes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's still a zero research resource economy. Yep. It's similar to how um, if you were running a cordyceptic on robots back in the days, sure, uh, you'd reduce your output, but you're still making free alloys. Hmm. That was a juicy he, exploit, by the his way. His economy is not so great, honestly. Like, he's in deficit on consumer goods. Yeah. His alloys are non-existent. He has a lot of units, though, stockpiled. I don't know why he's doing that. Uh, well, so, back on top of the uh, to launch the agenda. Kerner is doing really a really greedy stuff here. Kerner has built three ha uh, three more habitats. Yeah, and, mm. not... and he's only making thirty three alloys per month. They probably well, don't realize they have Mamonka next to, to them. Yeah, <laughs> and Giltanas is also next to least Fire. They are dead. And, and maybe he doesn't fear Chango Yankee because he sees both Chango and Comrade. He knows there's two hives adjacent there. So they won't Giltanis fight. is building fleets already. At least fire was uh, as well. I think that's what was crashing his economy. Wow, this is doing that as well. Right? So even though Common has the most science of anyone right now, I don't think he's rolled cruisers yet. Yeah, he's upgrading torpedoes at the moment instead. That's a bit... Oh no, he's I got cruisers. He, he Common has he cruisers. He's completed it, look. No, he doesn't. Yeah, he does. He does. Oh, he, he does. just did. Sorry, I clicked on the wrong one. And he's researching torpedoes tier two. Yeah, just start that, building that is ships important. soon. Because yeah, if, if you get cruisers too late, you can't start building them. Yeah, and also he didn't settle on Trappist. He's not yeah. Doing it. All right, chat. Go and tell co co tell Karma Boo settle Trappist. Yeah, we want to see like at least fifty k from him. Otherwise, he's a slacker. Yeah, yeah. tell him he needs to go settle uh, Trappist uh, immediately. No. His streams. I just posted his stream no, in the I chat. No, I want Tangayanki to settle there. So, Sarek, do you, what, what's the highest fleet number, year 30, we're going to see? What do you think? Uh, well, you can reliably get around 40k, so I guess the highest should be around 50k. I've seen Engad doing that, so... Uh, but it was, like, without limits to progenitor highs. Okay. 
Okay, I don't think I've seen Anger in uh, the Monster Multiplayer Madness before. Is he a new player on ISS, or does he just not play other uh, places? Uh, he's an NA player, so uh, he's uh, like he's playing in ISS quite regularly, and okay. he's one of the top players at the moment. But he wasn't player in EU time zone before that. I mean, so, we, so we he's not a MMM, right, Monty? Giltanus here is going for a missile torpedo with swarm of missile cruisers, relatively fast, a lot of armor. Uh, he hasn't got level 3 thrusters though, but he does have afterburners. 179 speed isn't very much. He has also gone picket combat computer. Now, I might actually say that might be a mistake. It might have been better to go artillery or possibly carrier. But if he doesn't have the speed, then definitely not. Mm. There is one reasoning behind that. Uh, you go for picket because you already... Uh, uh, Against cruisers, you already have torpedoes, and picket you're taken basically if you're facing corvettes. It gives you like more chances against the corvettes. Yeah, because wh while the, sh the missiles has 100% accuracy, they don't have that good tracking. Yep. And also 100% accuracy doesn't guarantee you to hit the ship, because uh, corvettes have some evasion which negates accuracy of uh, weapons. I mean, I also guess, like, Year 30 War is also really dependent on what do you roll. Like, you, you don't necessarily have your pick up the litter. You need to be a bit lucky. Mm, I would argue. Obviously, if you want to go for launchers, uh, you need luck on your side, because you have to research uh, three tier three technologies in a row. Uh, but other than that, your typical designs are either plasma or... Uh, Disruptors or missiles and torpedoes. Have you you can also the... go for a mix of railguns and plasma, and you can get those reliably. If you, if you see the layout on uh, Mamunga's ships, he's gone pure plasma. I'm wondering Mamunga? if that's because he didn't no, roll anything else. No, he's not. He's got plasma missile. I'm looking at Mamunga right now. Oh, it just, you just he, updated the sign. Yeah, he's I, I updated. Updated. he's got plasma before. missile. I'm surprised he's kept the plasma around, to be honest. Um, maybe yeah. he's expecting not to come up against many shields. So he's like, well, I'll hedge my bets. Plasma in case I have too much armor to chew through. Um, or if he comes up... Like, so if he comes he's up running more shields than... Uh, he's running more shields than Gathanas is. Comrade ships, though. Comrade is currently running missile torpedo as well. Yeah, that seems to be the general trend at yeah, this point like in the game. The... So I, did a t like, I know there's a bug where if you have missiles and torpedoes oh. on the same ship, the torpedoes fire at the range of the missiles oh. on the first volley. Anger is running tier 2 disruptors, and his ships are at 176, and he is a hive mind. They're going to be fast. I I think Anger is going to yes, explode yes, into this galaxy. Yeah. Anger's currently building his ships up. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. What's his upkeep reduction, uh, build reduction down to? Uh, he is pending... Uh, you can check on the... Only 20%. Uh, That's still something. That's still something. So I think one of the most interesting wars early is going to be uh, Comrade and Tango. Because it's two hives next to each other. <laughs> and then R and uh, Zero next to each other. Um, check out Trappist. It's been renamed. Uh, Comrade says, no, 90% discounts are wrong and I won't use it. I went into his chat and I, <laughs> sa I sent a message saying, let the dark side flow through you. Settle Trappist. Embrace the broken mechanics. I mean, Arky it's one. his own fault if he dies now, right? Yeah, if he Chad dies and he, and, 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 and he didn't take Trappist, we all know why. We all know why. So have he, start he has started building his cruisers and I'm not sure if Tango has started his build up yet. Tango oh, has he's still spinning destroyers. Not Tango's going to be running destroyers. He Tango rolled cruisers, but not in time to start building them. Tango so is he's building have destroyers against cruisers. Tango is building ninety destroyers, though. Yeah, but it's dis it's uh, it's disruptor, like level one disruptor destroyers against. I, I guess the um, the torpedoes on the cruisers won't be that good against the destroyers. The torpedoes won't be good, and also. Okay, so these cruisers are going to be slower than comrades. Than comrades, sorry, these destroyers will be slower than comrades. But comrade has put picket combat computer on. So even though he has the range of advantage of the missile, he, he won't use it. But he'll have the tracking to cancel the evasion. Yeah, but the these destroyers. disruptors are going to chew through those hulls. 
Like, they're going to be causing disengagement really fast. I'm actually, if they're an equivalent fleet power, Comrade loses. If Comrade, Comrade needs to have a much higher, oh, or a reasonably larger fleet power to beat these disruptors. So, R is running pure laser cruisers, and I'm thinking he's going to be fighting against Zero. I'm wondering where Zero is running. Lot Zero, sorry. He's only got Disruptor uh, Corvettes, uh, Destroyers as well, sorry. Lasers are quite good against Corvettes. Not as Disruptors, but still okay. Ooh, Kelsius fleets are starting to uh, spawn. Sorry, I've just been delivered. I've just been delivered. To, I decided to... Because um, uh, I never get to eat usually during these things. So I decided to have some soup. That way I can just drink it in the background. Wow, nice. Mm. Delicious. I have to confess, before the game, I have ordered McDonald's, and oh, I feel dumber nice. than usual. Did it arrive? Have you already <laughs> had the McDonald's? <laughs> Sorry, what? Have you had the McDonald's already? Yes, yes. Mm. Oh, delicious. So we're starting to see some fleets pop out from people. I'm guessing those are the people who don't manage their queues perfectly. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess think it's so. very close to your 30. So it Paxton is your 29. To grab out, and he's moving. He's moving towards uh, Oregano, I think. Oregano has 15k, Pax has 20k. Anger doesn't really have many ships, actually, here. Anger's got a oh, couple still Pax queued has up. has so many cruisers queued up still. Seriously? I think he has 10, 10 cruisers more queued up on top of the 20k he already has. I wish somebody attacked Rigun at this point, because he's making 1,000 signs, but no ships. <laughs> he hasn't met anyone. He's just yeah. hiding inside a nebula. He's not trying to meet anyone. Yeah, cheeky Rigun. He's doing it's uh, kind of the, like um, Akon's strategy in the Murderfest final. Yeah, where I he remember just him. all game. Let's see. And then Did came Kerner... out with the largest fleet in the galaxy. Kerner has not managed to get to minus 90%. For ship for ship reduction. On the other hand, How neither much did he has hit? Aiden. A Kerner Aiden has, has minus seventy five percent. Yeah, it's just like that, which is quite a lot different to minus ninety. And uh, sixty five is pretty decent, but yeah, it's not ninety. Kerner has thirty, fifty, sixty five. Yep, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. And, and Aiden has. Let's check this. No, sorry, I take it back. Aiden is a. 30, 50, 60, 70, 85. So Aiden's missing that last 5%, but 85 is still, um, you know, you're still at, what? what's that? Uh, Kerne, around by the seven way, ships extra? Kerne got migration packs up to get some more rolls, but hadn't been lucky enough. I think migration packs is big. Yeah, yeah. If you're a Xenophon, you don't get already at 30k. Either. True. But I don't think people are going Xenophob and Void Dwellers because they get incubators these days. Exactly, so you, yeah, you don't have need it. Pretty decent pop growth. Oh, R is on Pax's border. Pax has 30k. Really? No, I think he's on Pax. the border with a Zero. Oh, Z uh, Zara, Zara, Zara sorry, is yeah. the robot. Yeah. He's yes, going to go get himself probably. a ring world, I think. But who is. He hasn't Pax claimed seems... anything yet. I wonder whom will attack Pax. Because. He has Art next to him and another robot, but he cannot do nothing about Have you robots, seen our ships though? Art them. only has tier 2 lasers. Tier 2 laser yeah. cruisers. Yeah. Indeed. So okay, there is a war. Art, Art has attacked uh, the different, uh, different pack, Lord Zaira and Kelsier. Oh, and combined, like, Kelsier has 17k. Yeah, yeah. But between them, they've got it. But Kelsey is out of position and currently isn't moving fleets up. Kelsey is running. And Kelsey is running. No, no. Kelsey is running full missile afterburners with tier two thrusters. That's 286 speed. On the other hand, our ships. Is a defendant. Wow. There, 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 there is a big, uh, big federation fight. Our, our ships are only 99 speed. Snap. One second. Kelsey's ships here are just going to kite our ships to death. They have advanced, they've got artillery combat computers, advanced artillery combat computers, so they're going to be at max range. They are three and a half times as fast as his cruisers, and they've got all swarmer and antimatter missiles. That's just going to be a, like, 
that, that Oz ships is going to melt. The question is if Oz is going to lose any of his ships, though, because it is cruisers. Hit and run, yes. Is hit he and running no retreat or hit and run? Days. Well, I can't imagine he's running no retreat. I actually heard the hit and run. Oh, I, he is running hit and run. But if you have enough ship discounts, you can actually afford to run no retreat these days because you just mm. rebuild the ships you lose. If you can build them fast enough. So before 3.5, no retreat was very much the meta. It was very strong. Pax declared uh, war on at least in the mid late game. And yeah, Pax has gone to grab. He's gone. You've split my systems up. Give them back, which uh, <laughs> is pretty reasonable. And so Oregano the right now doesn't is, have it. Yeah, it's Pax, isn't it? Gathans no. is 35k. Potato Shagger has 35 as well. Not at war. Yeah. Giltanus, uh, Giltanus and Stronglog are at war with Least Fire and the Fed. Yeah, okay. So it's the two Feds are having oh. a having a battle. And and Comrade is attacking um, uh, Tango Yankee, and I don't think Tango has anywhere near what he needs. Kangra, yeah. Comrade has Kangra's 30k. 30. Tango has seven. Ooh, seven. Did you just say seven? 17, sorry, 17. 17, okay. What's Comrade's and ships looking like? Comrade has cruisers, and uh, Tango has destroyers. And I think Tango's is out of position. Kangra, Tango have does have ready. those disruptors, though. Let's. I want to take a look at um, policy-wise. Tango's running hit yeah, and run. Yeah, the numbers just aren't there. I don't know. He might be able to, he might be able to repeatedly uh, push Comrade back a bit. Maybe. I don't think so, but let's see. I think the issue is he's going to lose more ships every battle. That's why cruisers are so nice against destroyers. Comrade's not lost melting. anything. Nope, nothing. Oh wow, I saw a lot of 30, yeah, 34 ships, ships to lost. zero. Yeah, that's that's GG there. Comrade's won, and he didn't even get the ninety percent discount. Boo! Anger's gone to war <laughs> with twenty five k. Anger is going to punch. Spicy in the face. Spicy's defended by Secure, though. Ooh, okay. We see the first battle with R yet. It looks like he's lost a lot of fleet power. He's only at 15k now, so he must have lost something. Uh, R, no, he's, he's been fighting stations, possibly. And he hasn't seen those other ships coming in yet. Where are those other ships? They went back home? Wait a minute, No, I think what? he fought them, probably. Like, no, no, they've gone back uh, home. So... They've gone back home to upgrade. What on earth? What are they upgrading into? Hmm. So one thing, because he's not thrusters. allowed to go prosperous oh. unification. So I think what's going on here is that um, Tomato wants or Kelsia wants to... Well, Kelsia doesn't realize how slow our ships are. And Kelsia's like, I don't want to... You know, I need the tier three to guarantee the win here. Um, and Kelsia hasn't even gone into the, the, the Civic that gives him movement speed. There, there is a problem FAs. for Kelsia and Zyra. Potato Shaga is also attacking them. Oh. Oh, sugar. And Potato Shag has a crap load of fleets. Yeah, and Kel he's, he's got the second biggest fleet in the, our third we biggest go. right now. Yeah, look, Mamonga and Giltanas, they have exactly 45k fleets. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. Our RKY in my chat has called the Giltanas Here we go. 55 Here we go. Here we go. I think we're going to see lasers versus kiting. Can the 18k actually stand up? I'm not sure they're fast enough. He might have needed the upgrade here. But they are doing a good job. He's only lost a couple of ships so far. Now he's retreated. Yeah. Again, it's just cruisers are just so strong. They have Angry so much is attacking the defense pact as well. Spy, spicy and Sakuya. Sakuya is not. Uh, he's a new player, but Sakuya is quite decent. No. And spicy is not so sure about him. Yeah, Spicy was one of the Void Dwellers, right? No, that's the Progenitor Hive, sorry. And he has got Substrate and Avans. Yeah, Gitanus and Strongblog are kicking the other Federation's kick. butt. How is, um... Yeah. How's, our other, how's Aiden doing? Aiden's managed to get 15k worth of ships out, but that's not really great. And his economy is suffering. He's not at war with anyone. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> Look at this fire. <laughs> you still have the chance to go back, Giltanus. Well, oh, he, he hit ninety percent the discount, by the way, Aiden. I don't know if you mentioned that before. Oh, uh, he was on eighty-five. He hit ninety now. Fair. I think so. But he just doesn't have the. His combat cost eleven. Each destroyer is. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's eighty-five. It's just his corvettes are ninety percent. Hmm. 
Oh, because you've got the technology. The, the destroyer tech or the cruiser tech would get you that last little bit. Yeah. But still, 49. What is least by doing? Always been destroyed. But you make everything sink so clear now. I will remember that. Oh, my lord. Come on, people. It's a game. Uh, boxes get to. Uh, yeah, I like the solution to oregano, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, it's yeah. actually it's box uh, spunking oregano because oregano is. And they're losing simulator. a lot of ships, though. Oh no, mind. It was just in battle. He still has twenty-eight k. Oregano has no fleet. Yeah. Oh, Sixteen wow. mil capacity. Oh He's wow. Dead. You don't mess with packs. Uh, that's a risk of taking total war civic. So packs went to war with oregano because oregano took total war. Yep. Previously, we were allowing German simulators to attack at year 30 because they were less potent than other Total Wars. Mm -hmm. But now, German simulators are very strong in their economy. They are actually on par with Rogue Servitors. Huh. Really? I didn't they, know they, that. They, they actually, in some aspects, are even stronger than Rogue Servitors. Ragoons are still hiding in the corner. Were... What the f- yeah. I wish uh during the simulators weren't at total war because they are quite a decent civic to play it's just so, i'm wondering what made driven the simulator like pub over the top um is well it the, is it the unity of, uh, agenda -based? not just unity all of the gestalts were buffed and also the cybernetic if you look at cybernetics traits uh leader traits they have 33% more science, if I recall correctly. Uh, I mean, producing... So... Uh, wait a sec, need to find it. He has only robots for some reason. He has no cybernetic leaders, he's not so lucky. But cybernetic leaders uh, have a 33% uh, science buff. So... Uh, uh, did yep. you see? Sorry, I don't know. So Momonga reformed into a corporate empire four years ago. He's taken oh, wow. naval contractors, nice. letter of mark, and ruthless competition. He's going to start making mercenaries. Yeah, no, not just no. mercenaries. No, no, he no, also he has three nap. admirals. Look, look, look at his government. He has three admirals, and one of them is a uh, renowned paragon. But that renowned um, paragon gives you to nothing to do with government. That renowned paragon is actually kind of crap. Um, he's still an admiral. Well, he's level four, but he, he's not. He's not. He's not got any traits that give you benefits right now. Mm. And he won't roll any because That's he's true. because he's the tactician veteran class. So unless you go for the council of veteran class, you don't tend to roll council of traits as you level up until much later on. Rungbrock just hit fifty-six k fleets. Well, yeah. He... I would not want to be that federation there fighting. No, no, not at all. Here's 33. The only limit right now for him is build speed. Well, also he's running close to he's running close to an energy issue. Um, yep, that's true. He's selling 20 alloys per month right now. Without that, he'd be at zero energy income. So he can't really build much more without hurting his economy too much. An important thing to remember also, because of military buildup being so strong, once that runs out, it can crash your economy real hard, and you Wait don't want to build any Pax more ships. Pax is losing. He is? Is he in the second war? His ships are missing. No, no. He's in the first war. Doppler had no ships, but Pax lost some sort of fight somewhere. And now Doppler's but coming forward with like 3k no and taking all his stuff. But the Oregano is... doesn't really have any fleets left. No, but they're fight they're flying through. What the hell happened? Did he maybe MIA his fleets to get them back home? I, I don't think so. They're in his capital right now and being sent to repair, I think. No, they're not in his capital. And they're, uh, they're really low on capital. health. He needs to repair oh. them rather than fight with them. Look at them. These, these ships will just die if they fight again. But there's like 4k coming in, there's almost nothing from Oregano. But Oregano might actually win this if Pax can't repair. Oh, but there's no way Oregano can push with that number of ships, can they? I don't know. 
and we'll have to see. Chat are telling me Comrade's doing it. What's Comrade doing, chat? I think he's even oh, just winning the war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How's Ars War going? Yeah, uh, a like... route, a complete route, on, from both sides, pretty much. Had um, had Potato Shaker not got involved, R would have been toast. But because Potato Shaker got yeah. involved, R's like you know sailing through. But Zero is running around with like some small fleets, trying to keep uh, Pack from fully occupying him. They are also an issue that Arch and Potato Shaga are basically splitting the same federation, not federation, but defensive packs, and they cannot settle. Uh, they cannot achieve war goal or settle status quo because of that. Uh, if you want to achieve war goal or settle status quo, you need to possess all of the enemy's territories, but you just simply can't because uh, another player controls. Then they'll have to fight each other. <laughs> those yeah. systems. Yes, you have to fight each other. That's such a. And it looks like. An mechanic, by yeah, it looks like uh, Potato Shaga has a bit better economy than Arg. Yeah. So he has upper hand. And also, R is pushing the war exhaustion up quite high, so he will, like, he won't get the wars won, but he'll get the elimination bonus if he kills uh, zero, he and um, he'll mm -hmm. get the territory. It's actually why I I don't know if it's a viable strategy anymore. But in the past, if you saw you were about to get eliminated by someone like they had way bigger fleets, sometimes you just want to. Mamong like is about to fight fleet. the combined fleets of Kerner and Lee's Fire, but yeah, no, Lee's Fire ran away! Uh-oh. Lee's Fire didn't join the combat at the right time, so Kerner got smacked in the face. Ooh, that's rough. They're now in together, but between them they don't have enough, no way. And, yeah, uh, Surprisingly, I'm... they do quite similar damage to each other. 30k against 30k. But whole points it always comes to the, yeah, double whole the whole points, points on one side. Yeah, uh, actually, the federation is doing more damage to Mamonka right now. Gilthanus has has uh, invaded every single system of Leech Fire's empire. Oh wow! Looks like Mamonka is going to lose that engagement. Yeah, they're. Think? They're slowly sending in reinforcements. Wait a minute. Oof. Wait a minute. Yeah. He needs to disengage. Mamonga is uh, going to lose his ships otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Mamonga disengaged. What is Least Fire running? Least Fire must be running anti missile. I want to have a look at that. Where is Least Fire? But Least Fire's economy must be crashing. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, his benefit. No, uh, his economy will be good because he's uh, must be running on trade. He's fine. Yes. Yeah, but, uh, but uh, the like there is an issue in the game that yeah, if you're uh, playing with branch offices and enemy concrete those planets with branch offices, they still give you energy credits for those. Yeah, so, so he's making seven hundred energy per month from branch offices. Least five yeah. running point defense and flak battery in between them on all of his ships, and between them they are actually I think held off. Um, that's that's why we saw a massive reduction in the damage output of strong Volk's fleets of uh, Momonga's fleets, I should say. But Momonga didn't lose any of his naval capacity. He's still at 300, and so he's, he's good. He just needs uh, a bit of help from Giltanus. And Kern is running point defense as well. So the between back. them, they really just went, no, no missiles, no thank you. But no, well, he's saying Kern he needs help. Yeah, are starting to, you know, get there. I also wonder if uh, List Fire went for Psionic Ascension, because destroyers are not so bad if you get Psionics and you get some evasion on them. Uh, especially if enemy is running plasma and stuff, which is which has low tracking. Uh, Where's this fire? No, he has no psionics. But still, destroyers are quite decent when enemy has plasma, and plasma is quite meta right now. But the question is, can strong block defend against the Federation then? Because right now, once they hit 100% war exhaustion, Least Fire is going to be eliminated. Every single one of his systems is taken by Gilthanus. And once Gilthanus is done doing that, oh, he actually can't get his fleet there. He doesn't have open borders with Aiden. 
Mm. Uh, there is a wormhole, uh, which this fire used before. Shroud tunnel. Uh, uh, shroud, yeah, shroud tunnel. Wait, who are they declaring exactly. war on? They're declaring war on Aiden. So that's to get the open borders, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, also, probably. might as well just go and take him. Yeah. And, and they've claimed his capital. Yeah, Aiden doesn't have enough, yeah, he doesn't have enough fleets. No. So even even with the discounts, he can't pump out enough ships fast enough and sustain His economy's them. falling apart, though. That's the main issue. Yeah. Anger's really rocking ahead here. 40k comfortably and just completely winning this war against Spicy. It's just Spicy also, another player. He has attacked two players. Somehow, Aragona is still alive. Oh, interesting thing. Tango Yankee is showing like the real spirit of the ISS games. He's lost <laughs> this game. Like He's going to get eliminated. But every single one of his planets is a fortress world. Every single building on them is a stronghold. Oh, well, a, a fortress. No, a stronghold, sorry. Yeah, he's, well, he's way this... down there. Yeah. But he is this not change going to quietly bombardment. into the night. But you know, it doesn't end with a bang, but a whimper. Wait, what? Um, so on some of his worlds, they're not being bombarded, but for some reason, he's got no garrison? I'm confused why this is. What? Maybe it's because he's missing the offspring drone. No. Oh, Pumrat's having a really nasty buck right now, if you look in the chat. He has so many debris products, projects, I think, that he can't do uh, Flesh is Weak, even though he unlocked it. It's not in the situation lock. That's interesting. No, he can't. He has to wait for someone to come down. That's so stupid. Maybe. I'm hoping it didn't get forced out permanently. That would be rough. These guys are yelling heal, heal in the chat. Oh, heal, heal. If the heal. <laughs> Carnian list fire and gauge in Momonga. Well, it's just Carnian yeah. this time. This fire winning. is lagging behind. They're, they're, he's winning though, look at this. You mean Smaller fleets, but he Momonga? seems to be winning. No. Oh, that's true. No, that's I'm not true. sure. I'm not sure who I'm not sure which side's winning actually. They do much more damage. Yeah, look, no, no, look, How? look, Kearney's winning. How are they winning? Oh, and oh, then at least why I came in. Because his yeah, ships... Momonga is in troubles. So Kearney's ships have got, um, he's got double point defense. And oh, then he's and, running and fighters, and, and he's running strike craft and, um, yeah. and lasers or something else. Uh, I can check. So he's hard countering the missiles. Exactly. Or at least the torpedoes. He's, well, he's hard countering st some of it, um, and the torpedoes are slow and relatively easy to hit with point defense. So the missiles are coming through, but not the torpedoes all the time. The question is if Gilthanus can get there in time. He's moving through anger right now, I think. Oh, he's taking out anger. On the way, or Aiden, sorry, on the way. Yeah, he's just gonna have a quick, quick go at it. Whoa, that's I mean, some bright he probably lights. had to. That was a 30k fleet, so he couldn't leave 30k yeah. behind him. But Aiden's running. Oh no, no, there's just not enough. There's not enough. Re uh, I think Aiden might be running no retreat. Yeah. I think Aiden went no retreat. I mean, if you're defending in your capital system, you might as well. No, he's on rapid he's on deployment. Rapid he deployment. didn't change it. Oh, no. I'm not sure how experienced Aiden is, but some of the choices made today, I suspect... Made some minor mistakes. One, yeah, there's some minor mistakes, but in a lobby like this, the minor mistakes cost you the game because they add up. They're cumulative. So, R currently occupies all of... Um... Lord Saro's territory, and he's moving into Kelsey's territory. He's but, yeah, also I almost at 100% exhaustion, so yeah, so he's just he gonna might be up. able to settle status quo, but he needs to win some ground wars for that. Indeed, he has claimed the whole ring world is under his control. And he's caught the fine little annoyance fleet flying around his territory. It looks yeah, like. Aiden's about to disappear in a puff of smoke. Yeah, he isn't because Giltanus didn't claim him fully. 
No, he's he's only he's, he's only, he has claimed him fully because he's claimed his capital and he's a void dweller. That's full claims. Ah, oh, true, true, true. You're you're correct. But you know, conquering void dweller is such a oh, it's a pain in the butt. Yeah, I mean, what's the point? Yes. But still going to get rid of the player. <laughs> it's a capital. Yes, it's a capital, and we count points for that. And yeah. for elimination as well. It doesn't look like he's built up armies on his his stations actually. So, Goons is now making uh, still 1.2k research. Let's see what he's researching these days. What's he up to? Tier two strike craft, genetic engineering, research complexity. I mean, he's not he's not really doing that much. Oh, he's just hiding. Yeah. Eh. Like, Somehow, Mamonga managed to fend off those uh, fleets. Wait a minute, Ragoon is going for military build-up. He'll be done in a few years. I think. I think he's. I think he's going to try go for a year fifty attack, or year forty-five. Maybe. No, this one K alloy stockpiled. <laughs> no, well, no, I, I don't think so. I think he's going to try and push his alloy income, and if he builds, I don't know, five or six K mm. alloys, if he can get the reductions together, because maybe he's what going for those reductions. Just, um, the quest for the toxic yeah. gods, like giving good stuff. He's at stage three right now. So I think it's stage four or five that gives you the alloy output across all your worlds. Um, but at the end of every stage, it gives you more research or unity on your knights. So right now the knights are making 11 research each plus six unity. I, I mean, I still think it's a little too memey, but I don't know. <laughs> it's your goons. He's trying to What meme. can I say? Sultanus is moving towards Mamanga. Well, it looks like Pax is settling up his wall with the Regano. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's taking all the space he's now. Ah, oh, there are a couple of armies. Ah, uh, he is not. Uh, no, there is not enough armies, I guess, to conquer before year 50, before year 40. Why does he need to do it before year oh, 50? Um... Yeah, because it's a milestone. For the points. Um. Yeah, I mean, like, how, how it's called? Basically, the year when we calculate yeah. capital points. Yeah. Well, he's got 75 and, and 23 and another 46 coming in. How many armies are there on the capital? I'm guessing thousands. Yeah, a thousand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the same with Chango Yankee. Chango Yankee has two plans. One is being about it down, but another one has almost 2,000 to garrison on it. I don't so, understand. Is attacking I don't understand Vandas. why or why. Um, Pax doesn't fill his council up. He keeps leaving some of the council slots empty. Like, they get extra XP for nothing and bonuses. I don't know why you wouldn't put someone there. Even if they're not great, just put anyone in for the bonus XP. He's got a general. What the heck? And Pax also reformed. I don't know if you noticed. He's now relentless industrialists. Yeah, he did that around year 2025, I think. He swapped out a parliamentary system and into Redemptus. Mamonga has 65. Ego Hugon's defending from uh, Sakuya as well. Wow, interesting. I guess he decided what? to feed the devotees. the third war. He had to get through Stardust. Oh, cool. yes. So now there's a war with Stardust as well. I'll kill all of you. Watch. It looks like Strongbrog actually managed to defend and is keeping hold of his territory. Yeah, but he's been struggling a bit. He's on the offensive again. Oh, I think it's because Leasefire's fleets have been knocked about so much. Leasefire simply doesn't have enough fleets left to, uh, to, to yeah. really actually be a bother anymore. And the Federation was relying on destroyers against cruisers. So yeah, that's while not gonna work. Among was losing the fights, he wasn't losing ships. If you look at the war exhaustion, they lost 21 ships and the Federation lost 99 ships. So There's they, no way the Fed aren't 100% war exhaustion ships. soon. Yeah, they're going to get pieced out in like a year or so. If they want to piece them out. Yes. Oh, yes. Who just died? Kazan. Uh, Kazan is Aiden, I believe. No, it's not Aiden. No. Uh, spicy. Oh, wait. Is yes, spicy, Anger just right? ate spicy. Right. Anger's looking cool. pretty strong. He's right at the top of the list here, making yeah. as much research as Ragoon. 
quite high level quest, leaders now. Like we've got level seven leaders and level eight, level seven and eight nodes at year thirty-eight, which is, I guess normal so for like progenitors. He's, he's moving his ships back home to upgrade. It looks like, but it could be interesting mm -hmm. if he starts attacking into Gilthanas while they're still in the war with the Federation. That might be a problem. Oh, yeah, because Gilthanas, there's no one home, and when the Braves are away, yeah. uh oh. Is that a reference? There is like, also Igor Hugon who is uh, devouring Swarm next to his doors. Someone in chat says how long the uh, session will be. Target. The session's meant to be what, five or six hours of, uh, of gameplay to year 100, right? Yes, yeah. that's about five hours. And we're, we're doing about, we're doing about te 10 years every 30 minutes, roughly. Slightly faster. So it's probably going to be about five hours, yeah. Strong clock's up to 67k fleet. So yes, he did lose some fleet battles, but he's winning the war. Did he change his designs at all? Oh, 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 wait a sec. Stardust, Stardust is out of sync. sync. You go, Hugon's out of sync, Stardust Fish. out of sync. I mean, they're dying, uh, why can't we just keep them? progress. Uh, oh, Ego, Hugon's uh, not, that's the devouring Wait story. a sec, I, I need to... Oh, you run down yeah, and fix out. it. No worries, no worries, <laughs> we'll be here. Even if it, if we need to rehost it, probably not a problem. No, These I assume not. do it a lot. Chicken Star, Ch Chicken Taster ninety nine says, "How does Stellaris multiplayer even work? Do people ever play complete games like all the way to the end year? Well, which end year? The when when I started Stellaris, there yeah. was no end year, and now there's like a you can set an end year, but it's still still all arbitrary. It's twenty five hundred. No, it's not." It's 2600, or it's 2800, or it's 3000, or it's never. Like, the, there is no actual end year. It depends what you want. I mean, so when I play my games by myself, single player, I'll generally put the end year at 2400, mid game at year 50, that's, that's a good balance as well. and late game at year 2300. Um, it, it really depends on what you want out of the game, I mm. think. I, I, I've done a few games, I think, to year 2500 on this larger side galaxy. And I just got so bored. Like at some point, when, when you're managing 60 or 70 planets and some fallen empire awakens and start attacking you 20 different places at once, like it, it gets real rough. It's not just that. There's also the fact, and uh, you can't you can't you can't forget about the fact that um, there's more the, the way the game works now. There's more pops in the galaxy. There's more pops, and yes. more importantly than that, though, there's more ships than ever before. And the get this game was built in 2016. And when it first came out, an empire would have like 10 battleships and they would be a powerhouse. Nowadays, an empire has 10 hundred battleships kind of thing, you know, like a thousand battleships you could do in the really late game per empire. And at that point, um, it just like it's it, there's so many things that they've done things to optimize this. So, for example, there was an issue they found out that fighter rendering was causing lag in the late game because there were so many ships with so many fighters and rendering like, I don't know how many fighters each ship renders, probably like 10 or 20, somewhere in that range, and maybe it's eight, I can't recall. It used to say the number, but I forget. But um, yeah. rendering each of those fighters for each ship um, times, you know, four or five fleets in the same battle meant that the game would noticeably lag during those points with these massive, massive levels of, of stuff. So the longer you play the game, the 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 less able it is to perform, and it can be really annoying um, at that point. So I don't like so, playing too late in. Yeah, I, th I think the big change that was made before 3.4, they had an issue with lag, where every time a, a, pop, a pop on a planet had to move into a new job, it did full calculations oh, on crikey. what pop was the most efficient here, which is also why Xeno compatibility was known to lag the game because you had a hundred different races sometimes so it have to yeah. do a hundred calculations a massive I think thank it was you 3. to 3.4 yeah that was um that was uh oh i've forgotten his name sorry i know the developer that fixed that give me a second uh, i'm back so uh two people are out of sync and there is a weird bug right now in the game when buildings start randomly disappear when somebody is out of sync oh, uh that's bad we, yes uh, we, we have allowed no, we will not, because Stardust is effectively dead, right? But Iga has... Higgins isn't, right? Iga Higgins isn't yet. Um, 
I, uh, I have suggested uh, Stardust to leave without no penalties. Like, she even will have uh, her leather points uh, refunded because when you participate in our uh, games, you're basically paying leather points uh, to intern, uh, like an interest, entrance cost. And I refund those in those situations, but she said she wants to play. Fair enough. Uh, okay, so Anger has eliminated Spicy Dits. Recorded, nice. And Iga Higgin, the same. It doesn't look like uh, Comrade is gonna eliminate Tango before year 40. Tango is holding on with his Fortress Worlds. Yeah. Or did he actually leave? I think Tang Tango left the game. Okay, every single one of yes, his he'll, he'll have left the out. game. Yeah. So it's uh, whenever Comrade chooses to, to click on the end war, he can end the war. He can force war goals at any time. Like I said, he's only at 95% occupation. Oh, there's two systems he hasn't taken yet. I'm guessing he's trying to... Yeah, he's trying to take those now. Offer. And then he'll I remember want to end the war before year 40. The dev we can thank for fixing that AI logic is Offer. He he was a, he is a Paradox Arctic, for however long Paradox Arctic is okay. still there. Um, yeah, that was a huge change. Yeah. Because it, it meant that population... I, I think most of the population lag went away. Is it yeah. limited to one pop change per month or something like that? And also, it actually optimized it. So the fewer species you have, the more optimized it is. So it, there is there was a, there is a literal gameplay reason to purge all non non native life from a planet. <laughs> just just throwing that out there. Like your game will go faster if all of your planets have only the same type of pop on them. No migration, only order. You know, oh. I'm not saying that Stellaris pushes you into certain play styles, but. Um, uh -huh, xenophobia is great. Anyway, um, let's uh, let's keep yeah, okay. imagine so, playing Overton. <laughs> your Thanos' yeah. fleets have now reached uh, Mamanga space. Oh, yes. I don't they... know if Mamanga actually where? needs the help though. Oh yeah. Oh, that yeah, was that was. Went Fabianski. Yeah, that was. Uh, that was uh, the the and he did it right before year forty as well. Thirty-nine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And R, R has uh, Cero on 100% war exhaustion as well. So I'm wondering if he gets to check the capital before year 40 or so not. So someone in chat is mentioning, why don't they make ship cost, ships cost 10 times as much but be 10 times as powerful? You know, I actually think that could help. Not even make them 10 it's times as powerful. It's what they're trying to do in the GPO. Yes. Yeah, they're trying to mod that into the GPO, and I actually think that would, first off, really help with lag. But second off, it would make fleets more impactful again. Like, you wouldn't have... 50 fleets flying around with only three admirals between them. Now that's really yeah. important with the leader cap. You would instead have, you know, 300 naval capacity across your entire empire in the late game. That would be big. That would be lots. You know, that would be like 10 battleships, 30 cruisers, 50 destroyers, and I don't know, God knows how many corvettes. So let's keep an eye on R because in, in 10 days, I think he can peace out Lord Sorrow. Oh, and Mr. Freak's in the chat. Wants to Sorry, I didn't notice. I yeah. saw you said hi, Yern. <laughs> hi, Freak. Freaks the is I, our I, lovely I, community I, ambassador I, yes, for Solaris. has left the game. Who? I, I looked for Mr. Freak in the chat when um, when Comrade had the bug with the with the situation lock. I don't know if he got to see it or not. <laughs> oh, yeah, Freak, we did see. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's the see if he still has it. Bug of No, he's the project oh, he has come back now. now. Yeah, yeah, it's come back. It's come back. That was a cute little bug. Not game breaking, but. Surely annoying. There yeah, goes Lord Saro. Yeah, year and he 39. Got him there year goes Tomato. Yeah, that's the two of them. Yeah, because suddenly their, their empire wasn't split anymore, so he had full occupation on, on what was left. Because yeah. his ally got eliminated. So that's three eliminations before year 40. That's big for the points, right, Tarex? Yeah. That's, that's true. Oh, I'll run you through uh, the bug was actually freak. It was really quite simple. So, Comrade had so many debris that the flesh is weak. He couldn't scroll down any further, and the flesh is weak was off screen when he got it. So he had to wait for the debris to go away. It was really, really odd. I've never seen it before. He, to be fair, he killed a lot of stuff to do it. He had like 40 or 50 debris, debris projects. It was, yeah. Woof. Anger is really building up here as well. 50k just sat on the edge of Least Fire Space. If he goes to war with Giltanus, he could liberate Least Fire and crush Giltanus while Giltanus' fleets are miles out of position. The issue is, can um, he, can he beat, beat both of them? Yeah. Monta, can you hear us? Yeah. 
Yes. Uh, I, we lost your connection for a bit, and it, now you're logging. Are you did? Uh, oh, you're yeah, like, just it seems recovered. It, oh, I, don't know what, recovered. I think that was an in-game thing. My stream didn't go down, and I still heard you okay. guys. Yeah. yeah, you did cut out for like a second. Oh, and then you weird. Back. That was very strange. Well, my apologies. I might drop street, street, screen my mm -hmm. screen for a little bit then. Yeah, if we're having right. issues. And you can just look in-game. I think we'll be fine now. So, the interesting wars right now, there's still the large federation war, which seems to be winning. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait. Potato Shaga and Ark are attacking KT. Yes, they are. Uh, oh, yes, they are. And yeah, they're gonna, an, they're, gonna, they're, they're, they're attacking together. One. Comrades should have built yeah. that 90%. He hasn't got the fleets to actually repel them. But it's close. No. Conrad has 58. Potato Shagger just by themselves What's has the 60. What's the ship design of Potato? And R has 34. Uh, they're so not Potato Potatoes. Potato Shagger's uh, running... Missiles, torpedoes, but he has point defense. Yeah. Conrad's running missiles, but no point defense. Yeah. Are uh, 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 ships there yet, or are they still out of position? Oh, no, they're there No, they're too. together. Yeah, okay. They are together. This is Comrade going down. Oh, wait, no, no. Following Ars not following. Though. He doesn't know. He forgot about the bug. He said his ships are following. Yeah. He's forgotten. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And now he has to do it again. This bug should hopefully be fixed. Yeah, it's going to be fixed in the next hot patch. Yeah, yeah apparently. I've, I've seen. Yeah. As well as the, the star. Comrade like should we, jump in we're now. We're running a map for the... He should take them now. Yeah. While they're separated. So he has, settled, he has settled the plans, by the way, for 90%. He just isn't using it, I think. Yeah, 90% times 2, 90% times 3. No, he must be. He He's must turning be. all his fronts. I think the issue is actually his economy is crashing because he took over Tango Yankee and he hasn't uh, disbanded the star bases yet. Yeah, he he's getting food. he's getting minus 45, 60, 70 percent ship build reduction at the moment. So he's able to pump out, destroy. It's, it's just the speed he can't put them out how fast is enough. Star bases, I guess 160 energy for star bases. You know, we've right been now. counting how much the ship build reduction is. It actually says on the star base, and I've just been an idiot and not yep. noticed. I've been counting it manually. I did not notice that reduction. Comrade mm. looks like he's losing. But then R has gone in by himself. No, they're together. Sorry, no, they're together. And yeah, the comrade loses. Yeah, yeah and they won. Yeah, they won. Yeah, yeah, it was... Uh... But comrade didn't lose many ships there. 14 oh, ships, and he 14? killed only three, though. Ooh. Yeah. Again, that's the point defense for you, I think. Yeah. Oh, and they've got 1.5k to fight these battles. Yeah, it's not going to go that well. They're so fast. Oof. I don't think his ships are going to retreat in time. Like, they're going to be in his capital to catch the, the ships when they reappear. He won't Oof. have time to repair. Yeah, yeah, this is going to be nasty. This is a knockout blow for Comrade. If only he the question used is, the, if he the reduction. Set where he set the retreat path to. Let's have a look. If they're, if they're retreating to his capital, he's going to struggle. It's a button now, isn't it? I forget where the button is. Uh... Uh, ah, here, current home base, Tango, Tango Yankee Station. He yeah, set the home base so to Tango it, Yankee yeah. Station. That is, that's that's good play. That's what we expect from like Comrade. That. That's the kind of thing we expect from Comrade. Good play. So he'll have a chance to both probably retrofit his ships if he wants. And his economy is doing absolutely fine. Yeah. He's building more ships. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna take this. He's gonna knuckle fight this. Yeah, they're sending one fleet. Are sending one fleet down to have a fight. Yeah, I think they think they're gonna, gonna catch comrades. Yeah, I think they think they're gonna catch comrade his capital, and then when he doesn't show up, they're gonna be able to confuse. Ah, is a robot. He doesn't have all the speed bonuses. No. Nope. So nope. ours cruisers are speed 141. Have they seen him? Comrades just came. They've back. They've seen comrade. They both seen comrade has returned. Yeah. Comrade has the returned. Comrade's ships are almost twice as fast. So he might be able to catch the the 10k that's on his own. The issue, the issue I'm is that careful. he has picket combat computers. So yes, it brings him in range with the armored yeah. torpedoes, but if he went if he has the speed bonus, if he went um uh, artillery, he would get unless it bugs out, which it sometimes does, granted, but he yeah. would get a massive range advantage. He'd be able to hold off the enemy going, "No, no, I'll just pepper from afar." Snap is going whelp in chat. I'm assuming that's because Momonga's. Yeah, Momonga's completely, yeah. you know, ruffle stomped her up north and is now ruffle stomping Kerner. Yeah. 
Ukraine just never re really got the economy up and running. Anger's at war. That is the issue. Anger's gone to war. Oh no, wait, what? Oh, we were paused. Oh, uh, right. with blank. Play at left. I see. No, it's fine. Okay. I thought I had a bug for a second. I was like, oh no, I've desync. Um, oh, another player. That that's that's the end of uh, Aiden. Yeah, and Anger, um, Anger's gone to war with the uh, Eagle Hugen. The Devouring Swarm. Ditlev, yeah, no. Anger's going to war with Ditlev. 1 3 2 3. Wait, oh. They have the same icon, that's why. They do. They do. That's annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ditlev's on the west. Yeah. They have the same, exactly the same symbol. Oh, no, no, the background is with slightly different. Color. Slightly different background, though. There's a slight difference. I mean, our old eyes can't see that. <laughs> We're not gamers enough for that. No, I see that. There's a color difference on the background. It's like it got a greeny thing on it. Sure, there is. I can I can see that difference. Yeah, one's Completely. just black and the other's got black and green. Wait a sec. Oh yeah, yeah, I see. Gultanus has an issue. Can't close what window? Oh, he's probably he has some pop up he can't close. Most likely. Uh -oh. That's an annoying bug. Someone in chat's like, it's co-op desyncs bleeding into normal games. I'm not sure it is, you know. How's Ragoons getting on? Very good question. Still fleetless, making seven alloys per month. He's not playing a war game. He's playing a science game. He's going to ascend into the shroud before anyone else even gets to fight him. And then he'll take all his pops with him, probably. All 94 of them. I mean, it's Ragoons, you never know. Okay, he so has... Gilpans has an issue. Yeah. Uh, his vi uh, window opened uh, from, like, uh, some AI telling him, but he cannot close the window. Like, the button is just gray, he cannot click yeah. it. Yeah. So it blocks his screen. Why doesn't he try uh, leaving and rejoining? Uh, that's a... That, yeah, that, that's a possible solution, but also, shouldn't those window close uh been closed on their own after some time mm, uh, depends what the pop-up is they can it, out. She, yeah. she, he should put a it, screenshot of the pop-up which one is it no it's like a diplomacy window maybe it'll time out oh is it does, like does it have a in... is it like a, like a uh, wait a sec I, I will give you a screenshot uh, i will give you a screenshot just, just dm me I'll put it in the IRL event, 8 May 21st. Where should I look for the screenshot? Ah, I've got to get it here. Uh-oh, uh, no. I have message. No, that won't go away. That's a surrender. So the AI has popped up surrendering, and he won't be able to click it because that's not a message that goes away. That's a notification. And uh, both Mamonga and Giltana say there might be a decent if they rejoin with that stuff open. Yeah. If they, if, uh, if they, if, do they both have I the think... same problem? Yes, they both have the same problem because they are both in the same federation. I mean, there's only 18 players here. We can do a rehost. It shouldn't be a problem. Well, uh, we could start I guess by we should trying. We first. should start trying to a hot join, and if that fails, then rehost from the yes. save. Yes. Yeah. Uh, to rejoin. Don't unpause. I will tell them. This is one of the challenges with their multiplayer. What, desyncs and shenanigans? Yeah, and, and when a bug appears, if it's a game breaking bug, you can't just reload the game. Oh, you mean if they reload in and they still have the same issue? Ooh. No, so no, I, but I, I meant uh, you can't just if you if it was a single player you just oh, well save the game restart Stellaris and it's fixed. Wait, did it's a not bunch of players easy. leaving? Ditlev left. Why did Ditlev leave? 
maybe because he's been... Oh, he's dead. Like, he's shown his thing over. Yeah, yeah, fair, fair. It looks like the surrender went through now, because Stardust has the same color as Gilthanas. I or love the level of fear. Oh, they left, so they're... Oh, yeah, no mind. I love the level of fear desync's calls. Like, comrades here going, looks like we now have to purge desync players immediately. It's kind of like, you know, it's like a like having a host in a little pogrom because you've got desyncers. It's like, you've desynced! Die! Get out! Yeah. Never come back! It's like... The, the fear around it, because no one knows quite how it works, and sometimes nothing happens. A desync will be like kind of fine, then they'll leave and it won't spread. But other times, one player desyncs, and then the desync spreads to all the other players, and then the whole game is corrupted and no one can play again. And yeah, it's just funny. It's like funny the level the of. The final fear. episode of Timelines. That was sad. Why? What do you mean? Which episode? The, the final um, episode of Timelines where we split the empires and the Ragoons got desynced. Oh, and we yeah. couldn't resync him. Well, it's because well, he was he joined as what was an AI empire that had never been a player empire, and it just didn't it didn't carry over. I don't think. Yeah, it just didn't work. But it, it is weird though. Like you would think from a rehost, like okay, we reset the problem. There should be no more problems. But there is something like in the save still that's causing the desync because mm. when you we were testing the um, the co-op mode. It could go quite far until the first desync, and then after the first desync, it would desync every time we rehosted. We seem to be going okay. They say there's an alert, but there's an alert, but don't, don't press anything. Someone in chat is saying, every time I hear of desync issues, I think about this story I heard from EVE Online, where someone set off a Titan's weapon against a metric ton of ships, and the server crashed. Oh, because it was like an area of effect weapon and it had to like work out what the what it would do to everybody. That must have been back in the early days of Eve, because Eve can handle some of those battles. It slows time down to do it, but wow. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of players all in the same state game state. There is a fight, uh Potato against KT. And KT seems losing it. Yeah, KT is out. Oof. Only he got. He hasn't really both. lost his ship's lead. But they, he they didn't still, lose. Yeah. Retreating. Yes. And both sides he's are getting quite a bit of war he's exhaustion. He's losing more though. The issue is he's still losing more. And he doesn't have. He's the... still retreating back to Tango Yanko space. Yeah, probably. I think he has the armies now to defend. If only he'd get a fortress on Alloys Alpha over here. Does he not have fortress tech? He's only just taken defend ground defensive planning, so he doesn't have fortress tech, so he can't turn Alloys Alpha into a fortress world. Because if he could do that, yeah. then he'd actually have a he safe spot to hide behind. I'm afraid uh, about Bax, he's heart stuck right now. Uh, po try pause pausing and unpausing, maybe. Oh, God damn, what's happening? He, like, no, he's, 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 he's caught up again. Oh, he's lost connection entirely. Yeah, he's not in the game anymore. Uh, he'll have to hot join. Are we reaching a point where we might just want to rehost? That's another, yeah, there's another good point as well. Because we the, the problems are historically going to escalate, and a rehost should take no more than five minutes. If eh, people are ready. A rehost takes at least 15. Come on, Jan. don't Let's not be too optimistic. No, no. Lie to when, when I do a when I do a rehost, I yell at people until they behave. <laughs> I I I was never in the army, but you know I go drill drill sergeant when there's a rehost, <laughs> and I shame people who are not ready for the rehost. Whoever's not ping the empire is gonna get an earful. I tell you. Yes, yeah, Sequoia is saying resync button, please. <laughs> <laughs> that would be very nice if you could, that would if you save could just problem. do a, a full... Uh, all right. It's up to you, Saris. You, you decide if you want to do it or not. How the hell did Least Fire end up with Alpha Centauri down next to Pax? What the hell is going on here? Wait, what? Least Fire has traded a system with Pax, so he'll stay alive even if he dies. But how did he trade a system? Don't you need borders to do that? No, you just need a claim. So Least Fire probably oh. spent a thousand, somewhere near a thousand um, influence to claim one system to trade it with Pax, so he'll stay alive. Or with a Regano, maybe. 
or with oregano before oregano left. I think left. that was one of the systems. Yeah. That's that's a bit cheesy. <laughs> that's very cheesy. Yeah, because the planet he got was was being devastated, so he was at war with the system. Oh no, oregano's system still here. World. Oregano's still here. Yeah, because he had fortress everywhere. Okay, we're rehosting. He's hanging uh, on. Yes, we yeah. decided. Yeah. At this point, we just risking. We more. might as well. It shouldn't take long. Everyone into the same voice channel and then uh, scream at them until they're in the game again. Take everyone in in one batch. Don't do smaller batches. Twenty players is too many. Yeah, let's go into game chat one. Drag everyone into the chat and then uh, get this done in five minutes. Uh, if you have an admin role, Monto, please can you do that because I'm hosting. I don't have. An, I don't think I've got an admin role. Let me see. Man, no, I don't okay. have an admin role. I have not the power, but to be fair, there's just our anger, oregano, and potato shagger that needs to come up into game room one. Otherwise, everyone is in there already. Oh shoot! <laughs> I did the wrong thing. I actually hosted a new instead of hosted, uh, loading the game. Wait a sec. Yearn's dragging them all up now. We'll, we'll all go into game chat one. Oh, right. I, uh, yeah, you must ask Cyrax, but in my opinion it's allowed, since your fleet is not uh, flying, it's stuck in a combat, so enemy can catch up. So once the... The only thing that is profound about retreating is walking a system. Uh, sorry, can I t I, I, that's important. I need an advice. Uh, we should host from the, like, uh, autosave or from the when people actually... You should, host from, no, uh, you should make a manual save. After everyone is synced. Uh, just check oh, the last auto save, that should work. Last yeah, auto save is fine. Auto save is usually better. Last auto save, okay. Yeah, alright. What's the net? Unless the auto save is only like a few days old, it can be a problem, but yeah, generally auto save to work. Okay, I have hosted. Uh, you should be able to find and uh, find the game. Is it the same password? Which the we same won't password, say out loud yes. On the internet. Yep. I'm getting smarter, see? I oh, the that's how the people join? That's hilarious. No, no, I didn't no, start. Not today. Is, not I didn't today. Done that once or twice. Yeah, I did it once or twice. Okay, uh, first Bashin. Uh, first Bashin, if you are trying to connect right now, they will, you will not be able to. Uh, so just wait, please. The, the whole small batch thing is a myth. It doesn't help. Everyone in one batch. The main risk of it is that sometimes you won't have a loading and then you just try again. But one patch is always what you want to do. Yeah, because there is a high chance someone will pause once they're in the game. Or they yeah, or start taking actions and stuff like that. People mm. just can't control their fingers. Just do two patches, not more than two. It's yeah. Just... Alright. We have six people in this one. Okay. But so just next one will... everyone else is... Yeah. Yep. Cool. We'll do. Let us know when we can uh, start attempting. Yes, yeah, just in, uh, just in case you are able to see the game in the browser, right? We can see yes, it. Yes, we can see it. Yes, yes we are. Yes, yes. Okay, cool. And it's saying currently processing other hot joiners. Yes. So whoever's got in now, remember you have to pick your empire, so don't go AFK until you're fully in the game. I'm assuming Comrade is... Uh, uh, up. First by Shin, uh, so we are able. Remember, whoever got in, do not take any actions until everyone is inside. Just don't touch your mouse. So there were, I think, 17 players left, right? Uh, counting packs who disconnected. And then uh, the two, uh, the three ops. So you should have around, what, 16 more people now? And what happened to Pax? Is he coming back? Yes, he has crashed and he is in the game already, I believe. Yes, he is. Okay. How many people do you have in the list right now? Uh, nine. Should be more. So I'm just going to wrap. Uh, Nep, are you hot joining? I'm already in. Perfect. Ah, are you good? I'm in. I'm Anger? And Ego Hugen? Kerne, Leastfire, Montu, Oregano, Pax, Potato, Sakaya, Singularity, Ragoons, and Stardust. 
I'm My comrade there. isn't here. Okay. Um, chat, He's can you go call there. comrade on his uh, his chat? So we're missing comrade. We're missing potato shaka. Is anyone else not trying to hot join right now? What do you mean? I to? see twelve people. Actually, less now. So potato, are you having any issues? It just says requesting hot join. Cyrax, you should make a. Okay, ping if it's for saying all requesting hot join, this is in waiting for the hosting player to accept. Yes. Good. Then you are in currently. Cyrax, so... you, you should make a ping on the event, like uh, to ping everyone. So some people are muted, deafened, or away. It's only comrade that's muted, so everyone else should be here. Yeah. Can anyone ping a comrade on his stream? I already did. Oh, on the stream? Uh, I didn't do it on the stream. I did it in his yeah, DMs. As, as long as he's getting some message yeah. that he has to hot join. This is why rule one of hot joining is get everyone into one channel, get everyone unmuted, and start yelling at them until they join. BFK. She so said you had 12 people right now, and you had six people in before. Yes, comrade joined. Okay. So I'm in requesting the join. That should uh, be everyone then? I'm letting uh, just a sec, 5, 10, 13 people in. That's We right. already have I six, including, no, seven including me. Yeah, so that's 23. Right, we have three ops. And also four right, yeah. four people have been eliminated, so... If you yeah. have 23 in game and four eliminated, that's about it. You should be able to see it on the Observer outline as soon as we hit start. We can see if anyone is still an AI Empire. Yeah, that's correct. Sorry guys, I was stepping away. I hope he was not waiting for me. Uh, as long as you're joining the game at the moment, we're not waiting yeah. for you. I, I mean, He's I on the game. just came, came back to the screen of picking up Empire. So chat, did anyone time us? How fast are we doing the hot join? Is, am, am I right or is Muncho right? We can't have Muncho being right, okay? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean you can't have? Sounds very final. But, but no one likes streamers, Manchu. You're the oh. enemy, right? Oh. Oh, my enemy chat was talking about. Oh, we'll jump back up to the, the channel, the. Whatchamacallit? The sure, Kajiga. I'll jump back up as well. Yeah. So, my chat was talking about passwords. Yep. Somebody in chat said if you put your password into into the chat here um, for anything, like your bank password or your, your YouTube password, it comes up as just stars. So, I, I shared the fact that I actually save my passwords in a different location, but I did give the wrong link. Sorry, chat. I put the right link in um, just just a few moments later. Oh, I, I'm, my, I just wrote my password. It didn't get uh, censored. Sorry, there's the... Uh, and I also did the link wrong again. I apologize. There it is. Actually, a clickable one. <laughs> oh, yours didn't get censored. Oh, darn it. Well, that's why I wouldn't... I save my passwords here in this link that I just posted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a beautiful link, by the way. What, the bureaucracy satisfaction survey? Yes. I do like Monto his gluteus maximus tastes delicious. Oh lord. Dramatic says you're adorable. This is why I sub. No, no, no. It's it's a, just also if you want to fill in if you've had a good time in the bureaucracy, do fill in that survey. It's a fantastic survey. Yeah, have you followed that survey yet to fill it in? Sure, yeah, sure. I filled it in for you. Okay. So Premium Forge and uh, Institute of Araman is not in the game right now, but I'm assuming that's because they left. The Institute was the bear trap who left at the start of the game. Yeah. And the other guys, the one Angus, is, is yeah. Completely irrelevant. Shadow Ninja, 69,000. How's, how's it going? Yeah, it's going pretty good. It's going pretty good. Hello. Uh, get, uh, I need a double check. So, yeah, it's only Ditlev isn't in, and he's fully occupied by uh, Anger. And then yeah. uh, bear, bear Trap, the guy who disconnected at the start of the game. So I think everyone is here now. Yeah. We yeah. have 17 player countries. Yeah, yeah, and the two ones that have always been the ones are the bonds. Wani. And now we just, you know, don't ever talk about these things again. If we don't talk about them, we can't jinx them. Oh, damn, I just talked about them. Don't say the D word. 
Damn it. Or the S word. There are no sinks. There are no D sinks in Basing Say. There are no D sinks anywhere. In Basing Say. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, my poor brain. Acrobone, you know we love it. Oh, Seppuku look, uh, Seppuku's looking pretty good right about now, you know. Anyway, let's see how the war's going. Uh, Giltanus... You're the one who invited me on here. Yeah, yeah, you're right. People make mistakes. I agree. So, so the Comrade's War, fleets. how is it going? Well, I'm actually looking at Comrade's losing that. Yeah. Stronglog's fleets, he's still got those Tier 2 missiles and a tiny bit of plasma, right? Whereas, Kerner here has 30k, so half the fleet power, but has point defense with kinetic plasma and strike craft. I don't think the strike craft is going to be very useful, to be honest, uh, but... Huh? Can you check the Oregano's system, Alpha Centauri? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not Oregano's, it's Least Fire's. <laughs> yeah, why well, it belongs to him. <laughs> Least Fire bought uh, it from him, I yeah, assume. Yeah, probably bought it, yeah. Oregano's still in the yeah. game as well, so... Like, clearly so one person Pax sold it to the Pax other. Actually, was bombarding Alpha Centauri. Like, that's why there's high um, devastation on it. So I'm assuming Least Fire claimed it, and then they traded it to, you know, mess stuff up. Meaning... Can you trade if you are in active war? Because I, I'm not sure if you can trade whereas you have in a, a war. You can trade with someone you're not at war with, though, can't you? I I'm don't think you can trade a, a system Honestly, that's fully so occupied, many mechanics in this but game. it might be that if it's only partially occupied, you can trade it. I mean, you can sell pops on the slave market if you, uh, even if the world is occupied. So if somebody takes your planets, you can go, screw this, and you can sell every single pop on the occupied worlds on the slave market. Uh, Monto? Yep. Mm, never mind. What? They had a, bit of, uh, a little luck, but it stabilized. By the way, even though R doesn't have the biggest fleet, he has the most pups in the game right now. His economy should be booming in 10 years' time. Freak right, said he wrote a, a huge robot. description of desyncs slash how multiplayer works, but then he sent it to Comrade's stream instead of this one. Oh, <laughs> right, I'll go to Comrade's stream and find out what it says. Give me a moment. <clears throat> oh, no, no, nothing. I followed my, I had my, I had my own link on the, uh, my clipboard and I accidentally put that in. Did you just Luck rig roll yourself? No, but, I, no I, I don't even know what that is. Luckily, I have YouTube muted right now, so nothing played. Um, otherwise, I would have demonetized myself. A much greater crime. Right, I'm connecting to the chat. Scrolling otherwise, up. feel free to DM it to me, Mr. Freak, on Discord, and I can read it out. I'll read it aloud. While, uh, wait, is this the beginning? It does not seem that co-op desyncs are affecting regular multiplayer since the systems are different. While I admit to not fully understanding this, but from my understanding, Stellaris multiplayer works this like this. Stellaris uses a lockstep simulation for multiplayer, meaning that when you give an instruction, that instruction is passed to the host and executed independently on all the other machines. Then the game will compare the outcomes. If the outcomes are different, there is a desync. Then the next tick will start and this will repeat. This means that even random events, AI roles, random events, and everything needs to have the exact same outcome on every machine in order not to desync. That's a very complicated way to do it. Okay. Um, this also factors into why things go wonky when you keep playing a desync, since the factors that go into generating the RNG numbers are then different. Things will get progressively more different between a desync client and the host as the game goes on. As for a resync button, I'm told that this that it's a lot more work adding a resync button than it is to just crush all the desyncs. Even though it seems like, from the perspective of someone who doesn't know the code, it should be easy to just add a resync button. It, it actually is a ton of work and has a lot of potential to introduce other issues. Not saying that it will never happen, but this is what I was told when I asked about adding a resync button. Interesting. They, there you have it, chat. That's... So TLDR, TLDR, no, uh, don't have. <laughs> yes, you have to kick uh, if anyone desyncs. Julian Tumat, welcome oh, oh, as Comrade, a new member. Comrade is striking back. Comrade just called Arc's feed out. Really? 
he's, he, yeah, he, he's MIA our fleets. And he has 67k. Chasing... Oh, yeah. comrades. Never punch him count back. our comrade. What's he in a, he's in a food shortage, but he doesn't care because he's a, he's a hive and he's like, okay, I'll take the pop growth penalty. Yeah. So what? Does he have armies? I mean, it's probably not helping him that he's, you know, fortune out of six on his starbase capacity. But I guess he needs yeah. the food more than he needs the energy. Yeah, the energy he's kind of okay with. The minus 88 food is... And this is the problem when you have no farmers. And two, when two players have no farmers, it's double the problem. And not so also, the farmers are good. One of the, one of the reasons, like, all the planets you took from uh, from Chengdu Yankee is pretty, pretty bad. Like, mm. it's fortress worlds. He, he can't use them for very much. Yeah, sure, he'll get a lot of naval capacity. He, he has 500 naval capacity available. He's using 360, 50, by the way. That's impressive. But he's not getting basic resources. Yeah. He, he might have to do the unspeakable, man, too. Build farms. Oh, he, he's already doing it. 90 90% 2x is a farming world with okay no agriculture district no mind no that's just that's just that's just a plan that's the auto that's designation, the auto designation. Yeah, yeah, being, yeah, okay. being an idiot <laughs> I thought for a second I mean you, oh no he has one thought. farm on Mandasura Prime but no one working yeah. the jobs he's just so purging fair, pops at this point he should probably you know wait get a why few is he purging deals. these hive minded pops this is why his economy is dying look at this the game is accidentally purging other hive mind pops. Oh, because so he didn't change no, the he needs rights. to go back. No, no, he he has when he did the cybernetic ascension, it set it undesirable. If he opens up his species rights and literally just clicks post XX one two one, it will make them full citizens again. He doesn't even need to open the set rights or anything. He just needs to click on this button here. Just click on post X one two one. Oh, but the question is if he's noticing it. He's not noticing it. And this is a little bit of a bug. So what, what, and he's purging with. He's purging them on so every single planet. Every planet he took yeah. is purging those pops, and at he's not getting speed. anything from it. At no, at twenty-five a month. So every four months he's purging one pop, but he has not noticed. Oh, the humanity! Oh well, the hive humanity, I guess. Sorry, I'll, I'll stop now. He, no, but the thing is, he's eaten a hive. And it's not going to help him because he's losing all the pops. He must yeah. have so far lost at least that's, that's 20 or why... 30 pops. Yeah, because I was looking at Comrade's pop numbers. Like, he ate another hive and he wasn't that far ahead on pops. And that's probably it. Whereas yeah. Ahu killed another robot is way ahead on pops. Literally, if he just clicked and looked at the population on his planets, he'd see. So some of his planets are about to become depopulated. He, yeah. he will have fully depopulated them. He's filled them with fortress oh, strongholds, so but they're just gone. I mean, and now he still wants the pops, like, he just moved the pops off because he didn't want the planets. It must just be the stress of being in a war against two other players and struggling to balance his He's economy. He's seen it. He's seen it, and it's fixing his economy. He's now got nine. He's going to fix his economy. There we go. Bump. He's all in the... He's all good now. That was the issue, was that... Ooh. So that, for a few months, was killing him. Absolutely killing him. But now he's going back on the offensive. Yeah. About, we talked a bit about it earlier, but uh, with this patch, all of the internal market uh, values got reduced they with did. how much you can sell. Like, I think what how much you can sell got reduced by about 50% and how much you can buy got reduced by 20%. And it, it's really big for stuff like this because when you're running an optimized economy, you really need to push every last part out of your internal market. But they are at the galactic though. market now. Interestingly, though, I think what it does is it makes rare resources stronger than ever because you can sell like 10 of them per month, which is no, around. You can't. I thought, no, you can buy four or five and sell up to 10 without changing the price, no. right? You can buy four, sell six. I sent you the numbers if you oh, want to share you? with oh. chat. Okay, I'll have a look. You did used you? to be able to sell 140. Yeah, I sent you a, oh, I see, a yeah. picture. You can only sell six. You I think you could sell like eight or 10 now. Oh, sugar. You could sell more before. I think you'd sell 10 before. So most of the sell values went down with by, I think it's 55%. -ish. Yeah, it's quite a lot. You could sell 147. You could sell 147 minerals of food before. Now you can only sell, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's 64. So you can sell 80 less than you used to, 83 less than you used to. 
it's a really big deal when you're running off the internal market, although they have the galactic market now, so it's not an issue. What the hell are they even voting on in the Senate? Cooperative research channels. What the? Okay. I mean, All whatever right. people spend influence on, I guess. Yeah, I've... They did get the market up, though. That seems to be a priority in most uh, PvP games. Yeah, especially for some for some of the players. For other players, they actually don't want the market. And they leave, like, Comrade tends to leave the community because he doesn't want the market. Yeah, but I think in this patch, he, he, he is in, in the market right now. He is in the market. Yeah, yeah. okay. And again, you used to be able to get so much more out of your internal market. You can't do that anymore. Like, also, the alloy selling and stuff, like, it's, it's really hampering people's economy these days. Anger's up to 80k now. Oh, um, Michael boy. Price, if you ping me on Discord, I'll send you the full numbers. You are on Munch's Discord, I assume. I can also just post them in general chat if you want to I'll see them. I'll put them on the screen right now, one second. Everyone, then everyone can view what, what I was looking at. There they are. They'll be on the bottom of the screen for a bit. Yeah, there you can see them down there, ladies and gentlemen. The goddamn. What? What's happened? Did somebody say something? Was that Cyrex? I just heard Cyrex say, God damn it, yeah. Somebody's paused. He's paused it because Sakuya is lagging hard. Someone crashed. Okay, Sakuya crashed. So yeah, we can talk about the numbers in the meantime. So these numbers you're seeing on screen right now, this is how much you can buy and sell with automatic trade deals every month without changing the price. So if you sell more than this per month, your stuff will become less valuable. If you buy more than this, the stuff will become more expensive. But like if you buy 50 minerals per month, it'll slowly become more and more expensive. By the way, why is the graphic drifting on your stream, Mantu? I was just moving it up. Just I, want, it I was up. moving it up. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, wanted, I wanted it to, I, because of the, I realized that some people might not be able to see it if they've got the time bar up on the bottom. So I just pushed it up ah, a bit so yeah. you could see it still. If anyone just sort of slowly moving around. Oh, I was quietly just pressing the up key because I, I didn't want to do it manually and like make it fly around. I was like, oh, I'll just do it subtly. No one will notice. Yeah, it's fine. No one will see yeah, And this. then I called you out. I'm sorry. Yeah, you did. You did. But yeah. These are the new numbers. Also, like consumer goods is also one of the things that got hit really hard, in my opinion, because you used to be able to sustain a lot of your early consumer good economy by just buying. I think you could buy 45 before. Now you can buy 21. Yeah. So... Or was it 30 you could buy No, you before. could buy 25 well, before. Oh. To be fair, with consumer oh, yeah. you used the, to buy 25, now it's 21. Alloys is 13, yeah, so now the, it's 10. Yeah, the, the buy limit went down with like 20 to 30%, and the sell limit went down with like 50 to 60%. Mm. Which is why, yeah, a, a lot of people is having economy problems this past, if they knew the old limits but don't know the new ones. Also, by and over, those limits are not breaking prices so much, so it's, it, it's an doing. option yeah. still. Ragoons is looking around <laughs> now. He sent he's a side ship out. <laughs> What's he and doing? the first person he's going to meet is a devouring swarm the right around year 50. Oh, that Jesus. can't possibly go wrong. It's fear of the dark. Oh, he just finished his military build-up, by the way. He, well, he hasn't clicked it yet, though. But he's got yeah, no he alloys. Has it ready. What's his? Yeah, okay. He's got Crusader I mean, Spirit. I mean, uh huh. Okay. He has a shipyard with fifty percent discount that will jump up to seventy percent when he clicks the button. But that's but, still like ten yeah. ships. <laughs> I, don't I don't think know ten ships is really doing. like. That's not like the fear of the galaxy. Ten ships. I mean, maybe Ragoon is just having fun. Yeah, maybe he's just having a good time there, playing a bit of City Skylines. Another great game by Paradox. So the Federation War from the start of the game still haven't ended, but they're just slowly being occupied, and they still don't have 100% war exhaustion on Githanas and Mamunga. They didn't kill enough ships. Sakura is dying to devour and swarm AI. Sakura lost an engagement with all of his fleets. Oh, oh well, wow. that's unfortunate. Yeah, I, I wonder what, what, if we should give uh, Ego points for that. <laughs> was, well, so, uh, so yeah, Ego just came back after the hut join or? No, he just uh, disconnected. No, 
Oh, yeah, okay. he cashed again, so he he also yeah, cashed okay. for the he, second he time. Ragoons has spawned but, in a uh, nebula. Yeah. That's why no one's found him because he's in a bloody yeah. nebula. All of his systems, except one in the corner, are in a nebula. Oh wait, no, that one's not in a nebula. All right, just two of them then. All right, two of his systems are in a nebula. And also, oh. bo both Pax and Ego never went into the Hualinga system, mm. so they never oh, they never Pax had a chance to go together. up. Let's see. Is it every 20 years that you count capital points, or every 10 years? Uh, every 20 years. Okay. Look at Ragoon ship designs. Are they crazy? They're cloaked. Are they ships? Oh, Ooh. Ragoon ship crazy. He's gonna try Saki and pull actually, some sort of cloak nonsense. just got the squad. But he still has no alloys. I know, I don't know what the plan here is. He's now making one so, per month. What is happening? You know what the plan... Like, if, if he just made energy, the plan could be to join the galactic community and start buying alloys, because they're actually not that cheap, are they? People haven't oversold alloys as much as they used to do. Like, in no, these two P games, all, alloys used to cost price. nothing. Yeah. They're actually overpriced on the galactic market, I think. No, that's no, the base. internal market. Four. If you check Gothanus, Gothanus hasn't joined the galactic community oh, because sorry. he's running off. He's buying 50 They're underpriced the slightly, 3.59. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Gultanus is doing that internally. Wait, what? Yeah. How are they not going up that much? Because I guess he's only buying 50 every month, oh. so it's only slowly ticking up. Yeah. Um, like Sari said, it doesn't snowball as much as it used to. And if, like, you were buying 50 for a while in the previous patch, or sorry, yeah, if you were overbuying in the previous patch and then you just started buying one per month, for instance, it would still keep going up as long as you had any trade at all. Now it will balance back down once you stop buying more than you're allowed to. Yeah. So the system is less volatile. Yeah. Yeah, those trade prices were so bugged. But hey, it's nice that they fix it, even though I, I, I don't particularly like the new limits, but maybe it's just because I'm not used to them. Potato Shagger has so far sold 5,500 alloys this game. That's quite a bit. That is what you see with many of these PvP players. They build so many alloys and they just end up having too many. That's why they used tick selling in the past. He is market. deep in Potato Shaggers territories. Yeah, they yeah. Have been engagements Comrades having, trying to have a little bit of a fight. Yeah. Comrades has more fleets than... But not by that much. They have similar. There yeah. is an interesting design of uh, Potato Destroyers. You... Ah, wait a sec. Yeah, he went full uh, flag batteries. He's trying to counter what? Uh, oh, and R and Potato Shaggers at 100% war exhaustion. Yeah. That What's means Comrade if, doing? If he's Comrade takes, hiding? If Comrade oh, takes going Potato in. Shaggers' capital, he can end the war. Comrade's coming in. Comrade's in. He's going to catch only some of the fleets. Oh, no. Oh, no. This might be, this might be call an ambulance. But not for Comrade. I take it back. It's close. Those flak, yeah. those flak are stopping the missiles. Because yeah. they do shoot missiles too. GG. So again, they haven't lost... Like, they've lost more ships than Comrade have. Because I think Comrade caught some of their fleets out several times. Uh, there is an AA possessing Kearney's capital right now. Really? Uh, yes. With a hundred k fleet power as well, the AI has a hundred k fleet yes. power and is just storming ahead. Um, One point five k research, two hundred yeah. unity, two fifty alloys a month, one hundred and fifty energy, one hundred and eighty minerals. That's a bit of a danger, actually. What level is the AI on Commodore? That's one of the problems with a player disconnecting is that the AI doesn't know the game rules. It doesn't know it can't attack until you're fifty. Yeah, and it's attacking. And it's strong. It's a good thing Ragoons hasn't met them, because they're on the same border An now. Anger, though, has 115k. He has a bigger fleet, and he has Wait, finished what? killing Ditlev. Holy mother of Job. He's going somewhere. He's... Yeah. Oh, where's he going? He's moving he's going towards... for Conrad. Ah? Uh, I think he's going for yeah, Conrad. Oh, is he going to... Is Comrade going to be in the third war? But Comrade That's can end so that first bad. war very soon. Yeah. We are talking about now. Uh, well, look at anger. Oh, there goes some. Yeah, there anger. goes. There okay. goes. Strong Lord yeah, killed two Federation players. Dead. Yeah. 
Okay. Cool. I don't know if that when when it's in lines does it count as so Gathanas took all of Least Fire's territory and Mamanga took the rest, I think. Did he release some of it as a vassal then? Oh, no. Like why is why is one of the factions another color? Because the state, the state of, of S1, S1 is I don't know what that is. That's a different thing. That's a non-player thing. Let's check. It might be a rebellion. Separatist, oh yeah, probably yes. a rebellion. That's a rebellion. Yeah. So the void dweller re crashed his economy and rebelled during the war. Yeah, but then I assume Strongblog will still get points when he finally gets the capital. Oh, and it was a status quo war, so they don't get points for winning the war, but they get points for the eliminations, I'm assuming. I can't recall. I do not recall. Uh, so what was that? So, uh, so um, they, it was a status quo, so they do not get points for winning the war, right, but they get points yeah, for the eliminated per player, because yeah. uh, achieving war goal against Federation is next to impossible if they have like this fire did yeah. but still you have achieved Borgol and eliminated the player in the process it's of this. Here's an interesting question so didn't eliminate least fire least fire still in the game yeah but another interesting question kerne here kerne lost but he also lost his capital to a revolt in the middle of the war does that mean that and then and then uh, momonga had to declare a separate war against the separatist because that's a war against an AI, does Momonga not get points for capturing that capital? No, 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 no. it will be counted because good, good, cool, is... Good. Uh, yeah. check. I'm counting it. I'm going to get rid of the uh, little score, the, the, yeah, the internal the marker. There's no need for that anymore. Anyone that needs the numbers have the numbers now. Yeah, you can scroll back in the stream. Yeah. Or join the Discord. Momonga, let me finish this 1v2, please. Comrade think yeah, Comrade's <laughs> getting worried. Now, I want to finish this 1v2 before I fight you 1v2. Yeah, Comrade oh, really Angus needs to go for that ship Angus build reduction. Anger declared war on R and Potato Shagger. Oh. He did not go for Comrade. Comrade's now at 75% ship build so cost he, reduction and climbing. Take... Interesting, Angus, because Ender can is sell... taking uh, Lord Saro's f former capital right now. Indeed. And there's no real garrisons. And there is also TU North for him, <laughs> which I'm quite surprised why Ark didn't kill those Tiankis. Damn Why Tiankis. does cybernetic, adva cybernetic Advantage show an, uh, a placeholder art? That's weird. Hmm. If you look at Anger's uh, government, it's, it's got like an M for Cybernetic Advantage agenda. Do you see that or is that a bug on my end? I see, I see. Yes, yes. Me too. Huh. Look at his leaders. A gross note is almost level 10. Well, it's level 9. One of his leaders is called Failure? Wait, what? Oh no, his, 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 his ruler is uh, called I mean, Failure. Gavri, your rulers, yes. <laughs> <laughs> just check how, uh, just check levels of uh, progenitors and everybody yeah. else. So Giltanus is like level is... 4 and 5. Regular machine is like level four to six. One of the nodes is at six. Progenitors are level eight or nine. <laughs> eight across yeah, the board. Comrades leaders are level seven, and the nodes are level uh, seven as well. Eight, some of them. And those veteran traits are so stacked, so juicy. I'm still sorry that that Gestalt does not get the destiny traits. Yeah, that one's. I don't imagine, understand. Imagine that progenitor decision. having destiny traits. This yeah, but that, that's. <laughs> I, I don't care about progenitor in that particular aspect like you could just balance that if you wanted to yeah you could but rebalance it's such progenitor a fun so mechanic. that what you could do with progenitor is rebalance it so that leaders didn't didn't only gain passive experience if they weren't gaining any other experience so like if you had there, a general who's unemployed you get experience or if you employ them you get experience you know rather than yeah, giving well, experience th extra there's a ton, to everybody there's a ton of ways they could do that i just think it's sad because it's less fun like destiny trades are so much fun yeah i think it's sad that that hives and, and robots don't get to experience that although it would probably be very you know unbalanced for pvp aspects but i mean this game isn't exactly balanced for pvp as it is no it's not is it and, and that is by design, by the way. Like the yeah. developers are not balancing this game for this kind of playstyle. This is, you know, thinking outside the box and making it work. 
What do you mean? No, Stellaris is a uh, is an esport. Now silence, as we enjoy our esport. I mean, our, our tournament is like, you know, those cash prizes. Well, it's an esport. No, it's, it is an esport. You're right. We've made an esport here, Jan. Stellaris Monthly Esport League. Exactly. I mean, sure you can't live off the prices, but how many esports can I you mean, do? I mean, you that? could if you found a way of traveling back in time and living in like. Kuala Lumpur 140 years ago. If you really like eating pasta, like if you win every month and you enjoy, you know, nothing but ramen. I and think, you don't need a home that's... or a phone or a computer or an internet connection or any of those other things. You yeah, know, easily. You know, you set aside 10% of the prize pool to go to an internet cafe for the tournament and then the rest is just ramen and living in a sleeping bag. We're an eSport. Oh, good God. We need to provide for our players better now if that's the case. The players are going to start forming, you know, a player league, wanting better contracts. It's player unions. We demand better representation. Shut up. Yeah. Down, children. Oh, so, uh, Anger just took Los Saros capital and then he moved on. I'm wondering where he's going. He's going around the top. He's going to come in to around the Conrad. top and go kill them. Beautiful. So it looks like there's so much in between anger and comrade here. Or maybe maybe he's just seen what Comrade's comrade's up to a ninety K. Maybe he's just seen what's happening to Comrade and he's like, nah. Oh. Something's happening on my end now. Yep. Oh. Yeah, I see you can you try and pause and unpause inside the game? See if that catches yeah, yeah. you up. I can't pause. It's moving a little bit. I should be paused. Oh, there we oh, go. Now you paused the game. And you're unpaused and you call. Yeah, now it's going. I don't know what happened there. My stream also had an issue for a second. So there must have been an internet thing on my end. I apologize, folks. Yeah. Um, if, if this happens in your own multiplayer games, if the person lagging, if they're completely frozen, if you can get them to pause and unpause, it will often unstick the lag. For some I didn't reason, know that. it works better. So Ragoon has I mean, cloaked all of his ships, so he's not getting first contact events, look. Because no one actually <laughs> knows he's there. He's exploring the galaxy without first contact. This is so stupid. Oh my god. Ragoon, what are you doing? Yeah. And he's I not mean, he's he's left military at build up, and he's not gonna take it until he's ready to fight. Oh, he's making 90 alloys a month. Everybody stop. Ragoon has shifted his economy. In ten years' time, or maybe even twenty, he might have 10k worth of fleet. Amazing, I tell you. Just ya. about. Uh, I mean, he won't be able to sustain it, but amazing. Yeah, he probably tries to time it with Quest of the Toxic God, I believe. <laughs> well, he's just on level five. I think level five is. Let me check. Is that is that additional alloy output? Um, Manta, there is the same thing again. Oh, you're frozen a bit again, yeah. Try to pause and unpause. Um, Monto, can you hear us? Yeah, no, I can hear you. Sorry, I'm just trying to pause. At the moment, nothing's happening. Some okay. things are moving. I've just moved to... I'm on currently on day 29. Day 30. Yeah. Day 1. You're catching up slowly now. Pause. Now you're paused. And, and now it's moving again. again. I don't know what's going on. Is it because you have Comrade Stream running in the background, maybe? No. You, ha you were opening stuff at the time. No, no, I haven't had that for a while. Yeah. Just British internet at its finest. Is it any bad? So, how many points, by the way, do you get from eliminations, Cyrex? Oh, uh, you get 10... Uh, yes, you get 10 points per each elimination, but quite often people generate the most points from controlled capitals, so... I'm just yeah. wondering, like, why Pax haven't killed Least Fire yet? Like, it's one system he has to take for elimination. Yeah. Maybe he's keeping him for the last. Is it happening again? I don't know. Yeah, it's happening again, isn't it? I don't know what's going on. It seems uh, to me yeah. when I change when I change empires currently, it just the, the game lags. Wow. Well, I can't change empires for a bit then. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> So let's. I'll, I'll try and give you a blow by blow of what's happening. 
There's just been a new war between uh, business boys Iro and Sequoia Storks. So while Storks is being eaten by the, is he still being eaten by the horde? No. Devouring swarm. But the devouring swarm war ended, so they stopped yeah. eating Sequoia. Tribute war now. Yes, Koyas has have a fifty k fleet as in, just enslaving his neighbor, and it looks like anger is starting to blow in through Potato Shagger's space now, with the uh, yeah a uh, bigger fleet. Um, so I think Potato Shagger and Ark together can hold wait off. a sec. Yeah, they're moving in now. There is, yeah, there is an engagement. Muncha, can you go into the Korga system and see a big fight? Uh, I'll have to change Empire to unobserved one second. Yeah, let's oh, try. Happened. Korgar. Wow, that's a K O R G A S. It's in Potato Shagger space. Yeah, yeah. yeah it looks right, like. Can you see my pings, by the way? No. It looks like it looks like Anger's not winning. Yeah, yep. to because the it's of... exact same design as Comrade had, mm. and and their counter is not And yep. Comrade wasn't helping him in that this fight. Comrade pulled uh, back his I... fleet. Yes, Comrade was on retreat after a previous fight. Yeah, so they had about 140k combined. Anger only had 120k. Yep. But again, Comrade can end this war any any second. Anger so can't. they can't really counter attack into him. As soon as the fleet reaches space, he'll just peace out. But they can piece him out soon as well, though. What I'm thinking might happen is they're going to piece out, and then I'm thinking they might turn their uh, their uh, attention to packs. You, you mentioned sorry something about a bounty system. How does that work? Yep. Uh, so basically, every player uh, who has more than one hundred, uh, well. 1,000 and 100 ladder points as a bounty on them. And the bigger your rating, the bigger your bounty. So when you kill such a player, you get this bounty and also that killed player loses those points from their account. And who so currently has the bounty? Uh, Listfire has a lot of bounty. Pax and Potato Shaga, they both has 20 points bounty. Uh, and so, they, uh, all of them, yeah. I'm wondering if R and Potato Shag is just going to go kill these fire and packs then. They should, they should. Yeah. Uh, and quite honestly, that will make uh, Potato Shag number one on our ladder, if he will do that. That not only will give him those points, those uh, that... Uh, yeah, they lose them. Yes. He will collect those from his rivals. Someone in chat, Dramatics in chat is asking, who should I talk to about forming the first Stellaris Players Union to demand livable prize pools? Um, yeah, no, no, no worries. Um, talk to Yearn. He's just going to have a quick word with you. Just just step outside for a moment. Um, and uh, don't worry, Dramatics has just been promoted to a new role and uh, we'll be back soon. Definitely. You know, there's no union bustling space. It's just the union cover room just happens to be in the airlock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no union busting. Yeah. No, not even that simple. We just put the sign saying um, "Union Meeting Hall" on the final door for one of the space locks. It's just <laughs> you just try to go to the union meeting hall and oh! it's beautiful. And Shadow Ninja sixty nine thousand, welcome to Science Director as well. Lovely to have you. Don't forget to join the Discord. I'm, your role. I'm wondering why Comrade isn't piecing out though. They're starting to move back into his territory, and they are bringing armies. Like, he will be losing planets if they land on them. This is the last chance he has to stay this quo without losing anything. But no, sometimes he gets stubborn, like, don't want to end a war until he's gained something. But they can very soon piece him out as well, like, he, he it's really risky to keep in this, stay in this war. Mamonga and Giltana are attacking Pax. Wow! Do they have look a look wormhole down there? Uh, looks like that, yes. Yeah. Leela died, head of research for Pax. Oh, yeah, I see this. Coming up through Trin's promise. Yeah. Pax is never going to get that triple build system, is he? 
Poor Pax. He's not even got any ship. He hasn't so even got the, shipyards yet. Uh, I literally use system. I don't know how to. Pro Can you pronounce that, Manchu? What? The system with the wormhole. They just came through. Baileus. 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 Did a better job than I did, at least. Bail. Eulus. Bail Eulus. Bail Eulus. I, I know. know. It's okay, people. Mantra's not having a stroke. He's just trying to read. What's the difference? Ooh, David is uh, throwing some shade in the chat, by the way. Montu says, David says, Montu, thanks for having Yearns on today. Nice to have a knowledgeable player. It is nice to have Yearns with me, meaning we have myself a knowledgeable player here, plus Yearn. I do agree, David. Thank you for noting that and making a super chat. It's excellent. Uh, look at Singularity's capital. He's almost... Uh, well, he halfway through to the Communopolis. So, uh, and Singularity. he's sitting on comfortable 500 units of production as a robot. Yeah, he, he actually uh, DM'd me in-game with a whisper, saying um, that he was trying to do a no-war game and just see if you could outscale people economically. I don't think there's any point in that, is there? No, no not in this. No. There would be an R lobby and, next week, but there's not in this one. Yeah. And he's behind Momonga. Where are Pax's yeah, fleet? Got... By quite a margin. Oh, crikey, they're so far away. Look at he's not bringing them back, though. He's hiding. Production. Pax is hiding. Um, have that you seen any alloys to, Ragoon to is avoid... making? How many alloys? 175. That's not terrible. You know what? Pax actually should attack List Fire to get elimination points and also collect bounty yeah. from him. He literally just I needs a few ships don't understand and why he didn't do it. Yeah, quite honestly, it would be in style of Pax. Yeah, I'm he used very to play surprised as, he hadn't it. Yes, he, he used to play as Jim in a simulator, and that, uh, that Civic is very, you know, prone to such kind of tactics. Just strike in the back, strike oh. hard. I used to think Jojo was probably the most aggressive player out there, and then I met Pax. Oh, God. Yeah, Pax is quite aggressive. But and unlike Jojo, Pax is uh, unlike Jojo, Pax is quite often teams up with other really? players. Yeah, Pax teams yeah. up. But like not as much as let's say List Fire or Fabianski, but he also teams up time to time. Ragoon is building four science ships. What is happening? What is he doing? What is this? He mean, has level he has level seven cloaking at home at the moment. What the hell? He wants to achieve science victory, but that's not the game. Yeah, we're not playing Civ Six. Well, it's, I mean, it's not game. Really possible. He's on, yeah. <laughs> he's on the fifth stage of the Toxic God. He's halfway there. I think it might be the fifth stage, which gives you the alloy bonus, maybe. I can't remember. Uh, KT engaged against Potato again. And R. Anger's really building up. He's at Ooh. 150k fleet now. Oh, yeah, and Comrade's really going for him, but I don't th think he's going to win it. No. Why uh, has Comrade yeah. changed out? I don't he, understand. He's not updating his ships. He's not updating his ships. Yeah, I don't know why he's not... Like, the designs aren't working. The definition of stupidity is doing the same thing over... Oh, insanity is doing the same thing over and over, well, expecting different results. Uh, well, to his oh, credit, piece, he but, I mean, has uh, piece. tier 3... Yeah. yeah. There's the he piece. has tier 3 torpedoes right now, but... They, they have taken no system, so he was probably just waiting for the first planet landfall and then piecing out. Hmm. Like, the longer he could delay them, the longer the piece is going to last. He actually, he stole a system. He stole oh, the yeah. Kelsia O2 That's system. That's an old capital. capital. Does he get points for that? He yes, snuck he will. At 57. Oh, that's he stole that at 57. That is some... So he might be insane, yes. but he's got some next-level plays. Pax surrendered and Giltanus got his capital. Uh-oh. I see. Yes, I guess that's true. Pax knew he was going to lose, so he just sacrificed his capital. He's I wonder if they see the game, uh, least fire. Yeah, they do. Like, Gilthanus has vision on least fire. Yes. Anger has 175k now. Everyone hold the phone. Anger has 175k. Where is it? And he's moving. Oh, in. Christ, he's using it. Oh, sweet yeah. mother of Jesus. So Potato Shagger has 60k, R has 40k. They don't have combined fleets to stop him. He's making 660 alloys per month. Jesus, the Lord. And he's... He's running out of energy though. Look at this. His energy is about to break. Yeah. Now. 
and he probably doesn't have any way to fix it. He could sell alloys. He could he sell alloys. He should disband star bases. He, his star bases are costing him uh, 400 energy per month. Oh my lord, yeah. If he disbands he just, seven of them, he's going to yeah, save 300 fine. energy per and month. And now he's out. No, now he's out. His fleet's going to be weaker as well. I mean, it might be viable to run an energy shortage still. I don't know, though. It's... Oh, well, he's making plus damage. 400 a month now. What's up? Oh, he's selling 500 alloys a month. The alloy, galactic market alloy <laughs> price has crashed. It's crashed so hard into the ground. Yeah. Oh, my lord. Now it's the time for Ragoons to buy alloys. Yes, well, he's not in the galactic community. He can't. Yeah. True. Yeah, and Comrade's going, damn, what a war. That was quite the war. I, I mean, Comrade showed off some of the strategies that the good PvP players do, like when he lost the fleets, instead of retreating back to his capital and losing instantly, during the combat, when he saw he was losing, he moved them all to Tanker Yankee's old capital. That way he got time to repair. Yeah. That decision saved his life, I'm sure. His game life. Yeah, Not game. like his actual life. He's like, <laughs> he wasn't dying in the real world. Just want everyone I at home to know didn't that. didn't notice how he managed to go in and sneak a capital as well. That was impressive. But again, I think it, it, it's probably because he had one sweep into their territory when they were at 100% war extortion. So the second he had control of the planet, he could peace out at any time. So he's just waiting for the most opportune time. Ragoons is going out into the world to try and figure out where stuff is with empty science ships. And I bet, I bet that he is turning on and off crystalline sensors for plus one sensor range. So he's exploring with science ships without scientists. Yeah. Next level thinking, so, so you cute. have to get around the leader capacity thing. And is it the cloaking or the empty science ship that means he, he isn't meeting anyone? Like, why cloaking. hasn't he even got the... Cloaking, so they don't meet him, so he doesn't get a first contact event. And as oh, soon as okay. he's ready for first contact, he can go, pump, drop his cloaks in whichever place <laughs> he wants to and start his first contact. Yeah. Yeah. And say hello. <laughs> yeah, hello. hello and at that point, he'll be at, at least at minus 70% ship build cost reduction. Yeah, actually, yeah, he's at 50% and he has 20% loaded up. But oh, sorry, no, it, isn't... not 70%. He'll be at minus 65, won't he? He's already getting minus 5. It goes up to minus 20. An extra 50. Ah, true. Sorry, my bad. He has minus 50 currently. Yeah, yeah but... that's including 5% yeah. from the builder. But that's indeed an usual strat in those lobbies. Never seen that before. <laughs> Probably for a good reason. Usually people just die. <laughs> Uh, well, he's he's going through the empire. Uh, what, yeah. what we have? We have the two clones, Gothanus and Strongblock. Then we have uh, Progenitor Hive. We have uh, Rogue Servitor, Progenitor, Progenitor, uh, Rogue Servitor, Progenitor. The Knights. The, uh, then we have Paxis build, which is uh, the most unique, I think. And Stardust on the Shadowed Ring robots, but as a vassal, I think. We have Iro, a Necrophage, and Least Fire, another clone. So it, it is clear to see that Progenitor Hives and Rogue Services are still very strong. Like, Gestalt yeah. is dominating this. Yeah, 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 yeah. They have more people to start, of course, but they have been eliminating a lot of the bio players. And they also scale better than bio. Yeah. yeah. Even if they have no conquest, they will just scale. Look at Singularity. As a clone, you will never be able to scale like that. No. 252 pops. But I, I mean, I for comparison, we can just look at the pop cross of Kiltanas, let's say. Well, plus five is not too bad on his capital. He's, he also turned the agenda on it's... earlier to uh, get plus two um, production, uh, pop production on every planet. So he was at he was at an extra plus two before the modifiers. So he's getting what the modifiers? 15, 35, 45, 55, 60, 70 percent extra. So that plus two is equivalent to plus one point uh four. No, sorry, sorry, three point four. Um is that right? Three point two? Uh Three, yeah, no, three, three point four. So he's getting an extra three point four assembly on all his planets for ten years as well because he turned the agenda on. Cybernetic advantage, I want to say it was called. Oh, he's really pushing science, by the way. I don't know if you noticed. He's a three K science. Yeah. Wait, who? Gilthanus. 
Ah, the Dana Sengar oh, as well. Edgar as well, yeah. Yeah, they both are. Yeah, but just for comparison, look at Mamonga and look at a Singularity. Mamonga conquered two players, right? But he's yeah. not so far ahead of Gil of Singularity. Yeah, Singularity's just gone full econ economy. Yeah. And he's making close to 2k signs a month. Gothanis is making 3.5k signs. Almost, actually, closing around 4k signs per month. That's a lot. Uh, I'm not sure if it worth it because, well, maybe because unless you get your, nice. yeah. Okay, well, because after getting uh, cruisers, the only uh, the only thing you need is just to upgrade your weapons, and typically one K science is enough to. Pax says so anyone no has to spend twenty thousand minerals. <laughs> yeah. I think he, he wants to make his UK Monopolies. I mean, look at his economy. Oh, minus 30 minerals, minerals minus 30 all. food, minus 26 consumers, minus 31 alloys, Ooh. minus 70 That's of energy. Yeah, Yeesh. he's crashed real hard. He's no down to 82 bucks. pops, like, after losing his capital. Yep. So the question is, who's going to get the bounty on Pax and who's going to get the bounty on Least Fire? So uh, Anger might maybe... have a bounty from Potato Shaga. Yeah, looks like he's yeah. taking most of the territory now. I would suggest Indeed. that Ragoons is going to get the bounty on someone. I mean, he's he's saving up his alloys here. He's got 8k in the bank, making 225 a month. You know, he saves up 20k alloys, he's making 300 energy now as well. Like, he's pushing up his energy. He's pulled back on science a bit. Oh, Potato is about to catch out. Ah, that's only a 4k fleet from Potato Sh from uh, Anger. That doesn't matter. He has a first contact. He has a first contact. I repeat, we have a first contact. And who is he meeting? Um, we can't see who the beta menace is for him, right? I don't think so. I'm just looking now. Chip from his perspective. Yeah, I'm yeah, looking. It doesn't say. It's probably. It might. Be, it might be. Um, not a player. Yeah, it looks like that. Appeared in his capital as well. Maybe. He's scouting out the whole galaxy. Yeah. This is so cheesy. Like he's gonna know everything <laughs> about the galaxy, and then he's gonna decide. He's gonna cloak all his. He's gonna build his fleets. He's building. He's building his. Wait, what? What? Maybe he doesn't know it's an AI he met. But he hasn't put an envoy into it. He's building without triggering the, the, the agenda. And he's building frigates. Yeah, he's going to build cloak, cloak frigates. torpedo frigates. Yeah, he's going for a cloak torpedo frigate rush. He's going to kill everyone's cruisers by being right on top of them and going bazinga. Yeah. Which is the thing you can really only do once, t to be honest. Yeah. So now he's, uh, just to show this, uh, so fast. now he's remembered to turn on the council agenda after queuing up all his <laughs> ships. Oh my god. Oh wait, no, but uh, he got some alloys back. To... Yeah, he's cancelling the, the two expensive ships probably. Ah, he's doing it again, And then yeah. rebuilding. Yeah. Uh, could you go show his uh, design, by the way? Yes, It's an absolutely. important thing to remember when uh, when doing a cloak build strat. All you armor. Want only armor on it? Yeah. And the, the way these can outperform cruisers is that because they have cloaking, they can get right on top of them. Meaning even if the other fleet has uh, point defense, they won't have time to shoot down all the torpedoes. I would argue so that phase disruptors might volley. be better here than the torpedoes, but the, the jury's not out on that. I think again, I don't know exactly how the bug works because I've seen it work fully and I've seen it bug out, but if you shoot with a missile and a torpedo on the same ship, the first volley will have both of them on the full range. So you can use the missiles to sneak out an early torpedo volley. But I don't think they continue shooting like that. At least I've, I've no, lost Leviathans with that. Uh, that's correct. On the first volley usually has the same yeah. range as missiles. And there is a strat around that, you just jump into the system, you make one volley and you retreat, because after that, if enemy has PDs, even if you will be in range, those PDs will be able to shoot down those torpedoes. Ah, so Dana's last game was playing like that, so he was relying on one strike. 
Aang is about to hit a quarter and million feet. Weirdly, only half of Ragoon ships to me look like they're cloaked. The other half don't. Is anyone else seeing that in Ragoon's capital? Fox is attacking. And he's attacking Sakuya. Forget. He's got to attack somebody. I don't know. Why Fox is he attacking he Sakuya? Fire, though? I don't know. Uh, it makes no sense. I guess they have an agreement or something. Maybe. You do not kill me, I do not kill you. Pax is currently cutting investments on mineral shortages. Don't know if that's... Uh, mm. He's still going up, though. Like, he's not doing it and surviving. He's cutting it, and he's still negative, so... Yeah, I would say being in a full economic collapse is not negative reason, is it? Like, I don't he has no way are, to balance his economy. I'm not... Yeah, he does... I... Very unlikely he's trying to make a profit out of it, right? I don't know. So what you said about is cloaked, uh, it, it says that they're cloaked to me if you go into the military fleet outliner. No, it does, but one, it said that they were cloaked as well, but half the ships are not not showing as cloaked. Uh, Only like the first the... 10 on my screen. If you look at my stream. Oh yeah, I actually see like the fleet itself, some yeah. of the ships in the fleet. It's the ones being built after he hit cloaking. Exactly, not they're, not, clo they're cloaked. not showing up as cloaked. Which is weird. But they, they are probably cloaked, it's just a graphical error. The same is true with the other fleet. It's yeah. really weird. I assume they are cloaked that it's just, you know, Bucky. Mm. Yeah, he's clicked it again. Oh, no, no. No, 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 it's just more ships coming out. So what's he yeah. got now? Uh, 25k of these frigates, and he must be building more. And, I mean, 25k of... I'm surprised he's not building them all in his capital because he's building them at one shipyard, which is minus 35% cost. So his frigates there cost, let's see, the frigates there cost 123, and at the other place they only cost 49. So, yeah. and they build in 39 days. I mean, I would build them all. That's like, you, every frigate built at his capital costs, is the, sorry, every frigate built at Asmore is the equivalent of two and a half frigates built at Sea Ragoon. Yeah. This really shows how important these discounts are. And also how fast they build. Yeah. They Looks actually like Singularity needs... got his Ecumenopolis up and running. At least his alloys are skyrocketing now. Yeah, his capital's in Iku. We missed our 60 years break, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, well. I guess we will not stop at we this point. We fight on. Unless yeah. somebody <laughs> asks. No, no, just uh, tell, tell them it's cancelled. Breaks are cancelled, and then go... Breaks are for winners. Yeah. No okay. one's here won yet. Exactly. <laughs> uh, sorry, you said Singularity's built his Accu. Yes. yes. Is he coming up, please? No. Oh, and he's he turned on Favor Society always. there as well. He's making 22 alloys per drone. He hasn't managed to get any ship discounts up and, and running. And 45 though. research per calculator. That's just nuts. Yeah. He's playing I'm a little surprised City. That he, why, why doesn't he have any ship discounts? He should have had some at this point. Has he just not been... Oh, he He's has got minus 25%. One? On his capital, he has minus 25%. I see minus 25 on his capital. Yards, I only see... but, you know, so let's think. On his capital, he has minus 25, but no shipyards. Ah. So he needs to move his... He needs uh, to move his governor. It, yeah. All right, governor. He needs to be moved. I'm not going to do the accent again. I apologize. Sorry, chat. Never again. Not giving better pay and benefits and removing breaks. You're just asking for a union to form. Look, if a union wants to form, they're more than welcome to meet in our union building, which is just outside airlock 32. Turn the light off on your way out, yeah? Hmm? To, to Some anyone of the meeting best, the union building. best union jobs right now are, are being made on a new tomb world. Really? Wow. Ready Shield is being voted on. Momongo says no. Prime and Forge says yes. And no one else gives a flying monkey's uncle. Like, most of the, almost all the power is just eh. I'm not voting on that. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the reasons why we put stuff like custodian points into the Munch Multiplayer Madness is we want this to matter. Not, not a ton, but some. Like, it is an aspect of the game that we want to be there. So 
speaking of uh, you know passing resolutions, uh, the week after the Monster Multiplayer Madness is going to be the next GPO. Mm. Now that's an event with a lot of laws being passed. Well, interestingly, I can reveal now that you know who's going to be playing in that. Uh, I'm I'm I might be unavailable for some of some of the sessions depending on oh. um, how exactly my weekend goes and whether or not I get back to the computer in time. Like I might miss the start of like the the first session on Sunday. Um, so that means that I need someone to play with. And wouldn't you know it, I found the Lord of Memory himself, uh, Ragoon and I are going to be playing the same Empire together in the GPO. Oh, that's going to be fun. Are you going to be able to manage whatever he sets up for you? Well, well like, no, well, I mean, it, like, no, it, so it's only the Sunday session I can't make. So we're going to alternate oh, okay, sessions okay. in between. And maybe, who knows, so, maybe Cole uh, will work by then. Is, is this a showcase of what he wants to play with you then? No, 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 no. We're going for something to do with dragons, obviously. <laughs> Just oh, going to say Mega like Corp Dragon. Contact. His contact with the uh, Ego Hugan has started. Where's that? Uh, Ragoons. The, Where's the contact? He has though? put an envoy into the first contact. Is that the one on his capital, though? And it's though? worrying. Yeah. I'm not sure. Are you sure because that's Ego Hugan? Yeah, but all of his uh, Ego Hugo's territory just turned red, so that means it's aggressive towards ah, him. That must be the one. But Ego Hugo's not there. He's finding the one player he gets no points for attacking. <laughs> and I don't know if he can beat him. I... They oh, just made contact, met... and now he knows there's no player. And Ego has... Uh, and he's trapped. What, what ship build? Yeah. And he's got a hungry, and hungry AI empire on his border. This is probably the worst case scenario for Ragoon. Oh my lord. And Ego's cruisers actually have double point defense hangers on them. They might oh. actually be okay against them. Ego's got 120. This AI has 127,000 fleet power. It did just declare war on Storks, by the way. He's uh, reanimating Sequoia. stuff. Does he have Tiana Vec? Yes! What's happened? Uh, there is a distance. I think I just. Um, Sakuya. Sakuya. Uh, but, uh, Only Sakuya, it seems. Ah, uh, Sakuya. Looks like Pax is. I guess uh, we have to kick him. Yeah, yeah he's I mean, the Horde is just the attacking, the and moment. Pax is attacking. Between yeah. the two of them, he's done. So. The Horde, yeah, the Horde's got 130k here. I don't know how. Ragoons can't beat that. And the Horde also has Tiana Vec, and so the Horde has built the Cordyceptic Reanimation Facility and has been pumping out those fleets, reanimated fleets, every five years. I mean, those fleets are pretty bad, though. So if that's well, a part of its fleet numbers. They are a part of its fleet numbers, but they're not that bad. They have, um, they get, ma you get massive bonuses because he's Cordyceptic. Oh, True, he's defaulted. And, and devouring swarm. Hold up. This AI defaulted Ooh, 10 years ago, apparently. He's currently a plus. He's yeah, currently getting minus twenty five percent weapons damage and stuff. In a hundred days' time, his fleets are about to become more powerful. Ooh, a devouring swarm with the the Cordyceptic is actually also really nice because they have so much hull and armor, mm. so all the regen is extra efficient. Yeah, let's look at these space whales. So, five thousand hull, two thousand armor. Regen five and ten percent, and then these weapons hundred percent shield minus seventy five percent armor. So they're kind of crappy in the current state of the game because so many people run armor, but they're not the end of the world. Energy siphons are just a bit shit, a bit bad. Even sorry, I didn't say that. Any Those are not energy siphons though. Uh, yeah. I think they at least no, they're, they're not the energy siphons you can get. If you look at the stats, these things do. Normal energy siphons do minus damage to shield and bonus damage to armor, if I recall correctly. These have swapped stats. It's uh, what lost, um, I can't remember if it was Kissy who lost to Ragoons, because she saw that they had energy siphons and built full armor on her ships, or full shields, I can't remember. And they were doing the opposite damage of the check you can get yourself. Wait, what are you talking about? Which weapon? Montreal, if you try to look at the, the weapon for the Chianki again. Yeah, just a, just a moment. I'm just looking at something else briefly. I think... I think the, the AI can see Ragoon ships. Uh-oh. 
I think the AI can see Ragoon ships. No they way. They have protection for it all. Yeah, well, they've got... Well, I'm I, as the AI, I am seeing neutral fleets with military power in their space. Let me just check Ragoon's POV. Mm. Those are Ragoon ships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The AI can see Ragoon ships. So Ragoon is going to try and knock out... Uh, Ragoon has, I think, figured out where the detection arrays are, maybe? I don't know if you can figure that out. But Ragoon's fleets are currently cloaked at level 4. Why can the AI see through level 4? It said they only had level 1. I'm really confused here. Well, it seems I was wrong. It is just normal energy siphons. They have, yeah. But they used to have different weapons. Well, I was looking at them. They're energy. Sorry, I was looking at them in yeah, game. Yeah, they were energy siphons in game. I think that might have been changed. I'm pretty sure that they were. They had swapped stats at some point. What the hell is going on? The AI only has a cloaking detection of level one, but for some reason is able to see all of Ragoon's ships, even though they're cloaked at level four. I, I don't understand that. Uh, if I understand it correctly, it depends not on your level of uh, like research technology, but on how much you have those modules. No, exactly. The no. They only have one. So I'm looking at the star bases, and the detection strength is one because they have one oh, detection yeah. array on two That's star good. bases. Magic and Obiskuyuk. Obiskuyuk. Yeah. That sounds like a bug. Maybe unless, it's a UI bug. Unless it gives you... Know. Yeah, because basically he can't actually see these fleets. He just has an overlay saying the fleets exist. Wait a minute. It could be that his espionage is high enough. No, no. No. Yeah, so the cloaking strength is four of the science ships. Yeah, and we're not just science ships, the military ships. Ragoon is peppering... He's he's going to knock out all the star bases in one go, is the plan. I don't think Ragoon <laughs> knows so this isn't a player. Like, Ragoon is about to meme 30. the AI. Like, what the hell, He only man? has 30 intel on Ragoon, so he shouldn't be able to see it. What the hell? But you're right, he totally sees them. Maybe he knows there's ships there, but can't see anything else about them. Because he can't see them in the system. He just has an overview outside of the system. So maybe the way that cloaking detection yeah. works is if you build even one, it will tell you there's cloaked ships around, but it can't tell you any more than, like, there is a big fleet, there's a little fleet, there's some fleet. Or, like, cardboard or, box. Or like, maybe it's just an uh, observer bug. Maybe. Knows. Maybe. We can see something the AI can't. Singularity is very proud of his capital, by the way. He keeps telling me how good it is. He is making a lot of in a lot of stuff on that one planet. He's telling me who needs conquest. I mean, I'm surprised. Among and Giltanas are AFK. They have so much power right now. Yeah. Look at Giltanas. He's producing million. 1,000 alloys already. Angers at war with who? Same war, is it? So oh, yeah, same war. Still at war with the. Still yeah, the same war. He's a hundred percent war exhaustion, so he can end whenever he wants. But he's lost all the southern stuff that he'd taken. He's going really? for one last How push right now. I guess it's because he split up trying to both attack from the north and the south. Yeah, I mean, if I was him... Which is always I, scary. What I, I mean, he's got enough fleet now that he could split his fleet into two sections. Send one section to R, yeah, take the capital, because the other R, section R to... R is building up. Hmm. Quite quickly, actually. And our, our designs are really nice, by the way. It's uh, level 3 disruptors with level 3 point defense and level 3 um, carrier. Whereas, uh, yeah, Anger is still going full torpedo, full missile. So I think R might out efficient his ships enough to win the fight. Although 290 versus 130 is a big difference. Yeah, those point defense are going to really help, though. They're going to shoot quite quickly. Yeah, exactly. Um, level 3. And Anger is not running um, Swarmer missiles, which usually can overpower point defense. 
he is just running um he is just running uh, torpedoes and antimatter and not all of his ships are fully upgraded to his newest designs by the way Ark was able to defeat him in a couple of battles that being said he, he has reactive armor on his uh, mostly armor ships so the disruptors won't do much to him wait no 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 anger has um has shield hardener yeah, and he has armor hardened, doesn't he? No, shield hardened. Some of his ships. It's, it's different between some of the ships then. Oh, some yeah, of them some of the ship hardened. has armor, some of the ships shield. His current design is shield hardener. Maybe it's the yeah, offspring. Yeah, but he hasn't had a chance no. to upgrade them. Ah, if you check his ships. Yeah. He and he is also running on upgrade. torpedo. Uh, interesting thing is he's running on torpedo computer. Oh, oh here we go. Oh, he's moving behind ready. him now. Yeah, Oz moving is going to chase him out. Ah doesn't want to give up the Lord Saros uh, capital, I think. Also... And I think the issue is that Ang can piece them out at any time right now, right? Yeah, Ang also has no, a bit of... Uh, Ang is trying to run away. Ang needs to repair his ships. 20 days he can piece. So any moment now he can piece them out if he wants to and just take Lord Saros capital. That is still not as much as he'd like though. Like he had full control over Potato Shaga. I think he just got a little too greedy. But he isn't ending the war yet, though. He can force peace whenever he wants. And he probably should do that. He's just going to take the ring. Away. He's going to basically see what happens. He'll probably try and fight them in Zathmak. And if he loses Zathma in Zathmak, he'll just he'll just status quo and keep the ring world immediately. Right, he's moved all the way back to the ring world. To repair. And if he loses a the lot of ring ships world station, repair. Yeah. That he station can't doesn't afford help. to afford in. Uh, he can't afford to fight in the station because if he loses the station, he doesn't get the system. Exactly, but he, he does need to repair. It. Yeah. First, he's almost there, I think. Yeah, he's just repairing. Now he's off. He's going to catch okay, them in the so, air. Yeah, you're right. Oh no, he's and R split and up. R's only got. Oh, R's only got about 120k. Oh, they pieced it. He pieced it. Oh, they pieced. They, yeah. they pieced. They pieced with him, I think. Uh, so, oh, no, he's still he, alive. They, he, he wasn't 100. Wow. percent They were. Yeah, but Potato Shaka has all of his territories. How? Yeah, because Potato Shaka managed to reclaim it while R was busy. They, they oh, went up to R's capital. Oh, not R's capital. They went up to R's capital. Ragoon's in war, system. by the way. Huh? And, oh, wait, wait, wait. Did he press himself? Ragoon's has gone to war under. with the AI. Whoa, this yeah. is a bit of a play. It's a total war Imagine versus Diane the AI May. horde. And he's also got cybernetics, so he can't assimilate all of these pops. And he's starting to take the station because he's just have. These cloaked frigates everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> this is the biggest memery we've ever seen. The meme lord himself uh -huh. delivering, and the AI, the AI has fleets, fleets nowhere nearby. But they, yeah, they do were, have fleets. They were eating stalks. Yeah, yeah, they're coming back soon, but they might have nothing to come back to. And again, it is cruisers like the. I, would, I even think the Janki had. What's the hull size of the Janki? Oh, they're size one, by the way. That that is yeah. not good for the frigates. No, that's actually really broken. I remember that as well. Like but even the, the frigates Chiang are full Chiang armor. Is. The frigates are full armor, which means that yeah. they will. They're at minus seventy-five percent armor damage. The they won't nothing, touch. Yeah. They won't even scratch the paint on these frigates. Well, just take a big breath and think about it. The only war. In PvP lobby right now is a PV war. Yeah, I know. What the heck? The storm. <laughs> Who stalks? Yeah. Oh, it's two, and also there's a PVE war between two between two AI empires as well. Storks and Belmacosa Hall are fighting. <laughs> well, by the way, least fire is spreading out again in the north. I think he's just like trying to to avoid being eliminated by spreading out like a plague. Like planet here, a planet there. Can't kill them all. I guess it's not worth fighting him if you can't eliminate him anyway. I'm getting a bit thirsty. Chat, are you thirsty? Do we need to hear a beer being opened? Well, I don't know. What we don't need to hear anything. I mean, I'm just saying I'm, I'm getting pretty thirsty. I don't know if Chat says on a warm day like today, you know, I might try a nice refreshing lager beer. Agrobent says no Agrobent, beer. Yeah. You're thirsty for workers' rights? I mean, players' rights, says Dramatics the No, no, no. No, 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 no. 
Ragoons is exploding onto the intergalactic stage here. Yeah, it's amazing. He's just grabbing everything. Do you have the armies to also take the planets? Yeah, I think he does. Yeah, well, yeah, he's, yeah. he's only got... He's only, actually, not really. He came in with like 1.4k. He's already down yeah. to 900. So... It's, it's an important change to remember this patch. Because all the capital buildings get some free defense armies, you will wear down your armies. You just Quite quickly. Like, you can't just take a thousand and then take a full empire with it. No. Like, you need several thousand because you will be worn down. Until you have, like, war forms, they never take losses. The Belmacosan Horde is coming in. I assume Ragoonies is going to cloak up and then deal with them. Oh, no, they're not. They're just sitting there. With their whales and their undead amoebas and all of... This is a monstrous sight, actually. The zombie yeah, hordes true. and the little zombie baby things and ugh. Uh, they, they did a really good job making the reanimated uh, Yeah, it's lovely that they... Cool. Yeah, basically, they just they did an art project to redo the, yeah. the zombies here and it looks beautiful. They didn't have to do it, but they went the extra mile and it just, it looks nice. David says he's sure that Lager was created in a fleet. union shop. Say again? Among these builds in a lot of fleets. Oh, wow, yeah, 348. And he's already it. Yes, he spent all of his alloys, and he has a lot of naval capacity already. So I'm wondering who are they going to go to war with then? I mean, I'm assuming he's not just building up for nothing. The only problem they have is uh, lack of influence. They cannot claim a lot. So I'm surprised they haven't tried to kill Singularity. Unless, I mean, I don't know how their their inter diplomacy stance is, but uh... well. In one of the finals uh, of Montemus Crayon Madness, me and Mamonga were actually teaming with Singularity, so we are in cahoots. I'm gonna. Jeez, I'm an gonna honorary pig <laughs> is what you're telling us. I'm gonna run and get a beer. You guys entertain chat for a moment. I'm not a beer. Uh, on a warm day like today, definitely yes. not beer. I'll be right oh, back. And, and Munch see... left just as war started. Yes, Stardust is attacking. Started... Yeah. I think Stardust gonna regret that. So, Stardust is a Prospectorium under uh, Gilthanus. He must have still gathered up enough fleet to try and make an attack. But I think Gilthanus just defends this easily. Let's see the signs. I know Jedi can't really show the, the war, unfortunately. It's just full, full disrupt uh, cruisers. And in the shall not pass system, there's about to be a big fleet battle, which unfortunately you guys won't be able to see. But I'll, you know, make I can make sounds for you. Pew pew, lasers go. Singularity is in full Titan again. Against... I'm pretty sure Munch can hear what I'm saying right now because he always brings his head so he can he can hear what I'm doing to you, chat. He knows how I'm mistreating you. And yeah, Singularity <laughs> actually lost this battle, but didn't lose a lot of ships. So he lost six ships, and uh, Stardust lost twelve ships. So Singularity was more efficient in the war, but is being on the defensive. I would bet on Singularity in this war. I think Does so he... as well. Like he's making eight hundred yes. alloys per month. He can just pump out ships. Yes, and, he, and he Stardust just can, cannot pass through this. He shall not pass system because uh, uh, she doesn't have yeah. uh, any armies at all. So yes. he hasn't turned on his fortress yet, actually. I'm wondering if he's... Oh, he... there, there is army coming very soon, so she will be able to. I can't remember. Does the planetary inhibitor still work even though the fortress is turned off, right? You just need no, the fortress. No, it to doesn't. You, you, you need to have your... Not fortress, but citadel. Okay. Uh, because fortresses are not enough. You have to have a citadel, and it should be on. Stardust is about to take... Cool over the planet, like, there's not enough defenders there. But it is disabled. Pew, pew. Wait a second. Pew, pew, where's the pew, what, pew? What? In the, uh, you shall not pass, sorry. In uh, Singularity's territory. Singularity's about to come in for round two. And he just built up 30k more fleets. They've only got 60k Stardust there. Did. Whole yes, k. The, the first battle, Singularity had 115k and Stardust had about 90k. Mm -hmm. And now he's coming in with 160 against 80. <laughs> Oh, I think beautiful. Stardust about to regret their decision. So they have chosen oh, so sure. death. David says he's gone quick, hold the union vote. Damn it, David, no! 
You were she to... was. Uh, she already was able to defeat him in an engagement, and that's surprising because she's running disruptors against kiting design, which is easily. No, no, no. Her disruptors are just destroying. Look at this. She's winning again. Yes, yeah. indeed. But Disru she doesn't kill any any fleets at all, any ships. Yeah. One of one of the things is because. Oh, I guess it still counts as Tingrelsi's territory for retreat mechanics, right? Or does it count yes. as her mechanics? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So when you're in your own territory, you have a higher chance of retreating. Meaning, when you're on um, no a hidden run, you retreat very fast. Yes. So, so your fleets will keep retreating and retreating, which is why he's yep. losing these fights. But he won't lose any ships. But he just doesn't have enough of Alpha Strike to yeah. kill any oh. of your ships as well. So they 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 they're they're fighting, but they're not able to kill each other. So what's going to happen here? Sorry, I'm just looking. At, I'm looking at what's going to happen. So singularities. Basically, going to lose one system at a time as his ships retreat, and then, Maybe. and then they go forward. Well, because she's pushing again. Yeah. Uh, there is also an option if Singularity Starless finishes his again. fifth tradition, he will be uh, able to get his dragon. <laughs> oh, that's cute. And he he is pretty close, probably. He actually just has to pick uh, Ascension perk. He has. Oh, he has. Yeah, he's finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He already can do he that. He only has to take an ascension perk and he gets the yes. dragon. He doesn't want the dragon now? Takes an ascension perk he, he's probably not aware of that. Oh. I don't know. Why because, wouldn't he want uh, the dragon? Uh, because I was talking to him previously this day and he was quite upset about not being able to play um, Prosperous Unification. And he yeah. doesn't know shit about the dragons. <laughs> really? So oh, no. maybe, yes, he never played it before. Even so in he's... our previous lobbies, he was playing on um, the, the ring world. He's now so getting much, 17. Much can you, can you pop show assembly? Chad his uh, traditions? Yeah, yeah. So, it's prosperity, supremacy, synthetics, and yielding, and a bit of domination. Ugh. Um, but he's, he's so, yeah, taken the, the works. executive vigor, synthetic, arcology, and, and then... for his bucks as well. So, the, the mechanics for getting a dragon is that you need to finish four ascension perks. And one of those has to be finishing your uh, ascension. So he has synthetic ascensions, and he has met more than half of the galaxy. Those are the or, two, uh, or there is an alternative. Of the galaxy. There is one or he alternative. has to finish six trees. Exactly. You can yeah. kill it. Four, four ascension perks or six ascension perks without an ascension, uh, without um, ascending your species. Oh, uh, Singularity's come back and retaken it. I don't know quite. So yeah, as long as he's met seventy percent of the empires away. in the galaxy, which he has, he just has to take that point, and he'll get the dragon. Why is Stardust or the away? To get the dragon. I think his ships were just being worn down. But then they're one hundred percent health here, and but like doing this washing, actually, gone no, from he's lost, lost twelve ships. And they, he's lost seven. Stardust lost seventeen. I suppose. I think she wants to upgrade or something. But also because. Uh, because Singularity is a Gestalt and has finished unyielding, he's taking almost no war Ragoon, Ragoon is taking Stardust apart this hive. This hive has 180 pops left, now Ragoon's has 407, but massive stability mm -hmm. issues. Why? Because his species rights are broken. Almost all the pops are coming through as slaves, I think. What he should really do is... Um, if he turns them, instead of turning them into slaves, turn them into residents, I think when you assimilate them, they might lose the recently conquered. No, it doesn't look like uh, that. There right is actually. a fight between Stardust and Singularity. And so this, time, this time it's in her territory, so yeah. the ships might not retreat as fast. Yeah, but also this time She's Singularity losing this time, had a range though. advantage. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Had a lot more she, this last time, time Stardust was able to catch Singularity at the edge of the system, which really helped. This time, Singularity Stardust stayed inside the system. No help. Actually, though, no, no, Stardust has won again. It's just the retreat mechanics, I guess. Stardust wait a sec. Hit, wait, but but she, lost, she lost quite a lot of ships, whereas no Singularity didn't. She's running rapid it, it, deployment it wasn't and he's running hit and oh. Yeah, he, he just retreated, he retreated himself. Yeah. I believe. And Stardust have, has uh, half of her fleet. So the big thing here is Stardust never finished, uh, never surrender in unyielding, and she's not a uh, hive mind, meaning she's taking a ton more war exhaustion than he is. Meaning once mm -hmm. she hit 100%, any land grab he makes, he could just end the war and take it. It's such a dangerous situation to be in. 
Like, he's... Singular, she's lost 18 ships, and she's lost 32, so she's lost twice as many ships, almost. But she's at 10 times, or 11 times, the war exhaustion. And that's because of Hive, and because of Unyielding. Ragoon has too many pops to deal with. <laughs> he can't deal with his new... He, like, he needs to spend 5-10 minutes here going through the economic situation, but he's facing down 140k fleet, so doesn't it can't just zone out for a bit. Oh my lord. Man, I don't understand why Singularity is not taking his ascension. <laughs> also, Ragoons is trying to bait the AI. He's got a single ship, uncloaked, sat in the middle of 250 <laughs> frigates fully cloaked. <laughs> come on, come and take it. You won't get hurt. It's easy. Jeez. I mean, only Ragoons, right? Indeed. Oh, Angus gone to war with the. Uh... Oh, Angus at war with Pax. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm guessing Angus just trying to eliminate them. There's no reason to fight Pax for war, the capital. I think. Yeah. Unless one of them has crisis. Yo, Angus has crisis. Yes, Angus has crisis. And Angus literally, Angus sent one fleet of their of their of his five down south. Like he's like, yeah, Pax, I don't yeah. need to deal with you very. It's easy. I'll just send one little fleet. That'll wipe you out, and then we won't have yeah, to talk about it anymore. Yeah. So just going for the bounty. Where are Pax's fleets? Singularity's. Uh, he's not taking oh. back. Uh, his uh, fortress wall. Oh, I see what's happened. Pax's Ooh. fleets are hiding in Sakuya's space, and um, and Angus got like a hundred, two hundred k sat in Sakuya's capital, going, "Come on, then, come out, uh, come out and fight." But also look at, <laughs> but also look at Angus's fleets uh, in the south, like basically in Pax territories. He has an open borders with Giltanas. So Ooh. I was thinking if Giltanas will attack close borders. Angus, but he can. But it seems like they are cooperating or something. What's Iro doing? We've not seen Iro I'm do quite anything sure. all game. I think Iro's just slowly dying. To who? They're not even at war. Oh, but they got beat up a bit by Storks. Oh yeah, they did lose their capital, didn't they? Yeah, sorry, sorry, I forgot. Uh, but if Iro survives till year 100, he will get a bonus for that. Look, Thanos has 60% ship discount on his main shipyard. Does he need the discount though? He's sitting at 1k yeah. plus 1k allies. We had a we had a game last time where Valadarx so had angry, uh, uh, so Valadarx last time had uh, was playing on Void Dwellers and he had 90% discount and he had like 90k allies stockpiled and he had no chance even to uh, use them because he had only one shipyard uh, with. Uh, and he wasn't even trying to build more. Because why build more if he has like a uh, 90% discount? Gilthanus has 75% discount and is making 1,300 alloys per month. So that means it's the equivalent of making 5k alloys per month, year 75. That is so oh. It all comes to if he is able to support those. Yeah. So Singularity is back in against Stardust, and it looks like this time Stardust is being knocked out. Also, Ragoon, it looks like if you look at the um, Belmacosa Horde, the determining, uh, what's yeah. it called, the uh, the Varian Swarm. Yeah, they're currently at minus 100 on all resources across the board due to go into a deficit in about three or four months on three things. At which point they'll Before end up defaulting. Yeah, so Ragoon will have taken out the AI without ever actually facing a fleet. <laughs> which is just stupid. He went in, cloaked, stole all of their planets, and then and crashed their economy. And now um now, and, and then they'll default and then they'll lose half their ships and other problems, etc. get reduced uh you know, reduced bits and pieces. It, oh, whoa. This game is a little silly. Oh, the AI is cheating. They're going for military build-up, and they're a hive. Do you want to? You should tell them off, Cyrax. 
I have to punish Higa Higgin for that. Yeah, yeah. His 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 AI is taken military build up and it's clearly against the rules, so and he's sounds like a ban there. He's running sixty five percent discount on all his uh, all his uh, is he? stations. What from? Yeah. Oh, minus twenty percent so, from difficulty. Oh, then difficulty. 20... <laughs> but then twenty five percent devouring swarm. Military buildup, organic architecture, modular ship schematics. So, what difficulty really, are we playing on? Commodore, Admiral. Uh, should no, 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 no. It should be Commodore. Commodore. Okay. Well, yeah. Does that mean the AI just gets a hundred percent ship discount if you, you play? You can Grand never Admiral? get below ninety, but but yes. But at ninety, but, it, yeah. They, they're going to hit ninety percent real fast on Grand Admiral, actually. If they just get a little lucky, of course they can't focus it, but ooh, that's scary. The word terror comes to mind. Someone should, the two of us just haven't gotten worse at Stellaris, Stellaris has just gotten harder. No, mm -hmm. no, it's not as harder. It's actually easier. To be quite honest, it's, it's like, this actually shows that it's easier than ever to build up like 20k fleet at year 30. Yeah. Um, that's I've actually, also been think... like playing single player. Like, I know a lot of people struggle with the AI these days because it is it's rough when you play on high difficulty. Yeah, no, I mean, the thing is, the players are able to get to this level because they get 30 years of uninterrupted peace to build up their yeah. economy slowly over time. Whereas if you're, if, you're, if you're playing against, like, Grand Admiral, no scaling from the start, and you... So I played a game recently, Grand Admiral, year 50 scaling. I spawned in next to a, feder a hege hegemony federation that took two other AIs as vassals in the first 15, 20 years. And so I was facing down against five AIs, which by that point would have been Commodore at year 25 or 30. And I had to, like... Oh, my God. I was having to use the fact that I had two fortresses next to each other and there were two entrances to my space. So like one would fall and I'd go run into their space and steal some systems and then come back. The AI would go back and retake its stuff. So I'd then go around the other side and do the same again and again, like a little uh, cat and mouse chase. Um, yeah. And then when they got to exhaustion, I pieced out and stole three of their worlds. But, oh, there goes oh, Pax. Who, who Pax died? just got gone to anger. Oh, yeah. That's a bounty. Yeah. Quite a big one. And then the biggest so far. Two years away from year eighty. And then year fifty. Started a war. Yeah, I think it was at year fifty they came in again and tributized me, and there was literally nothing I could do. I had like year fifty, I had about twenty, thirty k fleet after being fighting in these wars and stuff. Or maybe it was less. Maybe it was, I think it was like fifteen, twenty k, and they came in with about ninety to one hundred and ten, and I was like, oh. Yes, my monkeys are attacking fifty. Yeah, Gathanas yep. and uh, Mamonga is attacking Kamara. I, I was about oh, to predict wow. them because, like, you know, Mamonga and Kamara track and Gathanas, they simply Mamonga cannot has not attack each other. I, let's take a look at his ship build. Let's take a look at his ship building space, though. So, yeah. Like, Kamara is upgrading. He's running 70% discount now, by the way. He, he did start up the Trappist station. So he's making 650 alloys. Yeah, but he also has the shipyards in all, all key system. Ah, yeah, it's yeah, the, the, the trust trap. <laughs> oh, yeah, he changed it. Okay. So, it was like no 90% discount. Sorry. Yes. And now he's now he's like, do it. Side. He almost died and he was like, all right, I'll do it. Damn it. I'll bloody do it. He has 100 okay, cruisers queued up in there. No, sorry, no, some of those are upgrading. He are has gonna... 66 cruisers. He won't build them in time, no. He's yeah, up there, against 3,000. He has 3,000 capacity. Million of... Where are Comrade's fleets? <laughs> wait, well, wait, wait, wait. He jumped to Miss Nep. Uh, Miss Nep uh, oh, yes, uh, from, from a capital <laughs> system. Oh, yes, jump drives as usual. Oh, oh, oh. Fucking Comrade. I Amazing. mean, I don't know how he does that every game. He, he, he just rushes... Freaking jump drives. The jump drives are Insane. amazing. I would use a jump drive yeah. if I could to use a Colossus to crack a capital just to send a message. I'm not saying it's, no one it's ever, necessary. You never did that to anyone, right? I never made multiple videos about it either. It's not like one of my favorite moments ever from on stream. Honestly, when it happened, I was like, yeah, because I didn't expect it to happen. It was, oh, it was so good. That, that was the GPO where you, you, you had made like a mistake in a war that meant you were forced out of a war early, right? Yes. No, and no, I didn't make a mistake. Lose. I thought I'd agreed to peace 
with Comrade, and Comrade thought I hadn't agreed to peace. I'd agreed to just a 1v1. So we pieced out somebody, and he didn't piece us out. And I was like, what the, what the shit, people? I thought we'd agreed to a peace deal. And there was no peace deal. Then you went rogue. With and I got glasses. really annoyed, and I started, yeah, well, no. Yeah, the next session, I was like, let's come back from this. We managed to fight Comrade to a bit of a stalemate. Peace out. And at the same time, uh, uh, the mule decided, and his federation decided, they could have a bite out of us. And then, because Comrade was really? fighting us, but we managed to peace out with Comrade and then crack the mule's capital. It was beautiful. That really showed him. Giltanas has jump drives as well. He jumped to Mamanga's territory to fight against yeah. Comrade. I mean, I don't oh, yeah. think Comrade has anyone near the numbers. No, Comrade's winning. Fight. Comrade's winning. Annihilated. Uh, it's just tiny, tiny fleet. It's yeah, they still the won that battle. That's the reinforcement. <laughs> yeah. And Comrade's... Oh, Comrade sorry, I see the block hall jump. System. Gotcha. Yeah, so the question yeah. is, if, if Comrade can hit Gilthanus' jump fleet when he gets his bonus back, but before they do, like the, the, the negative uh, from jump drives, how long is it that last? 200, 200 days, days. 300 days? 200 days. Yes, that's 40% ship weapon. If you can catch him right at the right time, it looks also like the play might away. be uh, the play might be he can try to retreat as far as possible and then jump on Momonga because Momonga is... Yeah, or oh, just retreat. I'm not sure how long it will take to retreat if you have uh, jump drives. Should be faster though. I'm surprised Comrade's got because... no fortresses. That really surprises me. Fortresses would slow down all of this stuff. Like, if you put a fortress oh, in every system... It's attacking Comrade again as well. Data. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. Potato yeah. Shack has decided to have, to have his slice of the pie. It's rough being comrade in these lobbies. There's a big, big target on his back. The question is: Is Anger going to go in and help Comrade again? Like he comrade has is in Mamonga's system capital. Yeah. What's He's the place? Uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, right to know. No, no, I'm Maybe. just thinking about. I'm just. I'm, it's it's weird. The getting, game ends in an hour. I'm just thinking oh, about. Who's food. killing Ragoons? <laughs> Anger has found Ragoons. Ragoons yeah. yeah, Anger's killing Ragoons. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Ragoon. No, no. No, his capital. No. And it's a total war. No, but to be fair, he's got some armies. No, no. Why? Yeah, it's not easy taking down the. The knights, but did Anger jump in? Just... I bet Anger jumped in. Yeah, Anger jumped in. It was like war bloop die. Ragoon should cloak up, come home, and have some fun. <laughs> you know? I like hope he starts splitting up his fleets. I don't know. He can try to snipe some of the Anger systems because he has cloaking, you know. Yeah, but Anger will jump on him once. Once I, I mean, I think it'd actually be better for Ragoon to cloak up, sit on top of Anger's fleets, and then um, once he's on top of him... Oh, it's year 80. So, oh, sorry, sorry. And once he's on top, then uncloak. Or use a tiny fleet to start taking stations so Anger has to split up his fleets. Yeah. And then start sniping. Oh, Comrade lost his all of his fleets. Not all of his... But a lot of them. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah, he's 200, dying. 400k. <laughs> yeah, he's dead. Well, he can try to survive until year 100. Also, Potato Shaga coming here is kind of making it difficult for Momonga to conquer Comrade. The whole default I guess Momonga they lost will... half their fleets. Yeah. Just as predicted. Who has the defaulted? AI. The AI. Don't worry, it was, one, it was, it was uh, oh, Ego's old AI. Yeah. Is it still alive? Yeah, yeah. It's fighting it's and winning a war. It's fighting. Okay, um, so it's fighting against storks. It's fighting against Sakuya's AI. old AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're battling out to the death. It's like those robot fights, you know. Yeah, yeah. AI yeah. on Close AI and violence. Yep. Did Ragoons get jumped on? I think he got jumped on. He should have cloaked up, man. He really should have cloaked up, like I said. Ragoon's got his fleets jumped on, they're dead. Just as I predicted. The 
Comrade's building up some defense armies on his capital. Anger's at level 4 crisis. Holy crap. 50% weapons damage. All the bonuses. Jeez Louise. Are they allowed to go level 5 in these lobbies? Yes. Cyrax? They are. Yeah, cool. Can yeah. they com If they complete the crisis project, what happens? The etherophasic engine. Like, are there any rules against doing that? Does that, does that count as they eliminating win? everyone? Can... It should count as winning. Yeah, yeah. Wait fine. a sec. What, what, what's your second? The etherophasic engine. The galaxy. Yeah, if they blow the galaxy up, uh, they win. I guess there will be a lot of kills. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> cool. Should, like, but nobody did that before, honestly. But most likely this will be counted as win. Yeah, so Good. we have the same rules in our tournament. It's never been done. I don't think it's even been attempted, but it's just... No. It would be so fun if it did. <laughs> well, we keep making it easier and easier to do. Yeah. Somehow, Oregon's system... Uh, nobody has control over it. I believe yep. previously Pax was having, but... Anger well, just killing him. Out. It's yeah, a machine it... world, that's why. They couldn't yeah. live on it. But still... Like, it seems like Anger, as a crisis, just deleted the outpost from it, and nobody can possess it now. Yeah. Uh, Lispar but, just asked me in direct messages if he builds outposts there, will, be, will it be counted for capital? I said no. <laughs> uh, there's something wrong with like, his Concrete spoon. capitals will come, be counted. What? I'm telling you it's his dragon. Oh. Oh, did he get the dragon? Yep. Yeah. Lol. Wow. It eats 100 foot. Imagine defaulting on that. It's from ships. Yeah, exactly. It's his dragon. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, it's yes. a bitch dragon. Bitch dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Does a Star Eater survive a Star Eaten by a different Empire Star Eater? Oh, cracky. Does a Star Eater survive a Star Eaten by a different Empire Star Eater? I can't remember. I think it does. No, it doesn't. It, go, it goes missing in action, I think. It doesn't die, but it goes MIA. Whereas regular fleets just die, right? Or do they go MIA as well? I think they just die, don't they? Uh, it, it goes MIA, if I recall correctly. A regular fleet, though. Does a regular fleet die? It does, doesn't it? Yes. No, no, yeah. no. They don't. they don't. No, they just go MIA. Oh, okay. I can't remember. I have done it for a while. I had a game once. There was Kizzy going full bonkers on Crisis. Sounds and like I basically tried. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I was playing against her at that time. Remember, my fleet's gone MIA instead of being just died. Dead. Is there any. Uh... Then Leviathan's left. Singlerchi wants to go have a card you fight, I think. Nah, I guess we shouldn't help him. But he could go to war with R and kill R's dragon. That would be interesting. R can also unlock his dragon any time he wants. You just have to pick an Ascension perk. He doesn't want to pick an Ascension perk. Ascension perks <laughs> are for the weak. <laughs> I mean, it's probably like because there's nothing that will give him a combat bonus right now. He just doesn't care. Yeah. Like, what would he want to take? Grasp the Void would probably be good for him, actually. Defend of the Galaxy would help him a lot against Anger. Has Anger started making uh, menacing ships, by the way? Or is he still just full cruisers? Not sure. It looks like just full he cruisers. He produced a lot more allies. So... And he's at level four already. Crisis. I think if you have the um, the nano cloud missiles, I think it's worth making uh, corvettes with those. They are really, really effective as menacing corvettes. Ragoons is still giving it a go. He's having a tidy fight. <laughs> I don't see any menacing ships so far. No, it's only cruiser. Yep. Anger might be the first player he in the game to hit a million anymore. fleet power, though. 
Oh, sorry, a million, uh, yeah, a million fleet power. Yeah. It's interesting to see uh, how with admirals you can get bigger fleets. So he has like one fleet with 60 cruisers in it. That didn't used to be possible. What I'm finding really interesting these days is how much more powerful certain Empire ships are in terms of the um, the fleet power. So Anger has 1,600 nav cap. Um, Momonga has 2,100 nav cap. But Anger's fleets are worth almost 150,000 fleet power more, even though there's a lot I'm less of them. guessing that's the presenter hive. Like, his admirals are level 10. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm assuming so. Among us, level 5. You no, know, I'm assuming so, exactly. But it's just, I find it quite mm. interesting how that's the case. He's, I mean, uh, all of his, the government, the nodes on Anger now are all just level 10. Also, his uh, designs are a bit, a bit better. He has max level torpedoes and mm. missiles, whereas Momonga is not max level yet. And not all of the sh Momonga ships are upgraded. So I think this is where we see the difference of between like a thousand research and three or four thousand research. Yeah. The thousands and anger pushing their research means they have more efficient ships. Yeah. Quite yes, quite but Giltanas has a similar naval capacity as Momonga. And no, even Gatanis less. Is, fleet power. is only 200 nav cap more than Anger, but yeah, 200,000 yeah, fleet it's, power it's also less. less fleet power, I guess. Yeah. Uh, remember when like? only 2000 were only. <laughs> 200,000, sorry, 200,000 less. So I say 2000. Among the capped. Oh, Lee's Fire made a third enclave, by the way. He's oh, now three different north, places in the galaxy. One down south. Where's the third one? Oh, on the far uh, east. Wait, <laughs> wait, the, yeah. Does he have the wormhole? He just doesn't want to get eliminated. No, he's going to go through the wormhole and then he'll, he'll go to a system outside the galaxy, get rid of everything else, and be like, I don't exist. Don't worry about me. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, fine. Lara is attacking Sequoia. I mean, the AA Empire. But so Angus hit 10k menace. By the way, he can he can pop existential threat any time he wants to, if oh. he wants to. But he hasn't started the final project yet, tearing the fabric. I don't but think he that will. will make him automatically at war with Yeah, with the whole galaxy right? if he does yeah. that. Yeah, it's not probably not worth. So, so much fun. And can there see is a couple Lagoon's of angry clones around. What the hell? Does he even have any detection? Wait a minute. He stole star bases. Did he steal? No. Huh. Oh, he's taken no, everything he from Ragoons. Any... He's taken one of Ragoons' capitals, and he's taken. He's almost taken Ego Hugon's capital, but not yet. Interesting I... that the star base hasn't I... come back around in Ragoons' system. Oh, it's because Ragoons has a cloaked fleet there, so it counts as having a fleet in the system. Oh. Oh, that's nasty. So actually, what you <laughs> really so want, the, the best way to use cloaked fleets really then is to put a single cloaked ship in every system where you have a star base. And then in any war, when any, anyone attacks you, even if they capture your star bases, they will never get repaired because they will count as having an enemy ship in the system. And so they will never, ever repair. Yeah. You'll never be able to rebuild or repair your ships in enemy star bases or in, you know, in, in someone doing that. That's actually a really good strategy. Oh. Uh, to Silas, I just went through all of Anger Station. He doesn't look to have any detection strength on any station, which would still show up if he had a scientist there. I don't know. I think maybe he's not seeing the ships, but I don't yeah. know for sure. Maybe he's just, we can see it because we're observers, maybe. Yeah, I think I think it's an observer bug. But it does underline that even though, you know, cloaking is a bit of a meme, this is a use case. Like, if people don't build up detection, this is annoying to deal with. Yeah, where are they? How do I find them? Like, how would he even build up Actually, enough detection? You know how to find them. You look at the systems where your star bases aren't coming back, and you go, "Why is that happening?" Yeah, but he, he has the cloaking level seven in uh, no, eight in the nebula. Oh yeah. There's no way he's going to get eight detection there. No. Like he'd need a full, full, fully. I'm going to say he's dragging an action. What? Okay. Uh, singularity says dragon in action hair system. Where is that? Yeah. 
H A U E R. Uh, to oh, right next to least fires, uh, right uh, eastern colony. H A U E R. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I Howard. can't find it. H A. Wow. Oh, he's going in into Argol. A R G O L. It, I don't see him fighting another a dragon. He's just fighting some crystals. He's fighting him either. <laughs> uh, what the he's heck? hunting is what he's doing. Yeah, okay. Oh. Dragging this out there, finding his own food, I guess. Algol. Yeah, that's... Not Algol, Algol. Sorry, I mis misread. Yeah, yeah. Comrade, he could jump to, to, to survive. Comrade has a lot of um, armies. He's, he's tanking up fully. He only has yep. to survive 15 years. I think yeah, he he's has got survived. 4k on some and of his worlds. Have, and he does have planetary. Yes, yeah, 8k on A1. 6, 2.5, 3.5, 8k, 3, 3. The only question is whether he's going to go uh, bankrupt. Because that, that'll just no. all the... No, he's only losing right. 300 energy Not a month. Like that. And he's losing 300 energy a month. He's got 12k in the bank. He could sit like yeah. this for... What's that? So three, 3,000, one year. Oh, actually, not that long. Only four years. Yeah, maybe he might go bankrupt. Yeah. Oh crap! And he doesn't have that the many alloys. I also think uh, if he hits food deficit, that lowers his army values, right? No. No, no, no. It it's should. Just, it, just should. it does. It does. Does it? Why? I thought the uh, food deficit only gave you reduced happiness and reduced uh, pop assembly speed. There is no happiness uh, for for buy. Yeah, for that's yeah. usually. No, it says uh, it gives the happiness, but it doesn't do anything. Wait, wait a sec. I. I had an impression that uh, it gives you, well, at least there is some deficit, deficit which, gives, which gives you debuff on your armies. I think there is, but I don't think it's, I think it might Maybe be minerals. It's alloys. Yeah, or minerals, you're probably right, minerals. Not sure though. Maybe it's energy, actually. It could be energy Rigons, as well. Energy on, gives you uh, lots of energy deficit, and it gives combat disengagement chance, weapons damage, sublight speed. Uh, Speed oh, reduction, combat disengage, weapons, sublight, mechanical economy, researcher output. Yeah, it hurts. That hurts. Oh, it's so annoying. The Goose is just keeping control of that system with a 5k fleet when there's a 100k fleet right on top of it. Yeah, even though. So that means that the other guy doesn't count as owning it, right? Because you have to have the starbase and the system, don't you? I think in this case, when it doesn't have a station at all, I think the planet will override it. No, I'm asking for I the rules, in-game rules. Oh. I'd have to end the war, but he can end it at any time, I guess. Oh yeah, Ragoons is solid. 100% versus 0%. Oh my god. Ragoons yeah. killed 106 <laughs> ships to 174. He gave a good show, actually, killing 106 I, ships. That's more ships than I thought. Yeah. Oh my, how does 106 dead ships give zero war exhaustion? Like, war exhaustion crisis. is broken. Crisis. No, no, no. Crisis. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, a, he's crisis and he's got... He's got tech. So he'll never take any war exhaustion. Yeah, ever. he's at minus 75% plus all the. He's over 100%, I think. So he'll never yeah. take any exhaustion at any point in the game. He is the crisis. I mean, we never exhaust. We fight yeah. or we die. You make the Spartans proud. Yeah, I I do think the war system in Solaris could use a little, little itsy bitsy tweak up. So I was saying it caps out at 98%. That's probably correct. Silas says it caps out at 98. Oh, war exhaustion reduction. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah, possibly it does. I don't know. I'm just. He's still on 0% on everything, so it looks like he's 100%. Reduction. He's lost like, 100 ships. 106 ships ship should be something you if it's not so. at 100%. I don't know. But uh, I do believe that Ragoons might not win this game. I might not. He might not win this war either. You know, I'm starting to think. Yeah. The thing is, once all of the Ragoons' oh, planets Anger are taken, just hit a million. Ragoons just had a planet rebel. Once all of Ragoons' planets are taken, oh, he did. Yeah. Once all of Ragoons' planets are taken, his ships will just go poof as well. 
Yeah. So a million fleet power and a thousand pops. That's a what big empire. What does Raccoon even have left? He has one planet under bombardment. Uh oh. With two hundred armies. Once those armies land, Raccoon's ships just vanish into the ether. But he's on level six of the quest for the toxic god. Oh, he is he real? Well, oh, it's paused. No, it's paused. It's event locked because he's got no knights. Yeah. Ooh, that's bad. So the question, will Gilthanus and Mamanga finish off Comrade in time? No way. I don't think so. Comrade, Comrade has 17k energy. Yeah, 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 he's, he's, yeah, yeah, he's, gonna, he's, yeah. he's got loads of minerals he can sell. 7k um, on his capital. They, the only thing they can try is to focus those uh, resources planets first to force him go bankrupt. And like he'll only lose half the armies, but though. This is insanely different. Difficult. Yes, but then shields will be disabled as well. As soon as Plank you, uh, if I recall correctly, yes, as soon as you go uh, in deficit, shields are disabled. Oh, really? But I might be mistaken. I might be mistaken. I'm not sure they but... are. I, I don't know. It, they, they downgrade all the buildings, at least, I know. Yeah, so but all shields of, are the lowest. Uh, the strong... fortress, yeah. strong, fortress become strongholds. Yeah. And then it'll uh, disband all of the assault armies. Oh, there goes Ragoons. Have to pay respect in chat to Ragoons, ladies and gentlemen. Have to pay respect. See if we can bring him in. See if he wants to have a chat. He's coming up in a moment to tell us about his mind-blowing strategies for today. Come on, chat. I have to pay respect to Ragoons. He didn't find a single player. Then he started fighting them. And then the unthinkable happened and somebody teleported onto his capital. Silas says, tell Ragoons I told him cloaking sucked. All right, all right. That's just rude, Silas. There's no need for that level of barbarity. So the question is, is there going to be any fight? Like the wars currently running, are any of them going to end? Uh, let's see. Potato Shaggers, no. Comrades, no. Iroh's war. Who's Iroh at war with? He's at war with AI. both the AIs. AI. Yeah. And he's in, in a, an aggressive war too. What was that? Something just popped up on my screen. Huh? That was weird. I don't know, I don't know what popped up. No, it was like a Windows pop-up thing that was there for four frames and disappeared. It was very odd. I don't know. Oh, it's the forced Windows 11 upgrade. You now have Windows 11. Oh, well, that's time to time to end it all then, really. 1.2 oh, million. Uh, Sorry, yep. Yeah. I, I, I had to help uh, my mother buy a new PC. Uh, Regan asks to be dragged to the shed. Oh, yeah, I don't think any of here us... You are. Oh, he's here now. He's here Hello. now. Hello. 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 Welcome. Um... You were in the game for at least 15 years, right? 10, 15 years, you were actually interacting with the AI and then you had your first taste of a player. How did that all go? Wow. I mean, the plan worked accordingly. Too bad the player left. Yeah, uh, well, having said that, had it been a player, I think they probably would have brought their fleets back and attempted to slap you in the face rather than... Because they had a... So what you didn't see was that AI had 140k when you attacked them. And they just never used that 140k to fight back. They just kept fighting whoever else they were already fighting. Yeah, I think they were scattered a bit everywhere. But... Yeah, they were all, well, they basically where Teon was, they, the, the northern, northernmost planet you kind of didn't quite get to, the northern system of Teon. Beyond that, all of their, they were like having fights with all that. It was like AI hell over there. But anyway, what was Gitana's your strategy? Gitana's attacking list fire. So, sorry for interruption. Yeah, yeah uh, Gitana's Gitana's attacking least fire. Try and kill him in the last... 10, 10 years, cool. Um, what was your strategy to get today, Ragoons? Like, what was the plan? Because it seemed yeah. like there was a plan. Perfect but, plan yeah. really. I was, I was getting ready for a rush. In a peacetime year. In a peacetime game, yes. So... <clears throat> so at year 30, yeah. if someone had attacked you, what was your plan? No, 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 no. Even at year 30, my, my, my build was for... I, I misread the rules. I thought there was no peacetimer. That's why I went for this. 
Oh. <laughs> so wait, what were you what were you expecting to happen wait. if someone attacked you at like year fifteen? What was your plan? Uh, not really like year fifteen, but more like year uh, five. I plan to use obviously what it does a bit on the fly, but I plan to use the Commander Knight and stack a bit a bunch of weapon damage modifiers yeah. on my star base. Yeah, we saw all of your admirals with all of those weapon damage modifiers. You had like five admirals at one point. Yeah. Uh, also, my factions didn't spawn for like uh, eight years, so that was a bit painful. Yeah, they didn't come in until like year we 15 didn't or 18. Need another AI. What, what was that, Jen? Uh, your, AI, your factions won't spawn if you don't meet another empire. Yeah, they spawn usually yeah, at year 10 or 8. Yes. Unless you have a parliamentary system. Yes. But he was empire. I, so I thought it was, te it was te 10 years in. No, 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 no. You have to meet someone. And there is, a, uh, there is a, an interesting interaction. If you are a parliamentary system and if you reform yourself without having a contact, your factions would go on. Oh, oh that punch. Uh, yeah, well, I guess the land might be just mostly for guest talent then. So then you can do the toxic god memory. Oh. Singularity is. Uh, Singularity is Dragon is uh, fighting against a psionic avatar. Yeah. <laughs> so he's basically playing uh, the Diablo style of game. You know, Gotta catch him all. He's controlling. Yes. So uh, he, he, he's playing like a single entity, uh, trying to kill some mobs, some bosses. There we go. Whoa, that yeah, was something. That's funny. That was one of the battles of <laughs> all time. Anger declared war on Ark and uh, Potato Shagger. I'm guessing it's a total war. So, Ragoon, how did you feel when 250k appeared in your capital? Were you expecting it at all? Yeah, I, I guess I also misread the rules because I thought they oh, couldn't oh, There's going to be a huge, huge yeah. ship battle yes. Let's just watch what? those. The Atronal system in Ark's territory. Oh, Anger 1. versus... 1.6 million is going yeah. in. Oh, wow. Oh, it's going to slow the game down. I will slow the game as well. It's gonna be a slaughter. Will oh, the, the fleets are split up. Ars fleets are split. He's caught half of them yeah. there and half of them in. Oh no, it's not half. It's only another 10k. Sorry. And there is a lot of torpedoes. Yeah, Anger's just eviscerating Arvo. Christ. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought I thought he was busy actually somewhere in the north, and then he just jumped on me. So I was guess we no, die it, now. Interestingly, <laughs> Anger lost like three, four hundred k there against Ars' much smaller fleet. No, he didn't. He was at so, 1.3 million. He's still at 1.3 million. Oh, he was at 1.6. Wait till the battle ends and Shalom should battle. come back. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, you, okay. He did lose a bit. Yeah, and that battle did take a while, didn't it? Ragoon, I was telling everyone earlier as well that um, with the GPOs in two weeks and uh, there's going to be some fun things going on. Yeah. Oh, there's a dead dragon now in our space. F for the dragon. You have to pay respect to the dragon. No, we're going to be teaming up together for some dragon related memory in the gpo is what i've been told yes yes that's the i think that's the plan although megacorp I'm... dragon related memory does that mean we're gonna have to go for um the zombie civic <laughs> probably <laughs> <laughs> no no oh no what a shame i mean ragoons without reanimation is not a ragoon spell right no exactly yeah that i guess that's why i died <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you didn't have reanimation. You and you were fighting against an AI empire that did have cordyceptic. The AI empire you're fighting had was full of um, amoeba. Yeah, uh, not ame amoeba and uh, Tianqi. He was scaring me at some point because he went in the the Minox system right into myself of me. I thought he saw me, but he didn't. No, because so, uh, you Giltanus had. Um, is just about to. Uh, Giltanus is just about to knock off this fire. You had the I, You did find all of the planets. Yeah, I, I'm he, fully aware yes, of my strength. And he's moving towards the last one. I was fully aware of my strength here. I, I think, I think it played relatively well. Personally, I'm I'm fine with the outcome, even though I, I wish it, could, it would have been a player. It would have been fun. Yeah, you would have got but points then for capturing a capital. Before. Did I? No, you didn't, because you fought an AI. Oh yeah, fair. But I still survived to like. Isn't there like a, a rule with surviving stuff? No. No. Cyrax, do you get yeah. points for survival? Yes, you do. So, does Ragoon lose points or make points for this game? Because he survived to like year I 85. Think... And he knocked, he okay. took a capital from an AI empire. Well, no. It depends on his placement because he has generated a bit of points from having a capital. 
But it was an AI, he took it from an AI player though, so I don't know how that no, works. No, no, no. I mean, he had his own. Uh, oh, until yeah, year of course eight, he right? does. Yeah, so okay. He has at least twenty points, and also he was staying uh, until his elimination. So he will definitely get a bit of points. Okay. Easy ladder, I guess. That's, that's easier than League of Legends. Oh, why are we paused? Oh, Comrade's uh -huh. left, I think. Comrade is dead? Not yet. Uh, uh, this Momonga. Momonga, no. Oh, it just lagged. Comrade was lag. just lagging, I think. Yeah. Well, Comrade's, Comrade's getting the... Comrade's clinging on by the, like, his teeth. I think, I think your Thanos and Momonga quit trying to kill him. I yeah. think they realized... He's still building clone chance. armies on every planet. He's built... He's yeah, got... I wish I had clone armies. I wish I had clone armies. It would have been so much smoother. <laughs> Comrade's got like 12k on some of his worlds. 11 and a half k. <laughs> They're invading some of his planets, and it's like, yeah, yeah, they've invaded with 3k, but see, Comrade's got four. If you check the Mandasura Prima system, yeah, there's no the armies. Mechanics, yeah, but there's a hundred percent devastation. So there's the oh, pops are dying. The pops are dying. Fast, yeah. Oh no! I don't know if this can change it to zero pops. I think oh, it is. he's on two pops. There's, there's one way yeah. to kill those. It's oh, yeah. he can. Simply engage oh, and disengage to kill pops yeah. until yeah, depopulation. Here we go. Yes. Yep. There, it's gone. Yeah. And the armies are dead. Oh no. Yep. The armies are worthless. Oh no. What, what, Comrade's gonna die. System? Was it the same system? Tango Yankee. Uh, that was in Tango Yankee. Tango Yankee. I see. I see. Yeah. Nice. And now so Comrade's pops so up. His armies jump much. into space and they just get shot to death. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's no. the, uh, so that. You can actually pull that. Uh, that devastation trick. You can also pull it very early in the game. Mm. So you don't you don't even need to win these battles. You just need to keep them going long enough to devastate. Technically, it punish. should be a rule. Uh, Cyrax, probably it should be a rule to. I, I guess it, it already is. You you're not allowed to conquer because you can technically just in a no in a no conquer. How can I? Depopulate planets. You mean? You, well, it can just depopulate planet through devastation by just invading again and again. Yeah. If you do this with like undead forces, the planet will just disappear. Well. Apparently, there is no rules about that, right? I think there is. You're, you're not allowed to to uh, Cold War invade. Ah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You mean like in a Cold War? Yes, you cannot attack, but this is not a Cold War. Yeah. You, you, you can still do it. Oh, I'm, uh, you can do yes, it in a regular can. war, though. You yeah, but the, the, this is, you know, this is an H case. We definitely will have to talk about it. Uh, I but... think it's broken that you can. Eliminate a full planet while they still have all well, the yeah, that. I think what's worse than that is if you have that thing with the army, with the with the leader, what's a, the gal, the Montu, the, the, the Montu lizard leader, the, the general. Kidnapper. Yeah, the kidnapper. Kidnapper the trait is still broke. I, well, I don't know if it's exactly if it is, but it was broken and it would calculate 10, oh. 20, or 30% of empire wide pops. And so you'd invade a planet, win the war, and oh, depopulate. Invade a planet, win the battle, oh, the depopulate. It's still There's broken. There's a fighting Pozuno. What? Uh, sorry? There's a fight in oh. Pozuno, but I'm not sure... Yeah, Pozuno. <laughs> uh, Anger is fighting Potato Shag and winning big. Yeah, I... I, I up I, north, Manchu. Uh, the top of I uh, see Anger's territory. I'm in there. Oh, I'm yeah. Curious. I'm curious what was the, the, the thought process behind let the Hive just get free of a Gestalt. I don't know either. They, yeah, they, they basically... Everyone ignored Anger, and he just went om nom nom, om nom nom, and everyone continued to ignore Anger. The, the the two federations were busy fighting, so that was that. That was probably what was going on there. Singularity was kind of doing nothing. Conrad was busy fighting the South, and then Pax was busy fighting against Ditlev and some other people. Um, he, he has a fully operational shipyard. A ninety percent shipyard. shipyard. Sorry. Yeah, he has a fully operational mega shipyard. With minus eighty five percent build cost. Holy mother of God. <laughs> He's Not got a mega shipyard with again. 285 speed and minus 85 build cost. He can build menacing nope. corvettes for 45 uh, minerals. Battleships yeah, for 123 alloys. Minerals. Don't let anyone tell him that the actual best menacing, uh, is the destroyer. menacing ship is actually destroyer. <laughs> Not that anyone. Actually, yeah, he's not designed the destroyer. But... He's, des he's no, he's not building any menacing ships. Actually, that's one thing he's not oh, so, doing. As a pretender to have, it's so annoying to build menacing ships because you already have two ship designs for everything. And your menacing ships are not good without a progenitor ship in it. Yeah, that's annoying. I agree. But you can you can still do Shannon against, I think. The main reason <laughs> I don't play progenitors is just it feels so fitly. Oh yeah. 
Right. It's just a new check. Oh, and I, and I have to change 11 ship designs, which I'm BS like that. I think he's making 20 cruiser per month. Oh, no. Oh, they killed him. Fire. At least fire actually went. He said he left the game going, good luck. No one can kill my stuff. And they managed <laughs> it. <laughs> he shouldn't have taunted them. Yeah, he should have just left it well alone. No, I'm so, excited to play the GPO yeah. with you, Ragoon. It's going to be good. Basically, um, as I mentioned, I might not be able to do all the sessions. So the Sunday session Same I might thing. be late to on the first session on the Sunday. And I don't know how late I'll be. I might be like an hour late. Maybe I'll be two hours late. I don't know. Maybe I'll be. Maybe I'll miss the whole first session on Sunday. So I basically, yeah. So that's why we're teaming up. Also for nice. memes. Of course. By the way, Singularity's economy is pretty impressive. He hasn't been in an offensive war. 2k alloys. And he's second on the observer score. Oh my god. 2k. He's got. He's making 2k. Is that all from his capital? Two yeah, and he's making 2.5k yeah. from his capital. Each drone is making 23 alloys and he's got 104 drones. Let's look at the bonus. Yeah, so he, he just decided to start macroing. He didn't want to fight, he just wanted to make economy. Which player? Um, Singularity? Yeah. Yeah. Comrades begging for resources. I'm wondering if he's about to default in something. I think he might He has be. a volatile mode shortage. I guess that isn't too bad. That's 70%. Ooh, minus 500 energy per month, though. That so is... Uh, alloy... That's rough. Yeah. Meanwhile, Singularity with 23 alloy, 24 alloy per drone. Yeah. <laughs> and a, and a, a casual minus 40 amenities, but don't worry, just... Just just use the regular but use the bio happiness to balance it all out. Rogue service okay, rogue is service, so uh, broken. Rogue... And it's it's sad in my opinion because like people keep saying like robots are broken. And yeah, rogue services kinda are. I think we have a biased in the chat. Repeat. I think we have a <laughs> A what? Biased. I think I think that's a word. Yeah, I like robots, okay? Uh, I love them too, actually, uh, a lot. Just so, yeah, I, I think one of the issues is that because of the way they design gestalts, it's impossible to balance because they have so separated mechanics from bio. I, I think it's pretty. If there's only two of them, so I think it's. To be honest, the way possible. that you could balance Rogue Servitor, make the bio trophy happiness not affect stability. I just, just, just go yeah. no. The happiness is irrelevant. It, it, you're a machine. You're at fifty percent. No. Um, the that less than negative. Buff. Pardon? That will also buff, um, how is it called? Livestock, because livestock just tank has stability a lot for no reason. <laughs> and then additionally, reduce the unity output from the bio trophies by like a lot. Like what's the base unity here? Base is three. Maybe one would be reasonable. Um, and then that stacking modifier of plus one percent for bio trophy, maybe max it out at like plus fifty or plus a hundred percent. Maybe. Well, I had fun. Uh, hopefully, uh, when we, if we get uh, some uh, juicy patch to uh, limit the 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 ship cost thingy, or maybe even a balance mod, maybe I'll consider playing more of them because it's a bit it's a bit crazy right now. Are you going to? I so I guess you're not going to come and play in my tournament next weekend, then, Ragoon. Uh, There's cash prizes. No, no. I next thought, weekend's my tournament. The weekend after is GPO. GPO's in two weeks. Uh, maybe maybe I can, next week. I don't know. Well, uh, there is a situation. As you can see, as you can see, I'm pretty rusty. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. Uh, there is a situation right now. Uh, if you can hear me. Yeah. yeah. So Andrew has uh, deleted Starbase of Potato Shaga in his home world capital, and uh, he, well, has been crisis. He ki just kills Starbases, right? But yeah. if Potato Shaga has a as a planet there. Uh, this system oh. will actually be returned to him after some time, but yeah, Anger just keeps it down. his yes. Uh, but because of the uh, because of Anger is keeping ships there, it prevents uh, Potato Shaga to have control back over this system. So yeah. Potato Shaga was asking me if that's legal. Yes, that's legal. Yeah, and that's, legal. Uh, you can actually do that. This is part of how crisis work. We were they, watching earlier. Uh, they just start bases. 
we were watching you earlier, Ragoon, and we realized that yeah. your cloaked fleets prevent star bases from coming back yeah, in. That's what I was about to say. You and can so do the river I was thing saying, I was saying actually there's a really good strategy you could have with um, cloaking, not to use it in yeah. the way you were using it, just make like 20 ships, put them in fleets of one ship, cloak them, and put them in all of your systems with star bases, and then yeah, no matter how many, either. how far your opponent gets through the star bases, none of your star bases will ever start repairing, so they can never repair unless they go back home. Yeah, I didn't do that because it's a bit gimmicky and borderline yeah, it's exploity. So. Well, it's not an exploit, so... It's a strategy. Uh, you, it's a feature. It's a quote. feature, exactly. It's a feature. All right, all right. I, I gotcha, I gotcha. Okay, well, I got my phone. I'm going to grab some snack and I'll come back later. Thanks Thank for you. coming. Sigilerci is also about to finish the last level of his mega shipyard. But he's not stacking discounts. Yeah. No, I mean, Anger's, Anger's rocking up with almost 2 million fleet power here at year 2300. Just, yeah. just taking he's the got game the, away. He's got almost the same as Gathanas and Mamanga combined. 3,500 nav cap, but he can't support it. But it doesn't matter because he's got enough energy to last out the next four years. And funnily enough, the other players haven't taken um, Defender of the Galaxy. They should have. Like if you if you fight a crisis player with Defender of the Galaxy, you get this good bonuses. Silas is suggesting a way to balance rogue servers would be to prevent them making a Cuminopolis. I think that would feel bad yeah. though to take it away from them. Like it would feel bad. And I think the issue is that they can't use machine worlds either, so they wouldn't have like they'd have Gaia yeah. worlds, I guess. But eh. I would say rogue servers are in a good spot. Right, uh, without cross personification. So my my main just... argument for not yeah. nerfing rogue servers is that at the moment they are the most fun robot build to play in my opinion. Yeah, because they're, they're so powerful. They're and, only and robots variable. haven't got new content for a year. I think the last thing they got was uh, um, Overlords. Like that's the last oh, time they got something. No, new, so 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 there was an update in Galactic Paragons. Some of the guest out leaders that Bio Empires can recruit got updated, and some of those are robots. It's not directly content robots can access, but it is robot content for Bio Empires. Uh, yeah, true. Like so, so you know, Gestalt <laughs> Paragons can be recruited by, by Bio Empires. Empires. Yes, exactly. Yes, Gestalt yeah. Paragons can be recruited by Bios, but Gestalt Paragons cannot be recruited by Gestalts. Yes, it's a perfect system I, with absolutely I no am flaws. All of rage. <laughs> <laughs> and you know it. It's so beautiful. Oh, next patch, they'll actually just remove guest out altogether. The next thing, <laughs> they'll just that, take us away. That, that, would, that would almost be better. Like, <laughs> just put it out like, of its misery, like put a, it down. This is like a death by a thousand cuts, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. let, let's see how long we can ignore them until people stop playing and we don't have to balance it. We have a joke on ISS that next, yeah, yeah. Uh, next patch, they will just ban multiplayer button. <laughs> yeah. I mean, other than, so on the one hand, we're here talking about multiplayer balance, but the majority of people play single player. Like we play multiplayer here, we're, talking, we're watching a multiplayer game, but the vast majority of players play single player. And then on top of that, a large, my, a large minority of that majority play kind of to role play. They play in a, in a you know what, you've seen, I've yeah. done some videos like that where it's not about the, the, it's not about getting all the bonuses, it's about trying to play your empire in a way that's coherent to a narrative you're trying to tell and for a story-based game i think stellaris is fantastic and having broken things works for that perspective but when you come to multiplayer obviously it doesn't i think what'd be best is if they created a two-tier system like starcraft where there's a single player version of stuff which is just unbalanced and wacky and then a multiplayer version which is balanced for multiplayer and depending on whether or not you're playing like multiplayer balanced, or maybe you could play multiplayer wacky if you wanted to RP, but depending on which two of those modes you're playing in, it would mean that we wouldn't have these issues where the the the, the, the multiplayers, the PvP players complain about balance and then their changes get made. And then the single players are complaining that, well, my fun thing that I enjoy doing has been taken away. Why is that happening? So I think the, like, the thing there is that, a battle, that uh, should be solvable by modding. Uh, the sorry for there is yeah. a, a quite important battle to see. Uh, Comrade right. tracked against uh, on uh, on land. 
there is like 4K, I oh know it's now a 7K attacking army against 14K, and there have been uh, a bunch of those uh, battles. Population so, is dying, uh, right? Uh, yeah, one pop yes, every month. It's just because it's population really is dying, and yes. But yeah, and look, just the, as uh, devastation goes up. And that's the second to last planet, by the way. Oh, wait, there's yes. salad as well. And it, it, it looks like, yeah, and pops are just going down. I mean, this is yeah. a little bit sad that so there is no like. Comrade has yeah. 12k armies against 7k, but he's gonna lose. Comrade's yeah. got 19k armies on another planet as well, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, two years till the end of the game, so maybe he will survive. I think Mom, chill, I'm glad you like my idea. To attack two different places. Yeah, uh, what I meant about uh, the decision we had before, Mon Two. Yeah, I think the mods. In, in theory, you should be able to mod stuff like that, but. The issue that much seems to ruin multiplayer by causing desyncs. Well, not just that. On top of that, the way that Solaris now is developed is we get a patch every three months. So trying to yeah. keep up with the patches is a full-time job for a modder, pretty much. Like, if your mod is quite Especially a large mod... they keep hotfixing. Well, yeah, it's not just the like hot they, fixes. Yeah. Every, a couple of hot fixes, the patch comes out, and there's three or four hot fixes. Then within a month after all the hot fixes are done, there's a new patch, which is great if you like playing the base game, but it's really a pain in the ass for people that want to play the mods. Like, we haven't had a coherent Warhammer 40k mod since, like, patch 1.8 or 2.2 or something. Like, it, it, it was being... And then the person who made it, or the people that were making them, just gave up, I think. I, I don't know. It, we Yeah, but it's not existed for a while. Flying Coat, you can roll back for the mods, but when you roll back for the mods, you don't get any of the new content. So, like, you're rolling back to a version where you're, it's kind of like Devil's, it, it's, you know, it's the worst of both, because, yeah, okay, you can play that mod in that version of the game, but then there's all this new content that's great, and you'd like that to also be included in the mod. Like, well, just all of the content, I don't know. Yeah, there's all, like the ISS used to have a balance mod as well, but personally, I didn't enjoy it as much because one of the things they tried to limit was the RNG of the game. Because a lot of mm. the stuff, especially in like a year 30 game, is who got the better spawn. Yeah, we, no, we I saw mean, it in the murder fish race, I must like, admit, I must admit, RNG, like that. I think, is an integral part of Stellaris. And if you get rid of it, basically, yes. you kind of. And also, the problem with balance mods is. You're, ba you're usually, if you're a multiplayer community, balancing it for a certain playstyle and a certain rule set. Yeah. Which then means if you try to play a slightly different game or a slightly different rule set, the balance mod is no longer really balanced. Like, if you go from a year 30 to a year 50 war start, your balance mod's probably going to fall apart if, if, it, if it's focusing on balancing the Empire yeah. so that at year 30... That, oh, there's a depopulated planet. So that at year 30, you, you know, everyone is kind of even Stevens. So can they? Do they have the time to kill two more planets? I don't think so. There's only it's one. One year. No. Only, oh, look, look at Conrad as well. Yes, look at Conrad. I think he just got this system, and he has 15k of armies there. Oh, he put it in space. He put it in space oh, just to end of box. Did the shagger died? To anger, anger, kill potato shagger. Good God! But R yes. still alive. R is hanging and he in kept there. control of the capital. So he's still getting the capital points, by the looks of it. Where is our uh, system? Who will? Oh, yes, KT will. He will. And KT never lost the Kelsia system. Yeah, KT still has Kelsia. So he's going to survive with one, two, three capitals. <laughs> no, because now it's in the air. Look at uh, the, no, in the I know. system. No, I know. I'll tell you why. Yeah. Because now it's in space. If anyone comes to fight him, they have to chew through like 80% evasion... Um, armies which will take oh. a few months <laughs> I mean and we've only got nine months left so he's basically like well if they invade i'll probably die within a few months but if they have to armies chew through 50k armies don't they i thought they oh, did it's, 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 oh, 44. Hive. Yeah, he's oh minus 50 percent of asia so, uh, it, it, it's 88.8 base oh, he's jumping. and then 50 percent he's jumping to somewhere what he's gonna he try doing? and take back one of the planets he lost probably they but can he can't if he doesn't take the star system. Well. Starbase, yeah. yeah. Oh no, the 90 times one is probably far enough away. Which one? The 90% times one in the OK system. But don't you need the Starbase to even land the planets? No, the, oh, the... yeah, I think so. You do, so I'm a bit confused. Maybe he's got he's got no don't fleets. Think, yeah. 
Maybe he's just mocking about because you know. Yeah, because he's, he's going to live. The game. And he's like, so what? They're trying to depopulize a try harder now, which is a perfect name, by the way. Try harder. <laughs> a 56 pops. Yeah, that's not going anywhere before the game ends. But my still, but again, it's, it's only the second to last. I'm sick. I was like, I'm weak. Don't kill me, please. No one's. Is anyone even fighting him? Anger he's, oh, he's is actually with... quite close yeah, to killing right. Ark he's... as well. Anger, Anger is actually is about to kill Ark. Yeah. yeah. Wait, wh where's there, Ark? There is a there is a long battle. That's last. Wait, so this stands. is this is the battle. Oh, yes. here we go. It's going. Oh, it's going. It's going to finish. Be... Two months. Yes. Oh, I'm not sure. There's Ark. these war so close. Oh my goodness me. They're. they're... This is We're from the, this the is nail fighting. So far. Yeah. Oh, this general yeah, is yeah. so useful. Extra 7% army damage has never been better. The one time a general one saves month. the day. One one month. Month. No, it's not going to happen. I think He's not going to happen. I, 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 he, he will survive. He will survive. No. Wait. Not. No, he's going to live. One, 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 Pause it. Oh, yeah, he's alive. Oh, oh, oh. He's alive with no. one war form left. <laughs> All oh right, my all right. god! Oh. The planet broke I, I before think, the guard I, did. Now that I have a save, I have a save. We go on pause just to, to look at this. One legendary heroic war form. Holy shit! So cool. <sighs> that okay, I, I'm dragging everybody to, to the same channel. I just have to ask Pix to yeah, yeah, we'll jump down into the, the channel below, right? Okay. Now, if that was not oh. finish, I don't have this. Nail biting. <laughs> yeah, the very last battle, just one war from surviving on 100 HP. Or Less than a Chad war for. Yes, it, it took him like how many? Probably a couple of days to. to about kill it, about right? about yeah. 20 yeah. days he had left. Actually, I think it was like 10, 20 days. Okay. Yeah. So That's still not good. long in a hundred no. years. No, exactly. It came yeah. down to twenty days in a hundred years. <laughs> yeah, it was a fight. Yeah, and also Comrade Shark surviving against that uh, crappy pop killing mechanics. <laughs> I, I think yeah. we should fix it, but yeah, that would no, that they was cool as well. No, they should not. It is shit. Twenty k of armies on each planet is shit. No uh, I, I kind of agree with Momonga. I think being able to kill the pops through like devastation makes sense. It Maybe does. yes, and especially given I, the defense, defense armies. Even with this bug, it take uh, like uh, ten or twenty years for us to almost kill him. We didn't kill him yet. Yeah. But we were close. Yeah. So wild. All right, guys. Uh, so we won't have infinite. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, let me say, so subterranean are banned because like it's next to impossible, at least it was next to impossible to conquer them. So at year 30, they are just a big road blocker and that's against the spirit of competitive games. Uh, so you can conquer is, uh, anyone. And another problem is that uh, subterranean is also very shit build. So if you are taking it, there is no way that you are trying to win. You are just trying to yeah. sit and uh, defense, do defense on the ground. Yeah. It's a bit, bit of a troll build. Uh, and especially imagine mixing it with criminal heritage. I mean, yep. can we can we assume that Anger won? Because, like, he killed the most players and had the most capitals. I, I can't see it's possible that he didn't. Yeah. To, it's to quite be honest. possible, but also um, Mamonga and Giltanas yeah, probably should come well. close. Yes, no, absolutely. Um, I suspect they're probably up there as well. Um, but... Anger killed what? Five eliminations? Yeah, the only problem is that Mamang and Giltanas were playing together, so so they were like splitting kills. We uh, count kills only for those who was leader of war. So, for instance, if Mamang declared war against uh, a federation, uh, elimination uh, of those players would count only for Mamang. Giltanas didn't take those, but Giltanas has taken bounty from. 
list fire. And also Anger taking bounty from Pax, which is huge as well. Ah, uh, not only from Pax, but also from Potato, from Potato Shaka, yes. I would say uh, probably Anger should be in top spot in our leaderboards after that game, but let us see. All right, guys, uh, I have to say big thank you for coming and playing this game. It was quite an interesting to watch. Also, thank you, Monto, for co-casting and giving a bit of publicity to our games. Thank you for Yernsex uh, as well. Uh, thank you for Comrade. Uh, we are hosting those games each Sunday, and we actually are planning to make a bit more of those. It's just like we are trying to find a balance in recent patch, you know, and we already have a mod, we will be testing it and depending on mod's performance, we probably will make more of those lobbies. But so far, uh, next Sunday, there will be a new game. I will create a sign-up post. Um, ah, no, way, actually, no, no, no. Next Sunday is also going to be the Munch Multiplayer Madness. Yes, yeah, 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 no, no, so it will be not Sunday, but Saturday, if I recall correctly. Uh, Comrade Track and Monto were discussing that, right? Yep. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the final for my, for, for my tournament next weekend is on Sunday. So um, I was like, well, let, why don't we try to rearrange a bit? Because we can't have yes, the final on Saturday because yes. we're doing the, the qualifiers Friday and Saturday. So, yeah. I gave mm. Comrade yeah, a yeah. bit of notice when we organized it because I was like, well, I don't want to force you to move, but, you know... I, I'm, no, no, I can't move mine, fine. so it probably makes more sense to, for you to move yours. Yep. Better to have two big games and streams. Exactly. And Conrad, you're going to be joining yeah. me for hosting that final, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Uh, so, uh, as always, as usual, uh, scores will be available after the game, not so long. I, ha I have uh, all the wars and victories score calculated is just I need to check spawns and uh, not check spawns to check saves on the uh, subject of controlled capitals um, and that's it ah uh, yep <laughs> also yeah, so Momongi guess. and Giltanas yeah awesome uh, Momongi and Giltanas are just so stupid enough to uh, they, 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 they they could conquer like the entire galaxy even anger himself is just like they wanted to get comrade why <laughs> why not <laughs> why not <laughs> indeed i mean i don't care about points uh, to be fair i just want to play i wanted to stack uh, uh discounts but fuck it this fucking uh sorry this uh uh, Progenitor is just better in all aspects. It's, I don't know what to do. Yeah, Progenitor is... Anger, by the end of the same. game, had um, a mega shipyard with minus 85% discount, though. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't oh. matter. Uh, alloys are not an issue. I had, like, 1k alloys, uh, like, uh, production. It's uh, small compared to last patch. In last patch, it was not enough at all. But now, it's, it's just enough to produce a lot of fleets. Uh, it doesn't matter. It, well, all is... What is important is upkeep, and uh, Anger had a lot of upkeep as well. He did as well. No, he had a lot of upkeep reduction as well. It was just he had yeah he had a mega ship yeah, with minus eighty five, and it was just terrifying and, to look uh, at. And it is this like a reduced ship upkeep because there is uh, no uh, this trade, like how it's called. Yeah, the box trade. Mm. Yeah, the box trade we have removed. Yeah, yeah with this had... trade he would have like ninety percent very easy year fifty, I guess. <laughs> How much naval capacity he had, Anger? Like 3,000? Three and a half K? Yeah. I think. Oh, shit. Oh, he's in the chat. Oh, I don't uh, know. I exited the game, but that seems oh, right. Fair. He was a big boy. Yeah, Elsa Ragoon's playing uh, interesting strategies. Hiding in, in, in clouds. So, do, I don't know if anyone knows this. Ragoons thought that there was no war peace timer. So, he was preparing at year five for people to come and fight him. And he just kept waiting and waiting, and no one did. Um, and then he was like, oh crap, I've screwed my economy expecting someone to fight me. Um, which was just. I have been someone. <laughs> that guy, he was using a progenitor hive mind? No, Knights of the Toxic God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's called some meme lord yeah. ragoons for a reason yeah and someone he wasn't needs to building play yeah sorry someone needs to play toxic gods every yeah. IRL game Yuku's this not time, here 
Yeah, yeah. We, this oh, time yeah. we didn't have Uko. He's usually oh, playing those. Yeah, I guess I'm playing Knights next that game. Enjoy. It's your turn. See you again. Well, adieu, gentlemen. All right, yeah, I'm going to say goodbye to my chat. Thanks very much, Comrade and Cyrix, for organizing this. Thanks very much to Yearn for um Yeah, for thank, thank you guys for coming. So, so thank you for playing and commenting on our channels. Right. It's good to be here. Yes. See you next time. Bye-bye. All righty then, ladies and gentlemen. It's just you and I, chat. If you have anything to say to me, the time is now. I should get rid of, I'll get rid of a couple of things from the screen. Do, 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 boo, it's just me. And also, let's see something pretty. Uh, boo, yeah, that looks better. Sorry about the pun, says Jörn. Sarah says, see you next week. Yes, we'll see you next week. So, tomorrow, oh no, tomorrow I'll be announcing the tournament with some posts. Come to my Discord server. Come, come to my Discord server. That's how you sign up for the tournament. There are cash prizes. Uh, I think it goes up to, I don't know how high it goes, actually. It's over 800 at the moment, split between the top five players. Also, if you're enjoying this and you'd like to support this channel, you can do so by going and getting some great discounts on Humble Bundle right now. There's DLC sale on, there's a Paradox Spring sale, actually. So if you follow the Humble Bundle link down in the description and buy anything from the store, actually anything at all, doesn't have to be, um, doesn't have to be the Stellaris DLC, but a small amount will go back to supporting this channel. So feel free to go out and grab some DLC and all of that lovely stuff. Uh, Ragoon says, and subscribe, check your nebulas. Yeah, remember, always check your nebulas. He was hiding here in the Orantes Shroud. Pretty wild stuff, if you ask me. Alrighty. Um, otherwise, I will see you all next weekend. I might see you tomorrow, but uh, we'll have to see how that goes. I might be live tomorrow. We won't know yet until tomorrow. But otherwise, I will see you all next weekend, bright and early on Sunday, if you're in the States. Otherwise, same time in the evening, if you're in Europe, at 4 Montu's Multiplayer Madness number five. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun indeed. Alrighty.